Do you feel like you don't speak enough Korean? That you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. This is Karen Morris, and she's leaving the local coffee shop after receiving her coffee. The barista says, Goodbye. 안녕히 가세요. Listen to the conversation. Ready? 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 계세요. Once more with the English translation. 안녕히 가세요. Goodbye. Literally, go in peace. 안녕히 계세요. Goodbye. Literally, stay in peace. Let's take a closer look at each of these expressions. First, do you remember how Selgi Song says, Goodbye? This starts with In peace. Next is Kaseo, which means go. Kaseo, 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 is the honorific form of the verb kata, meaning to go. Kata. Altogether, Annyeonghi Kaseo, literally means go in peace, but it translates as goodbye. Annyeonghi Kaseo. The person staying says this to the person or people leaving. 안녕히 가세요. Here, the barista, who is staying in the shop, says this to Karen, who is leaving the shop. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Karen says, Goodbye? 안녕히 계세요. This starts with 안녕히 In peace. 안녕히 Next is 계세요 Which means stay in this case. 계세요 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 Is the honorific form of the verb 있다 Meaning to have 있다 Altogether 안녕히 계세요. Literally means stay in peace, but it translates as goodbye. 안녕히 계세요. The person leaving says this to the person or people staying. 안녕히 계세요. Here, Karen, who is leaving the shop, says this to the barista who is staying in the shop. To recap, if you're staying, you say, 안녕히 가세요. Go in peace to the person or people leaving. If you're leaving, you say 안녕히 계세요. Stay in peace to the person or people staying. If both of you are leaving a place, you'll both say 안녕히 가세요. Go in peace. 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 가세요. Go in peace and 안녕히 계세요. Stay in peace are formal greetings appropriate for almost all situations. You can use them when you're speaking with people older than you, co-workers, and so forth. At this point in your Korean studies, formal greetings should be your default greetings. However, you may find that they're more informal versions are more frequent or useful. Let's learn them. In informal Korean, 잘 가. Bye, literally, go well, is said by the person staying to the person leaving. 
잘가 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 corresponds with 안녕히 가세요. Go in peace. Note 잘가 is informal while 안녕히 가세요 is formal. In between these two politeness levels is 잘가요 a polite but somewhat casual way to say goodbye to someone leaving. 잘가요 잘가요 In informal Korean 잘 있어 by literally stay well is said by the person leaving to the person staying. 잘 있어 잘 있어 잘 있어 corresponds with 안녕히 계세요 stay in peace. Note 잘 있어 is informal while 안녕히 계세요 is formal. In between these two politeness levels is 잘 있어요 a polite but somewhat casual way to say goodbye to someone staying. 잘 있어요 잘 있어요 To recap, in informal Korean, if you are staying, you say 잘가 Bye, literally go well, to the person or people going. If you are leaving, you say 잘 있어 Bye, literally stay well, to the person or people staying. If both of you are leaving, you will both say 잘가 Bye, literally, go well. 잘가 Let's look at the parting greetings once more. Listen and repeat or speak along with me. 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요. 잘 가. 잘 가. 잘 가요. 잘 가요. 잘 있어. 잘 있어. 잘 있어요. 잘 있어요. 안녕. 안녕. Did you notice the last parting greeting I used? 안녕. <coughs> 안녕. Which literally means being well can be used to mean by. 안녕. 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 Can be used as a parting greeting in informal situations by people of equal social status, like classmates or people of relative higher social status towards people of lower social status. However, it should not be used the other way around. 안녕 is a versatile greeting that can also be used as an informal greeting meaning hi. 안녕 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember the formal way to say goodbye to someone leaving? Literally, go in peace. 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 가세요. Do you remember the formal way to say goodbye to someone staying? Literally, stay in peace. <phone rings> 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요. Do you remember the informal way to say bye to someone leaving? Literally, go well. 
잘가. Do you remember the informal way to say bye to someone staying? Literally, stay well. Chari so. Chari so. Do you remember the informal general way to say bye? Annyeong. Annyeong. Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark Morris and you're leaving the coffee shop. Respond by saying goodbye. Literally, stay in peace. Ready? 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 계세요. Listen again and repeat. 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요. Let's try another. Imagine you're Sasha Morris, and you and your friend are both leaving class. Respond by saying, bye. Literally, go well. Ready? 잘 가. 잘 가. Listen again and repeat. 잘 가. 잘 가. Let's try one more. Imagine you are Ben Morris and you're finishing coffee with your college friend, Kaun. Respond by saying, bye, using the informal expression meaning bye, when parting, and hi, when meeting. Ready? 안녕. 안녕. Listen again and repeat. 안녕. 안녕. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to adjust your routine and learn language from home. Many of us are spending more and more time at home. So how do you make the best of this time and learn your target language? Learning at home can be tough with all the distractions. And in this episode, you're going to discover the pros and cons of learning at home and how to successfully learn from home without getting distracted. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Love Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to ask someone out in your target language? With this new cheat sheet, you'll master tons of romantic phrases, just in time for Valentine's Day. Download it for free right now. Second, the Slang Words and Phrases PDF eBook. Do you know any slang in your target language? If not, download this free eBook and master all the must-know slang across 10 chapters. Third, can you talk about containers in your target language? Learn how to say box, bottle, bin, and much more with this quick vocabulary bonus. Fourth, must-know Valentine's Day vocabulary. Can you talk about Valentine's Day in your target language? You'll be able to with this quick one-minute vocabulary lesson. Fifth, the top 15 encouraging phrases. Want to be able to say positive phrases like believe in yourself and don't give up? Then get this bonus phrase lesson. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to adjust your routine and learn language from home. 
Recently, many people have started to work and take classes from home. With language learning, since it's something people do in their own time, a lot of it is done at home anyway. But that doesn't mean that all of this hasn't affected how people learn. If you used a language learning app or listened to lessons during your commute, but you don't commute anymore, the pandemic has probably ruined your flow. With many of us spending more time at home, being able to learn from home efficiently is a good skill to have. Because while learning or working from home sounds good, it's not exactly easy to do. Part one, the pros and cons of learning at home. First, the pros. There's convenience. You can learn whenever you want. You also have more time in the day since you're not commuting or walking from the train station into work. It's also easier to practice speaking. Many people might find it hard to practice on the train or at a lunch break or in the office during work. It might sound a little strange, but at home, you can dedicate more time to practicing speaking. What's your favorite pro of learning at home? Leave us a comment. Now, what about the cons? Distractions. There are a lot more distractions at home. There's the TV, there's the couch and the food and family members coming in and out. Next, there's no physical or mental separation between rest and work, which is crucial for focus. It's the same reason why people prefer going to the gym instead of working out from the comfort of their own home. If you're in a place where there's only one goal, like working out, and you're surrounded by people working out, you'll have no problem doing it. But if you're in a place you associate with rest, eating, and watching TV, you might have trouble focusing. But if you're spending more time at home, then you should at least make the best of it and learn your language at home. Part two, how to successfully learn from home without getting distracted. So here's how you do it. First, pick a dedicated place for learning and preferably not your bed. Just like an office is associated with working time and your bedroom is associated with rest, you need a place associated with language learning. It could be your desk in the corner of the room. It could be your basement as long as it's far from distractions and places of rest. Second, pick a time. That way, for example, when it's 9 p.m., you know it's time to put in 10 minutes of language learning. Three, time box your study sessions. What's time boxing? Time boxing is simply setting a fixed amount of time for an activity. For example, you're going to dedicate the next 10 minutes to language and nothing else. If you usually have trouble concentrating, time boxing is a good way to set boundaries and get things done. Four, start small. Just like with setting small, measurable goals and realistic routines, don't set aside two hours for study time. Instead, try to time box five, 10, or 15 minutes and stick with that for a week or two. You can always increase your time later once you get more comfortable with your routine. Five, do multiple sessions in one day. Instead of trying to master a lesson and the lesson dialogue in one shot, space out your learning throughout the day, in the morning, afternoon, and at night. So take an audio or video lesson and read along with the lesson notes in the morning. You'll get acquainted with the conversation, all the words, and grammar rules. Don't rush to memorize it all. You'll come back to it later in the day. And do this for around five to 15 minutes. During the day, practice shadowing the dialogue. Practice recalling the words. Do this for around 10 minutes. You can also write out the lesson dialogue, practice using the grammar rules, or drill the words with flashcards. And at night, come back and review for about 10 minutes. You can re-listen to the lesson or just the dialogue track. By doing multiple sessions in one day, you'll be a lot more comfortable with the language, simply because you spaced out your learning and came back to review. And while it may feel repetitive, it's the repetition that helps you master the language over the long term. Six, use at home time to practice speaking more. It would be hard to practice if you were commuting or out on a walk, but if you're at home, you can easily speak out loud without drawing attention or feeling embarrassed. So to recap, one, pick a specific place for learning that's far from distractions like your bed. Two, pick a specific time for studying. Three, time box your study sessions. Four, start small. Five, do multiple sessions in one day. And six, use at home time to practice speaking more. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time we'll talk about the power of learning a language with someone else.
If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. If you wanted to learn a language even just 25 years ago, you would have needed to go to a library, take in-person classes, and dig for the right resources. Before you could even begin regular practice sessions, you had to find the tools you needed to learn. Now, with just a quick Google search, you can find literally anything you need to learn a language online. If you forget how to conjugate a verb, you can refresh your memory right away on Wikipedia. If you want to watch a foreign language movie with subtitles, you can search for one on YouTube. You can even have one-on-one -on -one lessons with native speakers of the language you're studying. Tons of platforms offer video and audio lessons. These days, the challenge is finding the resources that are right for you. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can get the most out of our language learning resources. Number one, aim for one podcast a day. At the beginning of your studies, it's easy to set a big target, like two hours of language practice every day. But for most of us, that's not realistic. After a long day of work or school, it's difficult to commit to more hours studying language. Instead, you can make your goal to do small things consistently. This can help you move forward, sometimes almost without you noticing it. Try to listen to one podcast every day. They're only 10 to 15 minutes, so everyone can make time for that. You can review previous podcast lessons or listen to new lessons. Just make sure you get in one each day. Number two, use the lesson review tools. If you want to maximize your learning after you listen to a podcast, make sure to use the lesson review tools. Reviewing what you've learned is an important part of learning anything. The more you see or practice a specific word or phrase, the better you'll remember it. Number three, review the 2,000 most common words in spaced repetition flashcards. In each language, there are some words that make up the majority of written and spoken conversation. You can use this knowledge to focus your studies. If you learn the 2,000 most common words in the language you're studying, you'll have a great foundation. The vocabulary lists in our program are a great tool for this. You'll get example phrases with the target words. You can listen to the correct pronunciation and intonation of each word. Use these lists along with a spaced repetition program and create your own flashcard deck. This is a great thing to have on your phone. You can study vocabulary on your commute, when waiting for someone, or while traveling. Number four, make use of short periods of time. How much time do you spend every week doing things like commuting, shopping for groceries, walking, or cleaning? Probably more than a couple of hours, right? These are examples of time you can be using to build your language skills. You can use it to listen to language podcasts, and you can do this without specifically scheduling a time to practice. If you have all the resources you need wherever you are, you can use every opportunity you have to practice. You can download all of our lessons to your phone. Each season of podcasts will be stored as an album, so it's easy to put on your headphones and listen to a quick lesson whenever you've got the time. Number five, have the right expectations. It's easy to find all sorts of so-called quick language learning systems and secret tricks that promise fluency in just a couple months or even weeks. While you might find some good tips now and then, most of these claims are not based in reality. Make sure you don't measure your own progress against these impossible standards. If you've been told you can completely master a new language in three months, but by the end of your studies you've made just a little bit of progress, it can be demotivating. Fluency in a language can take years to attain, and getting the confidence to use that language can take more time. Set small goals for yourself when you're learning. When you achieve them, celebrate. Learning a new language is not a short-term journey, but with our resources, you can see improvements every day. If you want to get more tips on learning language, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. 
You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. Have you ever wondered if you could learn a language faster? We asked our experienced learners for their best tips so you can steal these and use them for yourself. In this video, you'll discover five tactics for faster language learning. Number one, try more challenging lessons to improve faster. If you're wondering, why should I try a harder lesson? Think about the gym. Studying is a bit like working out. If you wanna get bigger and stronger, you need to exercise with heavier weights. But you might think, if I try a harder lesson, I won't be able to understand everything. Remember, that's normal. When you can't understand 100% of a lesson, it means there are things in the lesson for you to learn. Keep in mind that you should challenge yourself, but not choose lessons that are impossible. And make sure to use the tools you have to study the things you don't know. With our learning program, teachers break down the conversation in every lesson. You also get the translations and explanations right there on the lesson page. There are also lesson notes, transcripts, and dialogue study tools for you to use. Remember how you felt when you started studying and try to keep that beginner mindset. When you realize you don't understand something, don't run away from it. Instead, use the tools you have to work to understand it. This will help you learn faster. Number two, put your learning on autopilot. Imagine you have a bunch of learning apps and textbooks. Maybe you have a bunch of study tools on your smartphone or a bunch of books piled on a table you wanna read. Where do you even begin? A lot of learners begin with a lot of enthusiasm, so they buy a lot of resources, but then get overwhelmed. They're not sure where to start or what to do or how to continue. Let's think about a textbook. It's easy to understand how to use a textbook. You follow the pages, begin with chapter one, then go to chapter two, chapter three, and so on until you finish the book. The road forward is clear. You don't have to think about anything except moving forward with your studies. So how do you apply this kind of autopilot approach if you're not using a textbook? You can actually do this with our language learning program's tracking feature. With our progress tracking dashboard, once you've chosen your learning level, we'll give you a recommended lesson pathway and feed you lessons one by one. The dashboard will tell you which lessons to take from lesson one to lesson two to lesson three. You'll be guided as you work on improving. Number three, read lines from the lesson dialogue out loud slowly. Then reread and increase your speed. This tactic is powerful for two reasons. It helps you become able to read faster and speak faster. Speaking smoothly is something many beginners say they struggle with. So this kind of practice can be very beneficial for beginning learners. With our language learning program, for every lesson, you get a conversation. Read the dialogue with the line by line dialogue. Read out loud slowly once, then reread a bit faster, then again, and keep increasing your speed until you can say the lines comfortably and sound like a native. You can take it a step further and try to memorize the dialogue too. Try recalling it after your study session and say the lines out loud. This kind of review will help you progress and help you remember. Number four, review old lessons to master them completely. Review is essential for your learning. If you come across a new word, you won't remember it if you see it only once. It takes repetition to remember something. Make sure to take time to review past lessons. Give your brain a chance to remember the things you studied previously. For example, if you try our listening comprehension lessons and you don't understand absolutely everything, check the translations and try listening again. Use the study tools you have available to make the most of your review sessions. Number five, download the dialogue tracks and listen to the conversations. This is a super popular immersion tactic. Here's how it works. When you're done with a lesson, download the dialogue track. You'll get the conversation in your target language. Then make a playlist of the dialogue tracks. Each track is about 10 to 30 seconds long. You can even put the tracks and playlists on your device and listen to them throughout the day, just as you would listen to music. This helps make the language feel a bit more natural, more like part of your everyday life. Instead of music, you're immersing yourself in conversations. This can be a great way to work on improving your listening skills. This video covered five tips to help you learn a language faster. 
For even more ways to learn faster, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. All cultures have a form of music. Music is one of the most basic tools we can use to learn a language. Parents use music and songs to teach their young children simple words. Music can help us focus, help us remember better, and thus help us as we acquire a language. Music can aid our coordination and physical development too. So, how do we use music to support our language learning now as grown people? In this video, we'll look at four ways to use music to study a language. Imitating structures and rhythms is important when learning a language, and the same is true for music. When children play with other children, they listen to songs, move their bodies as they play games, and try to imitate what they see and hear. This practice of regular imitation aids children as they gain their language skills. Repeating song lyrics like those from nursery rhymes helps kids retain words and expressions. Children may not know the meanings of all the words in the songs they sing, but they remember the songs, the vocabulary, and the rhythms. Children practice making sounds by mimicking the pronunciation of words. This can be the first step to the child understanding the meaning and use of a word. You might not realize it, but you probably still remember many of the songs and rhymes you learned when you were a child. We're able to remember expressions, words, and ideas effectively when they're put to music. This is also the reason you can memorize the lyrics of songs you like rather easily. Patterns like those in many popular songs are repetitive. We review the rhythms and the words each time we listen. Everybody's different, so if you want to use music to support your language learning, we're here to provide four different ways. Number one, passive listening. One way to study with music is through passive listening. You can do this with songs you have in your target language on your computer, a CD, your favorite streaming site. You can use this method as long as you have access to music in the language you want to study. Turn the music on and let it play in the background while you do something else, like studying, cooking dinner, or cleaning the house. Do this regularly and let your mind get used to the idea of hearing your target language in your environment. This kind of familiarity with the language will help you as you work towards fluency. Passive listening is one form of language immersion. As you listen to the background music over and over and get more comfortable with it, you'll start to notice keywords, intonation, grammar patterns, and so on. With enough practice and with enough different music to listen to, you might even start to recognize certain sounds and words when you hear them somewhere else. Number two, memorization. You can use music to help build your vocabulary and memorize words effectively. This method focuses on studying lyrics and songs to improve your ability to recall the words. Look up the lyrics to a song you're listening to and review them line by line. You can read the lyrics as you listen to the song or try to remember the next line in the song before it is sung. Memorization practice like this enhances your listening skills and boosts your reading skills. Number three, sing along. Our first tip in this lesson was to listen passively. This tip, however, is to listen actively by singing along to your music. Look up the lyrics of a song you like. Play the song and try to sing along. You may also be able to find videos on YouTube of popular songs with the lyrics included. If it's difficult at first, don't worry. Remember, regular review and practice is essential. Just as we usually need to hear a song in our native language a few times before we remember the words, you can expect to need to listen several times over a few days before you feel comfortable with all the words. Through practicing this way, you'll learn grammar, spelling, and pronunciation. You'll also get to enjoy a song you like. Moreover, this type of exercise will help you work on your reading and listening skills. A good way to check your progress is by trying to sing the song by yourself. You can sing with no music, or you can try looking for a karaoke version of the song you like. If you can sing all the words, great. If not, you can go back to the lyrics and study a bit more until you master the track. Number four, transcription. To do this exercise, listen to the song. As it plays, write down or transcribe the lyrics. You can start and stop the song at the end of each line to slow things down a bit. 
If you begin your studies with this method, you might catch only a few words, but don't get frustrated. Play the song and write down everything you can hear. Then play the song again and write down the words that you missed the first time you listened. With practice like this, your listening skills will improve and so will your spelling. These are just a few ways that you can use music to study another language. Be patient and don't forget to enjoy the music you're listening to as you study. If you want to start simple, try listening to children's songs in your target language. The song lyrics tend to be repeated a lot, and this can help you identify key words quickly. Learning a language through music is fun. It can help you focus your attention and improve your memory. This can be a great part of your self-study plan. If you want to get more tips on learning language, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. 
As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Giving Directions Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to tell a taxi driver where to go in your target language? You'll be able to. With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll learn must-know words and phrases for giving directions. Second, the Most Common Verbs PDF eBook. You'll learn over 90 common verbs with this bonus PDF picture eBook. Download and review on any device. Third, how to talk about what you do in your free time. Learn how to say video games, fishing, and much more. You'll pick up over 25 words for leisure activities with this vocab bonus. Fourth, how to learn from home, learning strategies. Want to learn the language from the comfort of your own home? This one minute lesson will give you all the best tactics for learning languages. Fifth, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus will teach you the 35 must-know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. Sixth, free language learning audiobooks. Want free access to our huge library of beginner-level audiobooks? Then click the link below. Save the audiobooks to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get up to 45% off our six month challenge sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. This is Mark Morris. He's on a plane to Korea. Ming-Gyu Moon, a passenger sitting next to him, introduces himself by saying, Hello, I'm Ming-Gyu Moon. Nice to meet you. 안녕하세요. 저는 문민규입니다. 반갑습니다. Listen to the conversation and focus on Mark's response. Note, the speakers in this conversation use formal Korean. Ready? 안녕하세요. 저는... 문민규입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 마크입니다. 반갑습니다. 
once more with the English translation. 안녕하세요. 저는 문민규입니다. 반갑습니다. Hello, I'm Mingyu Moon. Nice to meet you. 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 마크입니다. 반갑습니다. Hello, I'm Mark Morris. Nice to meet you. Let's take a closer look at Mark's response. Do you remember how Mark Morris introduces himself? Hello, I'm Mark Morris. Nice to meet you. First is 안녕하세요. Meaning hello. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. This phrase is usually the first thing someone says when making a self introduction in Korean. 안녕하세요. Before we look at how Mark introduces his name, let's look at the last part of Mark's response. The phrase is 반갑습니다. This literally means happy to meet you, but translates as nice to meet you. 반갑습니다. 반갑습니다. Do you remember how Mark says, I'm Mark Morris? First is 저 meaning I. 저, 저. This is the humble word for I. Next is 는 the topic marking particle. 는, 는. It marks I as the topic of this sentence. Think of it like as for in the expression as for me. Together, it's 저는 as for me. 저는 Next is Mark Morris's name. Notice the name order. First is Mark's family name. 모리스 Morris 모리스 모리스 Followed by his first name. Mark. 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 Together, it's Morris Mark. Morris Mark. Morris Mark. In Korean, the order is family name first, followed by given names. Mingyu Moon also uses this name order when he says. Munmingyu. Family name, Moon. Followed by given name, Mingyu. Last is. Imnida. In this case, it's like the am in I am. Imnida. 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 Is the formal form of the verb. Ida. Meaning to be. Altogether, it's 저는 모리스 마크입니다. This literally means As for me, Morris Mark, I am. But it translates as I'm Mark Morris. 저는 모리스 마크입니다. The pattern is 저는 name입니다. I'm name. 저는 name입니다. To use this pattern, simply replace the name placeholder with your name. Imagine you're Karen Morris. Karen Morris. Karen Morris. Karen Morris. Say I'm Karen Morris. Use Korean name order. Family name first, followed by given name. 
Ready? I'm Karen Morris. Note, there are two versions of the topic marking particle. Then follows words that end in the vowel. Then follows words that end in a consonant. Let's look at some examples. Falls. In the dialogue, then follows ta, as ta ends in a vowel. Ta는 as for me. Ta는. Consonant. In the case of words that end in consonants, like 오늘, meaning today, 은 follows, 오늘은, 오늘은. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 안녕하세요. 저는 문민규입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 문민규입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 마크입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 마크입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 카렌입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 카렌입니다. 반갑습니다. Panggapsmida. 반갑습니다. 심선영입니다. I'm Sun Young Shim. 심선영입니다. She omits. 저는 and says her name. 심선영 followed by 입니다 In Korean, when the context is clear, the speaker often omits the topic. In this case, it's clear the speaker is talking about herself. The pattern is name 입니다 I'm name name 입니다 Do you remember my introduction at the start of the lesson? Kim Sophie입니다. I'm Sophie Kim. Kim Sophie입니다. This is shortened in the same way, by omitting. 저는? You should be aware of this shortcut, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern. 저는? Name입니다. I'm name. 저는 name입니다. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say hello? Annyeonghaseyo. Annyeonghaseyo. And how to say, nice to meet you. p 
반갑습니다. 반갑습니다. Do you remember how to say I? 저, 저. And how to say as for me? 저는, 저는. Do you remember how Mark Murray says his name? 모리스 마크 모리스 마크 And how Mark Murray says, I'm Mark Morris. 저는 모리스 마크입니다. 저는 모리스 마크입니다. Do you remember how Mark Morris says, Hello, I'm Mark Morris. Nice to meet you. 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 마크입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 마크입니다. 반갑습니다. And do you remember how Mingyu Moon says, Hello, I'm Mingyu Moon. Nice to meet you. 안녕하세요. 저는 문민규입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 문민규입니다. 반갑습니다. 모리스 카렌 Respond to Mingyu Moon's self-introduction. Ready? 안녕하세요. 저는 문민규입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 카렌입니다. 반갑습니다. Listen again and repeat. 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 카렌입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 카렌입니다. 반갑습니다. Let's try another. Imagine your 심선영 Ready? 안녕하세요. 저는 문민규입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 심선영입니다. 반갑습니다. Listen again and repeat. 안녕하세요. 저는 심선영입니다. 반갑습니다. 안녕하세요. 저는 심선영입니다. 반갑습니다. Let's try one more. Imagine your 김소피 Ready? 안녕하세요. 저는 문민규입니다. 반갑습니다. 
안녕하세요. 저는 김소피입니다. 반갑습니다. Listen again and repeat. 안녕하세요. 저는 김소피입니다. 반갑습니다. When introducing yourself as a Korean learner, use the name or name order with which you'd like to be addressed. For example, you might want to share only your given name. 저는 카렌입니다. I'm Karen. 저는 카렌입니다. Or you might want to give your given name followed by your family name. 저는 카렌 모리스입니다. I'm Karen Maurice. 저는 카렌 모리스입니다. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done! Now you know how to introduce yourself in Korean. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. This is Mark Morris. He's on a plane to Korea. Min Kyu Moon, a passenger sitting next to him, asks, Mark, where are you from? Mark 씨는 어디에서 왔어요? Listen to the conversation and focus on Mark's response. Note, the speakers in this conversation use polite Korean. Ready? 마크 씨는 어디에서 왔어요? 뉴욕에서 왔어요. Once more with the English translation. 마크 씨는 어디에서 왔어요? Mark, where are you from? 뉴욕에서 왔어요. I'm from New York. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Mingyu Moon asks, Mark, where are you from? Mark 씨는 어디에서 왔어요? First is, Mark 씨. Mark. Mark 씨. This starts with Mark's name. Mark. 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 After this is. She. A polite suffix attached to a person's name. She. 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 Is commonly used amongst people of equal social status, age, or position. This suffix can be used with any gender and can be attached to a person's given name or their full name, but not the last name alone. Together. Mark. 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 Next is the particle. Dun. The topic marking particle. Dun. Dun. Here. Dun indicates that Mark is the topic of the sentence. Think of it like as for in the expression as for Mark. In Korean, it's impolite to refer to someone as you. Using the person's name is considered more indirect and therefore more polite. Together, it's Mark 씨는 As for Mark Mark 씨는 Note, 
There are two forms of the topic marking particle. 는 follows words that end in a vowel, such as in 마크시 Next is the word 어디 Where 어디 어디 After this is the particle 에서 The location marking particle 에서 에서 in this sentence, think of it as the from, as in, where are you from? Next is, 왔어요. Which means, you came, as in, you came from. 왔어요. 왔어요. Note, the word you is understood from context, as the speaker is asking a question. 왔어요. Comes from the verb, 오다. Meaning to come, as in to come from. 오다. Altogether, 마크 씨는 어디에서 왔어요? This literally means, as for Mark, where from you came. But it translates as, Mark, where are you from? 마크 씨는 어디에서 왔어요? Remember this question. You'll hear it again later in this lesson. Now, let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Mark Morris says, I'm from New York? New York에서 왔어요. First is, New York. New York. New York. New York. After this is 에서. The location marking particle 에서. It marks 뉴욕. New York as the location that's relevant to the action of the sentence. Think of it as the from, as in from New York. 뉴욕에서. This is followed by 왔어요. I came. As in, I came from. 왔어요. 왔어요. Note, the word I is understood from context, as Mark is answering a question. 왔어요. Is from the verb 오다. Meaning, to come. 오다. Altogether, it's 뉴욕에서 왔어요. This literally means New York from I came, but it translates as I came from New York. New York에서 왔어요. The pattern is hometown에서 왔어요. I'm from hometown. hometown에서 왔어요. To use this pattern, simply replace hometown with your hometown. Imagine you're from Seattle. 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 Say, I'm from Seattle. Seattle에서 왔어요. I'm from Seattle. 시애틀에서 왔어요. Pronunciation note. Listen to New York and the location marking particle pronounced separately. New York. New York. New York. 에서. The location marking particle. 에서. Now listen to the New York followed by the location marking particle. 뉴욕에서 뉴욕에서 Notice the difference? The last consonant in 뉴욕 blends with the vowel in 에서 뉴욕에서 뉴욕에서 Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 
뉴욕에서 왔어요. 뉴욕에서 왔어요. 평창에서 왔어요. 평창에서 왔어요. 시애틀에서 왔어요. 시애틀에서 왔어요. 런던에서 왔어요. 런던에서 왔어요. 서울에서 왔어요. 서울에서 왔어요. 호주에서 왔어요. 호주에서 왔어요. Did you notice the last speaker says a country name in place of a city name? I am from Australia. You can use this pattern to talk about your country, not just your hometown. In the example, the speaker is from Australia. 호주, 호주. This pattern is home country. 에서 왔어요. I'm from home country. Home country. 에서 왔어요. You should be aware of this pattern, but for this lesson, we'll use city names. 평창 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 런던 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 서울 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 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say New York? New York. New York. And how to say from New York. New York is hot. New York is hot. Do you remember how Mark says, I'm from New York? New York is hot. New York is hot. Do you remember how to say where? Odi, Odi, and how Mingyu Moon addresses Mark. Makusi, Makusi. Do you remember how Mingyu asks Mark, "Where are you from?" 마크 씨는 어디에서 왔어요? 마크 씨는 어디에서 왔어요? Do you remember how to say London? 런던 런던 And how to say Seattle? 시애틀, 시애틀. 
Do you remember how to say so? Seoul. Seoul. Let's practice. Imagine you're Jack Jones from London. Respond to Ming Yu Moon's question. Ready? 어디에서 왔어요? London에서 왔어요. Listen again and repeat. London에서 왔어요. London에서 왔어요. Let's try another. Imagine you're Eugene Elm from Seattle. Ready? 어디에서 왔어요? Listen again and repeat. Let's try one more. Now, imagine you're Sophie Kim from Seoul. Ready? 어디에서 왔어요? 서울에서 왔어요. Listen again and repeat. 서울에서 왔어요. 서울에서 왔어요. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done! Now you know how to say where you're from in Korean. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. This is Mark Morris, and he's on a plane to Seoul. He asks the passenger sitting next to him, Min Yu Moon, Are you a student? 학생이에요? Listen to the conversation and focus on Mingyu Moon's response. Note, the speakers in this conversation use polite Korean. Ready? 학생이에요? 아니요. 학생이 아니에요. 투자가예요. Once more with the English translation. 학생이에요? Are you a student? 아니요. 학생이 아니에요. 투자가예요. No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Mark asks, Are you a student? First is 학생 Student 학생 학생 Next is 예요 Here, it's like the R in are you. 예요 예요 Note, the word you is understood from context, as Mark is asking a question. And here the question is formed by the rising intonation. 
Listen again. 학생이에요? 이에요. Is from the verb 이다. Meaning to be. 이다. Note. 이에요. Follows words that end in a consonant like 학생. Altogether. 학생이에요? Are you a student? 학생이에요? Now, let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Mingyu Moon says, No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. Aniyo, Haksengi, Aniyo, Tujagaeo. First is the expression. Aniyo. Meaning, no. Aniyo. Aniyo. It answers Mark's yes or no question. Are you a student? Haksengiyo. Next, Ming Yu says, Haksengi Aniyo. I'm not a student. Haksengi Aniyo. First is, Haksengi. Student. Haksengi. Next is, E. The subject marking particle. E. E. It marks student as the subject of the sentence. Note, there are two versions of the subject marking particle. E. Follows words that end in a consonant, like 학생. Next is 아니에요. Here, not I am, but it translates as I am not. 아니에요. Note, the word I is understood from context, as Ming Yu is responding to a question. 아니에요. Is from the verb 아니다. Meaning to not be. 아니다. Altogether. 학생이 아니에요. I'm not a student. 학생이 아니에요. Finally, Ming Yu says. 투자가예요. I'm an investor. 투자가예요. First. 투자가. Investor. 투자가 투자가 Next is 예요 In this case, it's like the am in I am. 예요 예요 Note, the word I is understood from context, as the speaker is answering a question. 예요 Is from the verb 이다 Meaning to be. 이다. Note. 예요. Follows words that end in a vowel like. 투자가. Together. 투자가예요. I'm an investor. 투자가예요. Altogether. 아니요. 학생이 아니에요. 투자가예요. No, I'm not a student. I'm an investor. 아니요. 학생이 아니에요. 투자가예요. Note there are two forms of the subject marking particle. 이 follows words that end in a consonant, such as 학생 가 follows words that end in a vowel, such as 투자가 Note, there are two polite forms of the verb 이다 to be 이에요 follows words that end in a consonant, such as 학생 예요 follows words that end in a vowel, such as 투자가 The pattern is 아니요 Occupation ending in consonant, 이 아니에요. 아니요. Occupation ending in vowel, 가 아니에요. No, I'm not occupation. 
actual occupation ending in consonant. 예요. Actual occupation ending in vowel. 예요. I'm actual occupation. 아니요. Occupation ending in consonant. 이 아니에요. 아니요. Occupation ending in vowel. 가 아니에요. Actual occupation ending in consonant. 예요. Actual occupation ending in vowel. 예요. No, I'm not occupation. I'm actual occupation. Imagine you're Eugene Eom, a student. Mingyu asks you if you're a teacher. 선생님. 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 Say, no, I'm not a teacher. I'm a student. Ready? Anyo, Sanseng Nimi Anyo, Haxeng Yeo. No, I'm not a teacher. I'm a student. Anyo, Sanseng Nimi Anyo, Haxeng Yeo. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 아니요. 학생이 아니에요. 투자가예요. 아니요. 학생이 아니에요. 투자가예요. 아니요. 선생님이 아니에요. 학생이에요. 아니요. 선생님이 아니에요. 학생이에요. 아니요. 선생님이 아니에요. 엔지니어예요. 아니요. 선생님이 아니에요. 엔지니어예요. 아니요. 간호사가 아니에요. 의사예요. 아니요. 간호사가 아니에요. 의사예요. 아니요. 학생이 아니에요. 선생님이에요. 아니요. 학생이 아니에요. 선생님이에요. 아니요. 바리스타예요. 아니요. 바리스타예요. Did you notice how the last speaker omits part of the response? 아니요. 바리스타예요. No, I am a barista. 아니요, 바리스타예요. When directly responding to someone's question, it's often possible to omit part of the response. Here, by simply answering, 아니요, No, there is no need to say, 학생이 아니에요. I'm not a student. This pattern is, 아니요, Actual occupation ending in consonant. 예요. 아니요. Actual occupation ending in vowel. 예요. No, I'm actual occupation. You should be aware of this pattern, but for this lesson, we'll use the pattern. 아니요. Occupation ending in consonant. 이 아니에요. 아니요. Occupation ending in vowel. 가 아니에요. No, I'm not occupation. Actual occupation ending in consonant. 예요. Actual occupation ending in vowel. 예요. I'm actual occupation.
Let's review the key vocabulary. 선생님 Teacher 선생님 선생님 엔지니어 Engineer 엔지니어 엔지니어 간호사 Nurse 간호사 간호사 의사 Doctor 의사 의사 바리스타 Barista 바리스타 바리스타 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say investor? Tuzaga. Tuzaga. And how Mingyu Moon says, I am an investor. Tuzagaeo. Tuzagaeo. Do you remember how to say student? Haksing. Haksing. And how Mingyu Moon says, I'm not a student. Do you remember how to say no? Do you remember how Mingyu Moon says, No, I'm not a student. I am an investor. Aniyo, Haksengi, Aniyo, Tujagaeo. Aniyo, Haksengi, Aniyo, Tujagaeo. Do you remember how Mark Morris asks, Are you a student? Remember, Mark uses formal Korean. 학생이에요? 학생이에요? Do you remember the word for teacher? 선생님 선생님 And the word for engineer? 엔지니어 엔지니어 Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark Morris and you're an engineer. Respond to Mingyu's question. Ready? 선생님이에요? 아니요. 선생님이 아니에요. 엔지니어예요. Listen again and repeat. 아니요. 선생님이 아니에요. 엔지니어예요. <목소리> 아니요. 선생님이 아니에요. 엔지니어예요. Let's try another. Imagine you're Eugene Aum and you're a student. Ready? 
선생님이에요? 아니요. 선생님이 아니에요. 학생이에요. Listen again and repeat. 아니요. 선생님이 아니에요. 학생이에요. 아니요. 선생님이 아니에요. 학생이에요. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Sophie Kim and you're a teacher. Ready? 학생이에요. 아니요. 학생이 아니에요. 선생님이에요. Listen again and repeat. 아니요. 학생이 아니에요. 선생님이에요. 아니요. 학생이 아니에요. 선생님이에요. This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can-do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try any time you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Well done! Now you know how to talk about your occupation in Korean. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. This is the end of this lesson. Hey everyone, welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. If you have trouble sticking with your language learning goals, it's probably because you're skipping one specific step. It's the step you need to take before you even start any learning, and doing it will help you stick with the language, not get overwhelmed, and reach your language goals. So today you'll learn, one, what solo language learners need to succeed, and two, how to do self-assessment and set yourself up for success. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Giving Directions Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to tell a taxi driver where to go in your target language? You'll be able to. With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll learn must-know words and phrases for giving directions. Second, the Most Common Verbs PDF eBook. You'll learn over 90 common verbs with this bonus PDF picture eBook. Download and review on any device. Third, how to talk about what you do in your free time. Learn how to say video games, fishing, and much more. You'll pick up over 25 words for leisure activities with this vocab bonus. Fourth, how to learn from home, learning strategies. Want to learn the language from the comfort of your home? This one minute lesson will give you all the best tactics for learning languages. Fifth, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you the 35 must-know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. Here's a question for you. When you want to learn a language, how do you usually get started with that goal? You might say the inspiration comes first, and that motivates you to start. Then you get a textbook or an app and go from there, right? That's a pretty standard answer, but how does that tend to work out? 
most people end up falling off a week or a month later. Why do you think that happens? Leave a comment with why you think people tend to lose inspiration quickly. More often than not, it happens because you pick a goal, a learning routine, or a resource that overwhelms you and just isn't right for you. Here's a typical example. Let's say you work an eight hour day and you wanna to try to start learning. Most people would try to squeeze in learning for one or two hours at night, or you could try and wake up an hour early. And usually that doesn't work out because you're trying to do things that you're not used to. Wake up earlier and study earlier. It doesn't fit your current lifestyle. So what should you do differently? Well, let's take an example from language schools. Before you start learning, language schools force you to take an assessment test on the first day. Why? So that they make sure the language lessons fit your level and put you in the proper class. The goal of an assessment test is to find out where you are and meet you there. That's something most solo learners don't do. And the problem is if you're a solo learner, no one assesses you and you yourself don't know what routine works best for you, how much time you can set aside, and how much studying you can comfortably do. We all imagine we can do an hour a day, but realistically speaking, it'll be a lot less than that. So, that's where self-assessment comes in. Before you start learning a language, or do any goal for that matter, it's important to know where you are in life, what your daily schedule is like, when you're busy and when you're free. So you can set your expectations, know how much time you can put in, and so you can start learning at a pace that works for you. Now, how do you actually assess yourself? There are three assessments you can do. One, a life assessment. Two, a routine assessment. And three, language assessment. Language assessment will only be helpful if you already have some experience. If you're brand new, you won't need this. First, life assessment. Here, the goal is to see how the language will fit into your life and how you generally deal with goals. As in, if you succeeded with a goal before, what helped you succeed? You could take that and apply it here. If you failed before, find out why so you can avoid it this time. So you'll need to answer the following questions. Why are you learning this language? How will it help your life? What current connections do you have to this language? For example, listening to music, watching TV, you have a relative, you have neighbors or friends that speak it. What have you been doing so far to learn? Have you learned languages before? Have you failed any goals before? How or why? Have you succeeded with any goals before? How or why? Write these questions out and answer them. Next, the routine assessment. Write out your daily routine for a whole week. For example, wake up at 7 a.m., breakfast at 8 a.m., commute to work at 8.30 a.m., arrive at work at 9.30 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and so on. Do this for every day of the week. The goal here is to see what your daily routine is like, so you know when you're free, when you're busy, and where you can fit in language learning. That way, if you're super busy on Mondays and five minutes is all you can do, then that's good enough. You won't feel bad about doing only five minutes. If you see that you spend 30 minutes on commuting, add language learning on top of that existing routine. If you take walks or go for a jog, play an audio lesson there. Or even if you're cooking at a certain time, play an audio lesson in the background. Remember, look for an existing routine that you already stick with, like commuting, and where you can multitask. Don't try to create new routines. For example, waking up at 7 a.m. to learn will set you up for failure. If you usually wake up at 8 a.m., waking up at 7 a.m. will be even harder. And then, actually trying to learn a language at 7 a.m. makes it even harder. This is where new learners start having trouble. You're trying to do two things at once, trying to learn the language and trying to stick to a new routine. One is hard enough. Trying to do two can overwhelm you. So piggyback off of your existing routines first so you can build momentum. And finally, there's language assessment. If you're an absolute beginner, you won't need much of an assessment. Just start with our absolute beginner recommended learning pathway. But if you have experience and want to assess yourself, there are two things you can do. First, if you're a Premium Plus user, then you're asked to do an assessment test when you join, but you can always request it again from your teacher. And second, if you're a Premium user, check our recommended pathways. We assign these pathways, level one to level five, based on your learning level, from absolute beginner to advanced. At the start of each pathway, there's a diagnostic test. You can take that to assess yourself. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about when routines grow stale, how to learn more language with a new routine. 
If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. What's your reason for learning language? Is it a personal goal, a hobby, or do you have dreams of moving to a country where it's spoken? In this video, you'll learn why your reason is crucial for motivation and for your success in language learning. We'll look at the top 10 reasons for learning a language from language learners just like you. What's your number one reason for learning a language? Whatever your reason is, whether big or small, knowing it or knowing your why is crucial for success and motivation. Number one, I love the culture and the people who speak the language. This is a popular answer. Learning a language can be a great way to learn more about the culture and open up new ways to experience it. Number two, I want to understand my favorite songs, movies, and TV shows. That's right. Songs, movies, and shows are great ways to immerse yourself in the language. If you're spending your time learning and also immersing yourself, you'll learn faster. Number three, it's a beautiful language. Sometimes the answer is as simple as that. You have a genuine interest in the language itself. Number four, my family comes from a place where the language is spoken. This can be popular for students who have moved to a new country and might want to connect to their home country's culture. Learning a language lets them learn things about their heritage and communicate with people who can teach them more about their cultural history. If your grandmother speaks a different language from you, it can be pretty hard to connect. So a lot of people want to learn a language to connect to family members as well. Number five, I want to speak to my partner's family in their language. Similar to the reason above, perhaps you want to speak to your partner's parents or grandparents, but they don't speak your language. Not only can learning their native language let you connect with them on a more personal level, but it's also likely to impress them. Number six, I'm learning the language to impress someone. We have many students say that they want to learn a new language to impress someone in their life. This could be a teacher, a parent, a friend, or even someone they admire and look up to. It always feels good to accomplish something and have other people recognize and be proud of your achievement. And you see this very often in language learning. When you learn a new phrase or can make a longer conversation, the people around you are bound to be impressed. Number seven, a love of traveling. There's no surprise here. Many people want to learn a new language to be able to travel more. Because you can see new places and learn about different cultures, traveling is a popular hobby for many people. And what better way to connect with the people that you meet on your travels than by being able to speak with them in their native language. We have a lot of students who just want to learn some basic conversations to help them on their trips, but even this can help you day to day. Number eight, I want to live in a country that speaks the language. After traveling around, someone might discover a country that really appeals to them and they might decide they want to move there. But their language skills could use some work. Or maybe for a job or family reason, someone has to move to a new country. Not knowing the language can really make adjusting to a new home and even a new culture much more difficult. We have a lot of students who want to learn a language to help them when they move. Number nine, I just love learning languages. This is popular for people whose hobby is learning other languages. They fall in love with the process of actually studying and being able to speak in a new language. It's a huge feeling of accomplishment. Number 10, I want to open my mind and become more international. It's so important to expand your horizons and learn about more than your own culture. People around the world live their lives in different ways, and it's good to learn about them and how they interact. You never know what you could learn by opening your ears and mind to new things. Whatever your reason might be for learning a new language, as long as it keeps you motivated, it's a good one. Learning a new language is not an easy journey. It's one filled with lots of ups and downs. So keep in mind your reason and motivation for learning, whether it's so you can move to a new country or connect with a grandparent and let it push you towards success. And if you're ready to achieve your language goals, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. 
get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to know how to improve your listening and speaking skills, be able to save conversations, listen to them as many times as you want, and learn hundreds of practical everyday conversations? Well, there is an easy way to do this. In this video, we'll go over how to speak more using the dialogue track. So, what is the dialogue track? The dialogue track is an audio track with just the conversation from the lesson. It's only about 10 to 30 seconds long. Let's say you're looking at a five minute lesson about ordering food at a restaurant. First, you hear a conversation. Then our teachers explain every grammar rule and translate every word, so you know what it all means. That's where the dialogue track comes in. It gives you just the conversation. Here's what makes the dialogue track so powerful. First, you can quickly review the conversation without re-listening to the lesson. The dialogue track is just 10 to 30 seconds long, so it won't take you very long to cover both new and old information. This makes it perfect for a quick review of what you've just learned, and it helps keep it fresh in your brain. Second, you'll remember the conversations easier. Listen on repeat, like you would with a song, and the words, phrases, and grammar rules will stick better. And the more you come back to re-listen, the better it will all stick. Third, you'll speak more of your target language. So if you have 10, 20, or 100 dialogue tracks like that, then you have 10, 20, or 100 conversations that you'll know inside out and that you can use in real life. For example, conversations like catching up with friends, ordering at a restaurant, talking about your family, introducing yourself, and much, much more. Fourth, you improve your listening skills and can immerse yourself in the language. So imagine you've finished 20 lessons and you've downloaded 20 dialogue tracks to your phone. That's 20 conversations. You can create a playlist and play those 20 tracks and get used to the language and immerse yourself. To recap what we just learned, here's what you do to make the most of the dialogue tracks. First, after you finish a lesson, download the dialogue track. Save it to your computer or phone so you can listen to it on repeat whenever possible. Just replace three to 15 minutes of music listening for some language review. Next, if you've finished 20 lessons, you should have 20 dialogue tracks. Use those to create a playlist of these dialogue tracks so that you can listen to all kinds of conversations. And finally, try shadowing the conversations that you hear. This will become super easy once you've heard the conversation enough times. But if you're still struggling with a word or two, go back to the lesson and check the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation to find the words you need to practice. Boost your speaking skills with the dialogue track and check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to power up your language? You can do this by using practical lessons that you can use in everyday life. In this video, you'll find out what it takes to power up your language right now. Imagine you're speaking a language without stopping to think. You have all the words and grammar to express what you want to say, and they're all flowing out of you as if you were a native speaker. That's when language becomes powerful. So how do you power up your language skills like that? Books and software alone won't help, but actual practical daily conversation lessons will. Native speakers that explain the conversation and teach you how to respond will power your language up. And so will these tools to help you master vocabulary and pronunciation quickly. First, power up your language with premium. This includes hundreds of audio and video lessons that will get you speaking. And you should know that we publish new lessons weekly. So on top of the current lesson library, there are even more lessons that you can learn along the way. And whatever your learning level is, we start you off with a lesson that's right for you. You can track your progress and see how much you've mastered with our site dashboard. Seeing your progress really helps you power up your language skills. It's really motivating to know that you're actually speaking and understanding a language that you couldn't before. Next, use the lesson notes. You don't get just the lessons. You also get detailed notes with each and every lesson meaning you get the complete lesson in writing and can easily follow along while you study. Plus, we've just recently upgraded them. The notes are brand new, easier to read, and work on any device, browser, or reader. 
Last, we have our premium study tools. As a premium member, you have unlimited website access, which means you also unlock our premium study tools. You'll get access to our 2,000 word core vocabulary list. These words are the most commonly used in everyday conversation, and they're essential to your conversational fluency. And you'll master them fast with our smart flashcard system and the word bank. You can perfect your pronunciation by reading from line-by-line -line transcripts. This means you'll have access to all the must-know words and you'll be able to practice them with the correct pronunciation. Don't let your language learning slow down. If you're running low on motivation, power up your language learning with Premium. Get all of our Premium tools for studying. Just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to make consistent language breakthroughs? Here's how you do it with our advanced language learning system. In this video, you'll learn about four simple steps to make breakthroughs with our lessons. First, by breakthrough, we mean finally understanding and speaking language that you simply couldn't before. You finally break through. So if you're stuck at a beginner level or just aren't making much progress, this is for you. Here are four simple steps, but the first one is the most important one. Step one, accept that you need new lessons, new real life conversations, new words, and new phrases. So you're hearing something new and improving your language skills. Repeating phrases you already know won't help you move forward. That's a mistake most learners make. They stick to what they already know. But if you could start understanding more language in minutes and start making consistent breakthroughs, would you? Well, here's how you break through with our learning system. Remember, you need to have a source of new lessons and new conversations to expose yourself to language you don't yet know. So if you're listening to our new lessons, which we publish weekly on top of our existing lesson library, you're good to go. If not, start right now. These lessons get you speaking and understanding language in minutes. Here's how. Visit the site, choose a new series or learning level that you haven't done already, and start with the first lesson. Step two, listen to a new lesson and expose yourself to real life conversations. Now, you might not understand it at first, but in time you will. All the real life conversations you hear in lessons are broken down, explained, and translated right after by our instructors. Plus, you can also read along with lesson notes so you never miss a word. So now you can actually understand the entire conversation. As a listener, you'll get exposed to brand new conversations and start understanding real life conversations. So what's the next step? Step three, you'll need to start speaking and repeating what you hear. That's the best way to start speaking any language. Do it from day one. With our voice recorder available inside the lessons, you can listen to each line of the conversation and then repeat and record yourself to see how close you are to a native speaker. Finally, step four. In case you missed anything, you can review with vocab lists, quizzes, and the line by line feature. The line by line breaks down the conversation so you can hear and read each line again and again. So even if you can't catch something the first time, you can review what you heard and be able to hear it on the next listen. But remember, the most important step is the first one. You must jump into new lessons and new conversations in order to make a language breakthrough. To make your language breakthrough, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, Hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Going to the Movies Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn to say phrases like, does this have subtitles? When does the movie start? And much more. Second, the How to Talk About Your Feelings PDF eBook. You'll learn over 90 words and phrases for feelings with this bonus PDF picture eBook. Download and review it on any device. Third, 30 must know opposite adjectives. Learn how to say young and old hot and cold, and much more. 
you'll pick up over 30 words with this vocab bonus. Fourth, can you talk about people's appearances? With this quick one minute lesson, you'll learn to describe others with words like tall, short, muscular, and much more. Fifth, want the language learning app that actually gets you speaking? Download Innovative Language 101 for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. You'll unlock hundreds of bite-sized audio and video lessons made by real teachers and start speaking in minutes. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get up to 45% off our six month challenge sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hi everyone, I'm Kaijin Kim. In this lesson, you learn how to give your phone number in Korean. This is Mark Morris, and he's at City Hall registering his address. He bumps into an acquaintance who, after exchanging greetings, asks, What's your phone number? 전화번호가 뭐예요? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Ready? 전화번호가 뭐예요? 제 전화번호는 010-0123-4567이에요. Once more with the English translation. 전화번호가 뭐예요? What's your phone number? 제 전화번호는 010 0123-4567이에요. My phone number is 010-0123-4567. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Mingyu says, What's your phone number? First is 전화번호, meaning phone number. 전화번호. This starts with 전화, phone. 전화, 전화. Next is 번호, number. 번호. 번호. Together, it's 전화번호. Phone number. 전화번호. Remember this because you'll see it again in Mark's response. Next is 가. The subject marking particle. 가. 가. In this sentence, 가. Marks. 전화번호 Telephone number as the subject of the sentence. Think of it as marking telephone number as the thing being talked about. Last is 뭐예요? A polite informal phrase meaning what is it? 뭐예요? First is 뭐 What? 뭐뭐 뭐. Next is 예요. Here, it's like the is in is it. 예요. 예요. Here, the word it is understood from context. 예요. Is from the verb 이다. Meaning to be. 이다. Note 예요. Follows words that end in vowels like 뭐 Together 뭐예요? What is it? 뭐예요? Here, the question is formed by the rising intonation. Listen again. 뭐예요? Altogether, it's 
전화 번호가 뭐예요? This literally means phone number what is, but translates as what's your phone number? 전화 번호가 뭐예요? Note, the your in your phone number is understood from the context of the two-person conversation. Omitting understood information is common in Korean. Remember this request. You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember Mark's response? My phone number is 010 0123 4567. First is 제 my 제 제. This is the shortened form 저 the humble word for I and 의 meaning of. Together it's 저희 my 저희 This is shortened to 제 Next, do you remember the word for phone number? 전화번호 Phone number 전화번호 Together 제 전화번호 My phone number 제 전화번호 Next is 는 The topic marking particle 는 는. It marks my phone number as the topic of the sentence. Think of it like as for in the expression as for my phone number. Next is Mark's phone number. 010-0123-4567 Notice how Mark says his phone number. First, he says each number independently. Second, in Korean, hyphens are either omitted or read. For this lesson, we'll omit hyphens and indicate spaces after a group of numbers with a pause mid-speech. 010-0123-4567 Last is 예요 In this case, it's like the is in my phone number is. 예요 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 is a form of the verb 이다 to be. Note. 예요. Follows words that end in consonants like 칠. Altogether, it's 제 전화번호는 010-0123-4567-예요. This literally means, as for my phone number, 010 0123-4567 is. But it translates as, my phone number is 010-0123-4567. 제 전화번호는 010-0123-4567이에요. The pattern is 제 전화번호는 phone number 이에요. My phone number is phone number. 제 전화번호는 phone number 이에요. To use this pattern, simply replace phone number with your phone number. Imagine your phone number is 02 0123 
0276-0176-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0876-0
제 전화번호는 제 전화번호는 Now, do you remember how Mark says my phone number is 010-0123-4567? 제 전화번호는 010-0123-4567이에요. 제 전화번호는 010-0123-4567이에요. Do you remember the polite informal phrase meaning what is it? 뭐예요? 뭐예요? Do you remember Mingyu's request? What's your phone number? 전화번호가 뭐예요? 전화번호가 뭐예요? 전화번호가 뭐예요? 제 전화번호는 010-0877-0844예요. Listen again and repeat. 제 전화번호는 010 0844예요. 제 전화번호는 010-0877-0844예요. Let's try another. Imagine you're Ben Morris, and your phone number is 010-0897-0844. Ready? 전화번호가 뭐예요? 제 전화번호는 010-0891-2345예요. Listen again and repeat. 제 전화번호는 010-0891-2345예요. 제 전화번호는 010-0891-2345 에요. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Kaun Kim, and your phone number is 010-0703-9004. Ready? 전화번호가 뭐예요? 
제 전화번호는 010-0703-9004예요. Listen again and repeat. 제 전화번호는 010-0703-9004예요. Hi everyone, I'm Kajin Kim. In this lesson, you learn how to talk about your family. This is Ben Morris, and he's at a coffee shop with his classmate, Kaun Kim. Ben is showing her some pictures. She points to one of them and asks, Is this your family, Ben? Ben is a family. Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Ready? Ben is a family. Yes, my father, my mother, my sister, I'm here. Once more with the English translation. 벤 씨의 가족이에요? Is this your family, Ben? 네, 아버지, 어머니, 여동생, 저예요. Yes, this is my father, mother, younger sister, and me. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Kaun asks, is this your family, Ben? Ben is a family. First is Ben. Meaning Ben. Ben. This starts with Ben's name in Korean. Ben. Ben. Pen. After this is si. a polite suffix attached to a person's name. Si. 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 is commonly used among people of equal social status, age, or position. This suffix can be used with any gender and can be attached to a person's given name or their full name, but not the last name alone. Together, Ben. 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 Next is, Ui. The possessive marking particle. Ui. Ui. Think of, Ui. As a way to indicate possession, like the apostrophe S in Ben's family. The word it follows possesses the thing that comes after it. In this sentence, it marks, Ben, ben as the possessor. Together, Ben translates as Ben's. Ben After this is Kajo. Family. Kajo. Kajo. Together, Ben Kajo. Literally means Ben's family. Ben But it translates as your family. In Korean, it's more common and polite to address a person by their name and polite suffix rather than directly with words like your or you. After this is Yeo. In this case, it's like the is in Is this your family? Yeo. Yeo. Yeo is the polite spoken form of the verb Ida meaning to be Ida Note there are two forms of the polite spoken form of the verb to be Yeo follows words that end in a consonant like Kajo Altogether This literally means Ben's family this is, but it translates as, 
Is this your family, Ben? Ben is a family. Remember this question. You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Ben says, Yes, this is my father, mother, younger sister, and me? Ne, Aboji, Omoni, Yodong Seng, Choeo. There are two parts to the response. Ne, Aboji, Omoni, Yodong Seng, Choeo. The first part is Ne. Yes. Ne. Ne. It answers Kaun's yes no question. Is this your family, Ben? Ben 씨의 가족이에요? In the second part, Ben lists the different members of his family while pointing to each family member. 네, 아버지, 어머니, 여동생, 저예요. Yes, this is my father, mother, younger sister, and me. 네, 아버지, 어머니, 여동생, 저예요. First is 아버지. Literally, father, but it translates as my father in this context. 아버지. 아버지. Next is 어머니. Mother. 어머니. 어머니. After this is 여동생. Younger sister. 여동생. 여동생. Note. 여 means female. And 동생 means younger sibling. Combined. 여동생. Younger sister. Next is 저. Translating as me in this case. 저. Finally, yeyo. In this case, it's like the is in this is. Yeyo. 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 Is from the verb ida, meaning to be. Ida. Note, there are two forms of the polite spoken form of the verb to be. Yeyo. Follows words that end in a vowel, like 저. Altogether, 아버지, 어머니, 여동생, 저예요. This literally means father, mother, younger sister, me, this is. But it translates as this is my father, mother, younger sister, and me. 아버지, 어머니. 여동생, 저예요. Note, this is understood from context, as the speaker is answering a question about the group of people in the picture. In addition, this Korean sentence doesn't include a specific word meaning my, as here it's understood from context as the speaker is answering a question. The pattern is Family member, family member, family member, 저예요. This is my family member, family member, family member, and me. To use this pattern, simply replace family member with each of your family members. Imagine you are Sasha Morris, and your family members are your mother, your father, your older brother, and you. 오빠 Older brother 오빠, 오빠. Say, this is my mother, father, older brother, and me. Ready? <laughs> 어머니, 아버지, 오빠, 저예요. This is my mother, 
father, older brother, and me. 어머니, 아버지, 오빠, 저예요. Did you notice how Sasha calls her older brother, 오빠? In Korean, there are two words for older sister and two words for older brother. The word used depends on the gender of the younger sibling. For younger sisters, older brother is 오빠 and older sister is 언니. 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 For younger brothers, older brother is 형. 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 And older sister is 누나. 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 For elder siblings, younger sibling is 동생. Younger sister is 여동생. And younger brother is 남동생. 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 In the conversation, Ben says 여동생, younger sister. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 아버지, 어머니, 여동생, 저예요. 아버지, 어머니, 여동생, 저예요. 어머니, 아버지, 오빠, 저예요. 어머니, 아버지, 오빠, 저예요. 아버지, 어머니, 누나, 저예요. 아버지, 어머니, 누나, 저예요. 아버지, 어머니, 언니, 남동생, 저예요. 아버지, 어머니, 언니, 남동생, 저예요. 부모님, 오빠, 저예요. 부모님, 오빠, 저예요. Did you notice how I replaced 어머니, 아버지 with 부모님, parents? These are my parents, older brother, and me. First is 부모님. Parents. 부모님. 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 Means parents, but it translates as my parents in the context of answering the question. You should be aware of this word, but you won't need it for this lesson. Let's review the key vocabulary. 오빠 Older brother, as said by younger sisters. 오빠 오빠 언니 Older sister as used by younger sisters. 언니, 언니. 형. Older brother, as used by younger brothers. 형, 형. 누나. Older sister, as used by younger brothers. 누나, 누나. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say yes? 네. 네. And how to say me? 
talk. Do you remember how Ben says younger sister? 여동생 여동생 And how to say mother? 어머니 어머니 Do you remember how to say father? 아버지 아버지 Do you remember how Ben says, Yes, this is my father, mother, younger sister, and me? 네, 아버지, 어머니, 여동생, 저예요. 네, 아버지, 어머니, 여동생, 저예요. Do you remember how to say family? 가족 가족 And how Kaun addresses Ben? 벤 씨, 벤 씨. Do you remember how to say Ben's family? Ben 씨의 가족, Ben 씨의 가족. And do you remember how Colin asks, "Is this your family, Ben?" 벤 씨의 가족이에요? 벤 씨의 가족이에요? Do you remember how a younger sister says older brother? 오빠 오빠 And how a younger sister says older sister? 언니 언니 Do you remember how a younger brother says older sister? 누나 누나 Let's practice. Imagine you're Sasha, Ben's younger sister. Respond to your friend's question referring to the photo. Don't forget to include the word for yes at the beginning of your response. Ready? Sasha 씨의 가족이에요? 네, 아버지, 어머니, 오빠, 저예요. Listen again and repeat. 네, 아버지, 어머니, 오빠, 저예요. 네, 아버지, 어머니, 오빠, 저예요. Let's try another. Imagine you're Jihoon Jong, Ben's classmate. You have a father, mother, and an older sister. Ready? 지훈 씨의 가족이에요? 네, 아버지, 어머니, 누나, 저예요. Listen again and repeat. 네, 아버지, 어머니, 누나, 저예요. 네, 아버지, 어머니, 누나, 저예요. 
Let's try one more. Imagine you're Kaun Kim, Ben's classmate. You have a father, mother, older sister, and a younger brother. Ready? Kaun Shie Kajogieyo. Ne. Aboji, Omoni, Onni, Namdung Seng, Toyo. Listen again and repeat. Ne. Aboji, Omoni, Onni, Namdung Seng, Toyo. Ne. 아버지, 어머니, 언니, 남동생, 저예요. 안녕하세요, 여러분. 김계진입니다. Hi, everyone. I'm Kaysin Kim. In this lesson, you learn how to talk about your family from a parent's perspective. This is Karen Morris, and she's studying with her Korean teacher, Son Hyung Shim. The teacher notices a picture on Karen's computer and asks, Is this your family, Karen? Karen 씨 가족이에요? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Ready? Karen 씨 가족이에요? 네, 남편, 아들, 딸, 저예요. Once more with the English translation. 카렌 씨 가족이에요? Is this your family, Karen? 네, 남편, 아들, 딸, 저예요. Yes, this is my husband, son, daughter, and me. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how the teacher asks, Is this your family, Karen? Karen 씨 가족이에요? First is, Karen 씨, meaning Karen. Karen 씨. This starts with Karen's name in Korean. Karen. Ka. Ren. Karen. After this is. Si. A polite suffix attached to a person's name. Si. 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 Is commonly used among people of equal social status, age, or position. This suffix can be used with any gender and can be attached to a person's given name or their full name but not the last name alone. Together, Karen Shi Karen Karen Shi After this is Kajo Family Kajo Kajo Together, Karen Shi Kajo means Karen's family, but it translates as your family. Karen si kajo. In Korean, it's more common and polite to address a person by their name and polite suffix, rather than directly with words like your or you. After this is Yeo. In this case, it's like the is in Is this your family? Yeo. Yeo. Yeo is the polite spoken form of the verb ida meaning to be ida note there are two forms of the polite spoken form of the verb to be yeyo follows words that end in a consonant like kajo altogether it's karen si kajogieyo this literally means karen family this is but it translates as, Is this your family? Karen 씨 가족이에요? Remember this question. 
You'll hear it again later. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Karen says, Yes, this is my husband, son, daughter, and me. Ne, 네, 남편, 아들, 딸, 저예요. There are two parts to the response. The first part is, 네. Yes. 네. 네. It answers the teacher's yes-no question. Is this your family? In the second part, Karen lists the different members of her family while pointing to each family member. 남편, 아들, 딸, 저예요. This is my husband, son, daughter, and me. First is 남편 Husband But it translates as my husband in this context. 남편 남편 After this is 아들 Son 아들 아들 Next is 딸 Daughter 딸 딸. Next is 저 Translating as me in this case. 저 저. Finally 예요 In this case, it's like the is in this is. 예요 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 Is from the verb 이다 Meaning to be. 이다. Note there are two forms of the polite spoken form of the verb to be. 예요. Follows words that end in a vowel, like 저. Altogether, 남편, 아들, 딸, 저예요. Which literally means husband, son, daughter, me, this is. But it translates as, this is my husband, son, daughter, and me. 남편, 아들, 딸, 저예요. Note, this is understood from context, as the speaker is answering a question about the group of people in the picture. In addition, this Korean sentence doesn't include a specific word meaning my, as here, it's understood from context, as the speaker is answering a question. Again, 남편, 아들, 딸, 저예요. The pattern is Family member, family member, family member, 저예요. This is my family member, family member, family member, and me. To use this pattern, simply replace family member with each of your family members. Imagine your family members are your wife, your son, your daughter, and you. 아내 Wife 아내 아내 Say, this is my wife, son, daughter, and me. Ready? 아내, 아들, 딸, 저예요. This is my wife, son, daughter, and me. 아내, 아들, 딸, 저예요. In the conversation, the teacher says, 카렌 씨 가족, which translates as Karen's family, but literally means Karen family. The possessive marking particle, 의, which will follow 카렌 씨, Karen, is omitted as is understood from context. Think of 의 as a way to indicate possession, like the apostrophe S in Karen's family. 
the word it follows possesses the thing that comes after it. The phrase including 의 is as follows. 카렌 씨의 가족 의 marks 카렌 씨, Karen, as the possessor. However, in spoken Korean, the possessive marking particle 의 is often omitted. 카렌 씨의 가족 becomes 카렌 씨 가족 as seen in the dialogue. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 남편, 아들, 딸, 저예요. 남편, 아들, 딸, 저예요. 아내, 아들, 딸, 저예요. 아내, 아들, 딸, 저예요. 아내, 딸, 저예요. 아내, 딸, 저예요. 남편, 아들, 저예요. 남편, 아들, 저예요. 남편, 아들 둘, 저예요. 남편, 아들 둘, 저예요. Did you notice how the last speaker says the number of sons? This is my husband, two sons, and me. 아들 둘. Two sons. 아들 둘. First is. 아들. Son. 아들. Next is the native Korean number. 둘. Two. 둘. 둘. It follows. 아들. Son and is used to indicate the number of sons. To say two daughters, 딸 둘. Two daughters. 딸 둘. You should be aware of this pattern, but you won't need it for this lesson. 2. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me. Focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say yes? De. De. And how to say me? To. To. Do you remember how to say daughter? Dal. Dal. And how to say son? Adul. Adul. Do you remember how to say husband? 남편, 남편. Do you remember how Karen says, Yes, this is my husband, son, daughter, and me? 네, 남편, 아들, 딸. 저예요. 네, 남편, 아들, 딸, 저예요. Do you remember how to say family? 가족, 
가족. And how to say Karen's name in Korean? Karen. Karen. Do you remember how the teacher addresses Karen? Karen Shi. Karen Shi. Do you remember how Son Young asks, Is this your family, Karen? Karen Shi Kajogieo? Karen Shi Kajogieo? Do you remember the word for wife? 아내, 아내. Let's practice. Imagine your Mark's colleague, Sang Hung. You have a wife and a daughter. Respond to Mark's question referring to the photo. Don't forget to include the word yes at the beginning of the response. Ready? 상훈 씨 가족이에요. 네, 아내, 딸, 저예요. Listen again and repeat. 네, 아내, 딸, 저예요. 네, 아내, 딸, 저예요. Let's try another. Imagine you're Mark Morris. You have a wife, a son, and a daughter. Ready? Mark 씨 가족이에요? 네. 아내, 아들, 딸. 저예요. Listen again and repeat. 네, 아내, 아들, 딸, 저예요. 네, 아내, 아들. 딸, 저예요. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark's friend, Hyung Suk Hwang. You have a husband and son. Ready? Hyun Suk 씨 가족이에요. 네. 남편, 아들, 저예요. Listen again and repeat. 네, 남편, 아들, 저예요. 네, 남편, 아들, 저예요. 안녕하세요, 여러분. 김계진입니다. Hi everyone, I'm Kajin Kim. In this lesson, you learn how to greet someone at different times of the day. This is Seon Yong Sim, the Morris family's Korean teacher. Her schedule for the day is Mark Morris at 9 a.m., Karen Morris at 12 p.m., Ben Morris at 6 p.m. Listen to the greeting exchange between the three pairs. Pay attention to the time of day. 선생님, 안녕하세요. 마크 씨, 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 
안녕하세요. 선생님, 안녕하세요. 벤, 안녕. Once more with the English translation. Hello, teacher. Hello, Mark. Hello. Hello. 선생님, 안녕하세요. Hello, teacher. Ben, 안녕. Hi, Ben. Let's take a closer look at each of these expressions. In the first conversation, do you remember how Mark says, Hello, teacher? First is 선생 Teacher 선생 선생 After this is the honorific suffix 님 It is used to address people of higher social status. It can be attached to the name or occupation of the person. 님 님. Together, 선생님 is a common and polite way to address teacher, but in more natural English, Miss Sim, the teacher's last name, 선생님 Note, in Korean, it is common to address people by title plus honorific suffix rather than their name, such as 선생님 Teacher, like in the dialogue, and 사장님 Boss, President. Next is 안녕하세요 Hello 안녕하세요 안녕하세요 Note 안녕하세요 is from the verb 안녕하다 meaning to be peaceful. Well, 안녕하다. Literally, 안녕하세요. Means something like be well or please be well. Note, 안녕하세요. Is the most common greeting in Korean and can be used at all times of the day. It can translate as hello, good morning, good afternoon, etc depending on the context. You can use this phrase with someone who you are familiar with or unfamiliar with and at all speech levels. Altogether, 선생님, 안녕하세요. Literally, teacher, hello. And in more natural English, hello, Miss Sim. 선생님, 안녕하세요. Do you remember the teacher's response? Hello, Mark. Mark 씨, 안녕하세요. There are two parts to this response. First is, Mark 씨, meaning Mark. Mark 씨. This starts with Mark's name in Korean. Mark. 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 After this is she. A polite suffix attached to a person's name. She. 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 Is commonly used among people of equal social status, age, or position. This suffix can be used with any gender and can be attached to a person's given name or their full name but not the last name alone. Together, 
마크시 Mark 마크시 Next is 안녕하세요 Hello 안녕하세요 안녕하세요 All together it's 마크씨 안녕하세요 Literally Mark hello but in more natural English hello Mark 마크씨 안녕하세요 In the second conversation which takes place at noon do you remember how Karen says hello Hint it's the same greeting as the one used in the morning 안녕하세요. Note that Karen only uses the greeting without the teacher title. It's perfectly acceptable to greet a teacher in this way. 안녕하세요. Hello. 안녕하세요. Sun Young's response is the same. Hello. 안녕하세요. In the third conversation, which takes place in the evening at 6 p.m., do you remember how Ben says, Hello, teacher? Hint, you've heard it before. 선생님, 안녕하세요. Do you remember how the teacher says, Hi, Ben? 벤, 안녕? There are two parts to this response. First is Ben's name in Korean. Ben. 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 Note there is no honorific suffix for Ben's name. Here, Ben is still a student, and this is a private lesson. So the teacher chooses to address Ben casually by omitting the honorific suffix and simply saying Ben's name. Next is. 안녕. Hi. 안녕. 안녕. Note. 안녕. Is an informal way to say hello, and it's used in informal situations and can be used by people of relative higher social status towards people of lower social status. However, it should not be used the other way around. 안녕. Which literally means being well is used to mean hi or hello. It's a versatile phrase that can be used when greeting people in the morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Altogether, it's Ben, 안녕? Ben, hi. But in more natural English, Hi, Ben. Ben, 안녕? Unlike other languages such as English or Japanese, where there are specific phrases used during different times of the day, Korean uses the same phrase at various times of the day. The phrase you use will depend on the speaker's relationship with the listener. The most common greeting, which can be used in formal and informal situations, is 안녕하세요. This is appropriate for almost all situations and should be your default greeting as a new learner. You can use it when speaking with people older than you, co-workers, and so on. In informal situations or when speaking to someone who is in a less senior social position than yourself, you can also use 안녕. Just remember that if you want to play it safe, 안녕하세요. Is the best option, as it's polite enough to address people of higher social status as well as people who are of lower social status. 안녕. Let's look at the greetings once more. Listen and repeat or speak along with me. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 안녕. 안녕. 선생님, 안녕하세요. 선생님, 안녕하세요. 안녕하십니까? 안녕하십니까?
Did you notice how I use a different phrase to say hello? <목소리> 안녕하십니까? 안녕하십니까? Is a formal way of saying hello. 안녕하십니까? 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 is used in formal situations such as business meetings, speeches, and so forth, and can be heard in announcements and on the news. You should be aware of 안녕하십니까? as you'll hear this phrase during your Korean learning journey. However, you won't need it for this lesson. 렛츠 리뷰 Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember the anorphic suffix used to address someone of higher social status? Nim. Nim. And how to address a teacher? Sonsengnim. Sonsengnim. Do you remember the polite and most common way to say hello? 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Do you remember how Mark says hello teacher? 선생님, 안녕하세요. 선생님, 안녕하세요. Do you remember how to say Mark in Korean? 마크 마크 And how the teacher addresses Mark? 마크 씨 마크 씨 Do you remember how the teacher says, Hello, Mark? 마크 씨, 안녕하세요. 마크 씨, 안녕하세요. Do you remember the informal way to say hi? 안녕 안녕 And how the teacher says, Hi, Ben. 벤, 안녕? 벤, 안녕? Let's practice. Imagine you're Ben, and you're attending your morning class. Respond by saying, Hello, teacher. Ready? 벤, 안녕? 선생님, 안녕하세요. Listen again and repeat. 선생님, 안녕하세요. 선생님, 안녕하세요. Let's try another. Imagine you're Mark Morris and you're attending your afternoon class. Respond by saying, Hello. Ready? 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Listen again and repeat. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Let's try one more. Now imagine you're Sasha Morris and you meet your classmate. Respond by saying, hi, using informal Korean. 
Ready? 안녕. 안녕. Listen again and repeat. 안녕. 안녕. 헬리콥터. Helicopter. 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 소리 때문에 아무것도 안 들려요. I cannot hear anything because of the sound of the helicopter. Helicopter. 소리 때문에 아무것도 안 들려요. Common, black, common, common, black. 검은색 티셔츠 입어도 돼요? Can I wear a black T-shirt? 검은색 티셔츠 입어도 돼요? 갈색, brown. 갈색, 갈색, brown. 제 눈은 갈색이에요. My eyes are brown. 제 눈은 갈색이에요. 회색, gray. 회색. 회색, gray. 회색으로 주세요. Give me the gray one. 회색으로 주세요. 쉬다, rest. 쉬다, 쉬다. Rest. 늦어서 쉬려고요. It's late, so I'm going to rest. 늦어서 쉬려고요. 듣다. Hear. 듣다. 듣다. Hear. 잘안 들려요. I cannot hear you clearly. 잘안 들려요. 바라다. Want. 바라다. 바라다. Want. 오늘 다른 것을 해보기를 바라고 있어요. I want to try something different today. 오늘 다른 것을 해보기를 바라고 있어요. 역겨운 Disgusting 역겨운 역겨운 Disgusting 내 친구는 역겨운 음식을 좋아한다. My friend likes disgusting food. 내 친구는 역겨운 음식을 좋아한다. 11 11 11 11 11이 백화점은 11층까지 있어요. This department store has 11 floors. 이 백화점은 11층까지 있어요. 12 12 12 12 12 
12 나누기 2는 6이다. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 12 나누기 2는 6이다. 13 13 13 13 13 그는 13년 동안 가진 고생을 배견했다. He put up with all sorts of hardship for 13 years. 그는 13년 동안 가진 고생을 배견했다. 매일 email 매일 매일 email 너 이메일 주소 알려 줄래? Can you tell me your email address? 너 이메일 주소 알려 줄래? 휴대폰 cellular phone 휴대폰 휴대폰 cellular phone 거의 모든 지역에서 휴대폰으로 전화를 걸수 있습니다. With a cellular phone, you can make calls from almost anywhere. 거의 모든 지역에서 휴대폰으로 전화를 걸수 있습니다. 문자 text message 문자 문자 text message 전화 통화 못 하니까 문자로 이야기해요. I cannot talk on the phone, so let's talk through text messages. 전화 통화 못 하니까 문자로 이야기해요. 입 mouth 입입 입. mouth 입을 크게 벌려 봐. Open your mouth wide. 입을 크게 벌려 봐. Ball, chick. Ball, ball, chick. 볼을 깨물어서 염증이 생겼습니다. I bit my chick, so I got an infection. 볼을 깨물어서 염증이 생겼습니다. 코 nose 코코 코. nose 코가 간지러워요. My nose is itchy. 코가 간지러워요. 공책 Notebook 공책 공책 Notebook 공책 좀 빌려줘 Please lend me your notebook 공책 좀 빌려줘 연필 Pencil 연필 연필 pencil 연필은 상 뒤에 있어요. The pencil is behind the table. 연필은 상 뒤에 있어요. 지우개 eraser 지우개 지우개 Eraser 학생이었을 때 친구들과 지우개 게임을 자주 했습니다. When I was a student, I often played eraser games with my friends. 학생이었을 때 친구들과 지우개 게임을 자주 했습니다. 하얀 White 하얀 
하얀 white 새하얀 운동화를 샀어요. I've bought a white pair of tennis shoes. 새하얀 운동화를 샀어요. 빨간 red 빨간 빨간 red 저기 빨간 벽돌집 보여요? Do you see that red brick house over there? 저기 빨간 벽돌집 보여요? 녹색 green 녹색 녹색 green 맞아요. 이 셔츠는 세 가지 다른 톤의 녹색이 있어요. That's right. We have these shirts in three different tones of green. 맞아요. 이 셔츠는 세 가지 다른 톤의 녹색이 있어요. 끝나다. Finish. 끝나다. 끝나다. Finish. 수업은 몇 시에 끝나? When will your class finish? 수업은 몇 시에 끝나? 시작하다 Start 시작하다 시작하다 Start 사업을 새로 시작했어요. I started a new business. 사업을 새로 시작했어요. 이 되다 become 이 되다 이 되다 become 어떤 사람이 되고 싶어요? Who do you want to become? 어떤 사람이 되고 싶어요? 14 14 14 14 14 그는 우리 집에서 약 14마일 거리에 살아. He lives about 14 miles away from my house. 그는 우리 집에서 약 14마일 거리에 살아. 15 15 15 15 15 약 15분이 지나서야 친구는 나타났다. About 15 minutes later, my friend showed up. 약 15분이 지나서야 친구는 나타났다. 16 16 16 16 16 우리 이제 16분 남았어. We have 16 minutes left. 우리 이제 16 분 남았어. 전화 telephone 전화 전화 telephone 전화 쓸수 있어요? Can I use the telephone? 전화 쓸수 있어요? 눈 I 눈, 눈, I. 그 여자는 눈이 참 예뻐. She has really beautiful eyes. 그 여자는 눈이 참 예뻐. E, teeth, E, 
e teeth 이가 너무 아파요 my teeth hurt so much 이가 너무 아파요 입술 lip 입술 입술 lip 그녀는 도톰한 입술로 유명합니다. She is very famous for having thick lips. 그녀는 도톰한 입술로 유명합니다. 복사기 copy machine 복사기 복사기 copy machine 복사기가 고장 났어요. The copy machine is broke. 복사기가 고장 났어요. 책상 desk 책상 책상 desk 그 사람은 갑자기 책상을 내리쳤어요. He suddenly hit the surface of the desk. 그 사람은 갑자기 책상을 내리쳤어요. 책 book 책책 책. book 가방에 책을 넣었어요. I put my books in my bag. 가방에 책을 넣었어요. pen 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 옷에 볼펜이 묻었어요. I got a pen stain on my clothes. 옷에 볼펜이 묻었어요. 우체국 post office 우체국 우체국 post office 이 거리에는 우체국이 있습니다. There is a post office in this street. 이 거리에는 우체국이 있습니다. 도서관 library 도서관 도서관 library 공공 도서관에 갔어요. I went to the public library. 공공 도서관에 갔어요. super supermarket super Super. Supermarket. Super에 사람이 너무 많아요. There are too many people at the supermarket. Super에 사람이 너무 많아요. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. If you have trouble sticking with your language learning goals, it's probably because you're skipping one specific step. It's the step you need to take before you even start any learning. And doing it will help you stick with the language, not get overwhelmed, and reach your language goals. So, today you'll learn 1. What solo language learners need to succeed and 2. How to do self-assessment and set yourself up for success. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Giving Directions Conversation Cheat Sheet. 
Do you know how to tell a taxi driver where to go in your target language? You'll be able to. With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll learn must-know words and phrases for giving directions. Second, the Most Common Verbs PDF eBook. You'll learn over 90 common verbs with this bonus PDF picture eBook. Download and review on any device. Third, how to talk about what you do in your free time. Learn how to say video games, fishing, and much more. You'll pick up over 25 words for leisure activities with this vocab bonus. Fourth, how to learn from home, learning strategies. Want to learn the language from the comfort of your home? This one minute lesson will give you all the best tactics for learning languages. Fifth, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you the 35 must know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. Here's a question for you. When you want to learn a language, how do you usually get started with that goal? You might say the inspiration comes first and that motivates you to start. Then you get a textbook or an app and go from there, right? That's a pretty standard answer, but how does that tend to work out? Most people end up falling off a week or a month later. Why do you think that happens? Leave a comment with why you think people tend to lose inspiration quickly. More often than not, it happens because you pick a goal, a learning routine, or a resource that overwhelms you and just isn't right for you. Here's a typical example. Let's say you work an eight hour day and you wanna to try to start learning. Most people would try to squeeze in learning for one or two hours at night, or you could try and wake up an hour early. And usually that doesn't work out because you're trying to do things that you're not used to. Wake up earlier and study earlier. It doesn't fit your current lifestyle. So what should you do differently? Well, let's take an example from language schools. Before you start learning, language schools force you to take an assessment test on the first day. Why? so that they make sure the language lessons fit your level and put you in the proper class. The goal of an assessment test is to find out where you are and meet you there. That's something most solo learners don't do. And the problem is if you're a solo learner, no one assesses you and you yourself don't know what routine works best for you, how much time you can set aside and how much studying you can comfortably do. We all imagine we can do an hour a day, but realistically speaking, it'll be a lot less than that. So, that's where self-assessment comes in. Before you start learning a language, or do any goal for that matter, it's important to know where you are in life, what your daily schedule is like, when you're busy and when you're free. So you can set your expectations, know how much time you can put in, and so you can start learning at a pace that works for you. Now, how do you actually assess yourself? There are three assessments you can do. One, a life assessment. Two, a routine assessment and three, language assessment. Language assessment will only be helpful if you already have some experience. If you're brand new, you won't need this. First, life assessment. Here, the goal is to see how the language will fit into your life and how you generally deal with goals. As in, if you succeeded with a goal before, what helped you succeed? You could take that and apply it here. If you failed before, find out why so you can avoid it this time. So you'll need to answer the following questions. Why are you learning this language? How will it help your life? What current connections do you have to this language? For example, listening to music, watching TV, you have a relative, you have neighbors or friends that speak it. What have you been doing so far to learn? Have you learned languages before? Have you failed any goals before? How or why? Have you succeeded with any goals before? How or why? Write these questions out and answer them. Next, the routine assessment. Write out your daily routine for a whole week. For example, wake up at 7 a.m., breakfast at 8 a.m., commute to work at 8.30 a.m., arrive at work at 9.30 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and so on. Do this for every day of the week. The goal here is to see what your daily routine is like so you know when you're free, when you're busy, and where you can fit in language learning. That way, if you're super busy on Mondays and five minutes is all you can do, then that's good enough. You won't feel bad about doing only five minutes. If you see that you spend 30 minutes on commuting, add language learning on top of that existing routine. If you take walks or go for a jog, play an audio lesson there. Or even if you're cooking at a certain time, play an audio lesson in the background. 
Remember, look for an existing routine that you already stick with, like commuting, and where you can multitask. Don't try to create new routines. For example, waking up at 7 a.m. to learn will set you up for failure. If you usually wake up at 8 a.m., waking up at 7 a.m. will be even harder. And then, actually trying to learn a language at 7 a.m. makes it even harder. This is where new learners start having trouble. You're trying to do two things at once, trying to learn the language and trying to stick to a new routine. One is hard enough. Trying to do two can overwhelm you. So piggyback off of your existing routines first so you can build momentum. And finally, there's language assessment. If you're an absolute beginner, you won't need much of an assessment. Just start with our absolute beginner recommended learning pathway. But if you have experience and want to assess yourself, there are two things you can do. First, if you're a Premium Plus user, then you're asked to do an assessment test when you join, but you can always request it again from your teacher. And second, if you're a Premium user, check our recommended pathways. We assign these pathways, level one to level five, based on your learning level, from absolute beginner to advanced. At the start of each pathway, there's a diagnostic test. You can take that to assess yourself. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about when routines grow stale, how to learn more language with a new routine. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time, bye. What are some surefire ways to stay motivated when you're learning a language? In this video, we're going to talk about 10 surefire ways to stay motivated and stay on track. All right, we asked our Premium and Premium Plus members for their tested techniques. You'll find out what worked for them. Number one, you must see your progress. In other words, you have to see it to believe it. There's nothing better than seeing your results firsthand. It's like seeing muscles in the mirror after working out. How do you do this with language? In order to see it, you have to start measuring it first. And you can do that with the dashboard on our website. With the dashboard, you can see how many lessons and how much of the language you've mastered so far. So review the progress you've made with the dashboard on the site. Number two, use the Daily Dose of Language app. With this, you get free daily mini lessons, but that's not all. This app keeps you on track because it actually sends you daily reminders. If you need that extra push or reminder, this app does it for you. And the Daily Dose lessons are quick and easy. They take just one minute of your time. Number three, learn with somebody better than you. A tutor, a friend, and you can even learn with your own teacher with a Premium Plus subscription. Simply having someone better than you by your side is enough to help you improve and motivate you. It's like having a coach. Number four, set a small, measurable goal. For example, finish 10 lessons in one week or learn 20 words in a week. Most people give up because they have a vague goal, like I wanna be fluent, that they don't know how to reach. But if you aim small and make it measurable, you'll have a much better chance of reaching it. Your goal is to learn 20 words and you know 17 already. Because you know how close you are, you're more motivated to close the gap and reach your goal. Number five, watch movies and shows in your target language. First of all, we recommend this because it's fun. But more importantly, when you understand what you hear, it's a clear sign of progress and you'll feel good about it. Number six, listen to music in your target language. Music is enjoyable, and if you make it part of your routine, you're giving yourself a nice break in between lessons. But you're still immersing yourself in the language. So if you enjoy this routine, you're more likely to stay motivated. Number seven, do the lessons that you enjoy. Just like with music, if you enjoy our audio and video lessons, then stick with them. If you have any favorite lessons, remember you can always download them to your device and review them as much as you want. They're yours to keep. Number eight, understand that language learning is a marathon. Learning a new language is not a sprint. Most people think they can study for hours and suddenly get better. But when they realize that it takes time, this can hurt their motivation. So understand that it's a marathon. Remember that it's better to study for a few minutes every day than pulling a five-hour cram session that will burn you out. 
Number nine, keep the big goal in mind. Imagine yourself being fluent. Small, measurable goals are definitely important, but when you just don't feel like learning, which is completely natural, by the way, remember the big goal. Having the big picture in mind will remind you of what's important and put you back on track. Number 10, invest in the language. Make a commitment. Whether you buy a book or a subscription, enroll in a class, or join a study group, by investing and making a commitment, you're much more likely to go through with it. You've paid for it, so you value it more. You want to make sure you get your money's worth. Plus, other people expect you to show up. This can be extremely helpful when working towards your language goals. And that's it. There are so many ways to keep yourself motivated. Do you have a favorite way? Leave us a comment and let us know. So to make sure you stay motivated in your studies, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak and understand more of your target language? You'll need to know more words and phrases to really make new conversations and ultimately connections. In this video, you'll discover six ways to master new words and phrases fast. Number one, use our free vocabulary lists. Here's what makes this study tool so powerful. This is your free library of vocab and phrase lessons. You can learn words and phrases for current events like Halloween or New Year's. There are also many useful topics, like the top 10 ways to say hello, conversational phrases, and more. In other words, you learn phrases that you wouldn't normally find in textbooks. And if you want to learn extra fast, you can use the slideshow tool. Just tap on or click on View Slideshow, then sit back and review the words and phrases. Find the vocabulary lists in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. And yes, these vocab lists are free for all users. Number two take the audio and video lessons. One of the best ways to learn new words is through conversations. You get to hear how the words are used. So in every lesson dialogue, you'll come across some words you don't know. But don't worry, because our teachers translate everything. So when you hear the conversation again at the end of the lesson, you'll know them all. Number three, learn with our 2000 most common words list. Here's a question for you. How many words do you think you need for conversational fluency? 3,000? 5,000? Actually, language experts say you need only about 1,500 to reach conversational fluency. And with this study tool, the 2,000 most common words list, you get the words you need for conversational fluency right up front. That's what makes this study tool so powerful. It's all here for you. And they're broken down into simple categories, such as adjectives, nouns, verbs, food, drinks, numbers, and months. Now, 2,000 is quite a lot to learn. Do you have to learn it all? Well, you don't have to learn it all at once. You can go category by category. You can also start with the top 100 words, then move on to the top 200, 300, and so on until you get to 2,000. So if you're an absolute beginner, you can start with the top 100 words. Once you've mastered those, you can move on to the next category. You can also use other study tools to learn these words faster, right? Such as number four, study with spaced repetition flashcards. Now, we're not talking about paper flashcards. We're talking about the smart flashcards that you can find in our premium study tools. Picture this. Think of these as a teacher inside of your computer who quizzes you and sorts the words for you. So words that you struggle with, you'll be quizzed on more and more, and words that you know, you'll see less and less. So they display the words as needed, so you never forget them. In every session, they'll refresh your memory on the words you learned last time and introduce new ones. That's exactly how our smart flashcards work. And because you get drilled on the words you struggle with, you have no choice but to master them and improve. You have no choice but to succeed. You can also study the words from your lessons and vocab lists with the very same flashcard tool. Number five, create printable word lists with the word bank. The word bank is a study tool that lets you save words and phrases from lessons and vocab lists. Think of it as your extended brain. If you come across a new word that you want to review later, you can save it to the word bank. But the word bank also lets you print out your word lists. So click on the printer friendly option inside word bank and print out your collection of words. You can use that sheet for writing practice. Number six, use the words. 
After you learn a new word, using it right away is crucial to remembering it. So when you're done with a lesson or a vocab list, leave a comment. Make up a sample sentence and post it in the comment section. Write it down in a notebook or shadow it, meaning listen to the audio pronunciation and say it out loud. You should do this because it's the actual practice that gets you to remember it. So say it, write it, listen to it again. Doing this will help lock the words into your memory. So if you want to take advantage of any of these tools for yourself, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Are you studying a language but starting to lose motivation? In this video, we're going to talk about the halfway point and how to keep going with language learning. After six months to a year of studying a language, you might be feeling like you're losing a little bit of steam. Maybe you started out strong and now you're feeling a bit low. Maybe you aren't seeing the results you wanted, or you think your efforts aren't paying off. But the reason for that might not have anything to do with your studies. It might be more an issue about your reviewing and your goal setting. 1. Why you should review your past language goals When you set goals, do you ever go back to review your progress? It can be a reminder of how far you've come and help you keep your motivation up. Let's say you started learning a language and you've been at it for a few months. In month one, you're excited and motivated. In month two, you're still going at it, but maybe the motivation is not as strong and you want to make sure that you don't fall off, unfortunately, as most people do. So you work hard to keep at it. By month three, you're kind of on autopilot and learning with whatever has been working for you. That sounds like a good place to be, cruising on autopilot. Well, it may seem like a good place to be, but the problem is by month four, five, or six, if you've been coasting along for too long and haven't had any significant improvements, you may start wondering if you're actually learning or if you'll ever master the language. You might start losing motivation, and worse, you might even quit. If you're learning by yourself, it's hard, and if you're not tracking your progress, by month four or five, you might realize that the textbook you've been using isn't helping you increase your fluency. You might think you're going nowhere. So the reason to review is to check your progress. Maybe you can speak none of your target language in month one, but at the end of month three, you can speak three minutes. So that's some progress. And if you're at eight minutes now, for example, then you can definitely say that you've improved since the start. It's good for motivation, just knowing that you got a return on your time investment. So reviewing is good for progress and motivation. Also, it's natural to lose motivation with anything you're trying to learn or do. So it's something you need to keep up, something you need to keep in mind. What do you do when your motivation dips? You can stop, take some time to review and reflect. Is your motivation dipping? Are you studying less? Do you feel like you're not making progress? And if you say yes to these questions, then you can work on boosting your motivation to help you keep going. How do you boost your motivation? Well, do you remember anchor points? Anchor points are things that connect you or anchor you to your goal, such as a language class or a program. It could even be relatives or friends who speak the language, TV shows in that language you like, or an upcoming trip to the target country. All of these things, in one way or another, keep you anchored to your language learning goal. So if you're watching a TV show in your target language, then it's natural for you to want to understand it better, and your desire to learn goes up. If you're taking language classes where a teacher expects homework from you, that's another connection to the language. So you do the homework, you attend classes, you learn more. Ultimately, if you want to boost your motivation and keep going, you should get more anchor points. But how do you do that? Let's jump into the second part. Two, how to review your progress and maintain motivation. How do you review your progress? First, you always set small, measurable goals and always track results. The study resource you're using can be used for your review as well. It's easy to get demotivated and think that you've learned nothing. But if you're using a textbook, for example, you can set a number of pages and that can be a really good motivator, something to reach for. Making sure you're getting through and then testing yourself on material is a little harder if you're not actually using your textbook though, so make sure that you actually stick to the plan you set for yourself. Again, the tool you're using is not so important, but just make sure whatever you use, you measure it and track your progress. Reviewing is as simple as looking at your past goals and results. You can also do it the old school way and look through your notebooks, see how much you've written out. 
In fact, we have something called the Dean's Date with our Premium Plus plan, where our Premium Plus users send in all of the work they've completed with their teacher. The writings, the recordings, the assignments, and you can see it all, everything that you've done. Then you can see your actual results of your three months of work. Everything you've accomplished is in one place. Do you ever run out of motivation? Of course you do occasionally, and it's natural for everyone's motivation to dip after some time. Then if you lose motivation, how do you keep going? Just as we talked about earlier, add more anchor points, more connections to the language, whether that means enrolling in in-person classes at a real language school, planning trips, or signing up for a test. Those anchor points help you stay motivated. Your main ones need to be things that will keep you interested in your target language or the people in your life connected to it. These are the things that will keep you motivated. But it's also important to remember, whether you're struggling or you're progressing rapidly, that you have to keep your learning adaptive. As humans, we are adaptive. We adapt to environments, and this is the same thing. Your language learning path has to adapt as you progress. If you're progressing faster, there's a way to adapt. If you're progressing slower, there's also a way to adapt. Three, how you can keep going past the halfway point. If you've been studying the language for a few months, it's normal to start losing steam. If you're not losing steam and you're progressing, then great job, and maybe you can share some of your tips with us because it's one of the hardest things ever to stay motivated long term. If you are starting to lose steam, remember that this happens with any goal. It can happen to anyone at any time, so you need to learn how to adapt to it. By being aware that these dips are natural and that they happen, you can expect them. So when one does come around, you'll know how to boost your motivation and know how to keep yourself going. Here's what you do when a dip does come around. One, review your learning progress. If you've been setting small, measurable goals every month, then this won't be a problem. The goal here is to see how far you've come, and this will help you maintain motivation. If you can see that you learned 50 words in January, 50 in February, 100 in March, and so on, then you have measurable progress. And this lets you know that you're improving, even when you don't feel like you are. Second, if you're a Premium Plus student, you can also participate in the Dean's Date and submit your work on the deadline. Be sure to ask your Premium Plus teacher about it. Third, if you're a Premium or Premium Plus user, you can also check your dashboard and see how many flashcards you've studied and how many lessons you've completed. We track your progress for you. But of course, it's best to set goals like learn 50 words or speak one minute of conversation because completing a lesson may not mean that you've mastered everything inside. So if you've not been setting goals and tracking them, now is the time to start. Otherwise, do you know how much of the language you can speak or how many words you've learned? If you don't know, then you'll feel like you're floating around and not learning anything. So be sure to set small, measurable monthly goals. Fourth, create more anchor points to boost your motivation. Anchor points are connections to the language that keep you anchored to the language and your goal. It could be friends or relatives who speak the language, TV shows in that language you like, an upcoming trip to the target country, language classes, or language programs. All of these things, in one way or another, keep you anchored to your language learning goal. So if you started learning a language because your relative speaks it, that motivation may not last forever. It may help you in month one or month two, but by month four, five, or six, your motivation might wear off. But you can decide to enroll in a class or start watching a TV show in that language. That will give you some new reasons to keep going to the language. In a way, you give yourself more reasons to learn. A lot of the time, the reasons why we start something are not often the reasons why we continue them. So don't be afraid to adjust your motivations as you go along. If you've reached a language milestone and are starting to feel a little less motivated, just take a look at these tips. Thorough review, setting anchor points, and reviewing your study methods will all help you keep going in your studies. For more strategies on how to keep studying, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Getting Sick Conversation Cheat Sheet. 
Are you able to describe your symptoms in your target language? If not, download our new conversation sheet and learn must-know words and phrases for the doctor. Second, the Language Learning Starter Pack PDF eBook. If you're new to the language, do you know what words to learn first? With this eBook, you'll get over 70 basic words and phrases that beginners need to know. Start with these words first. Download it right now. Third, can you talk about economics in your target language? Learn how to say profit, demand, taxes, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, 30 must-know opposite nouns. Learn how to say day and night, question and answer, and much more. You'll pick up over 30 words with this vocab bonus. Fifth, free audiobooks for our members only. If you're not a member yet, sign up for a free lifetime account and unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 35% off premium or premium plus with the power up sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. With these can-do videos, you'll see real-life situations where you have to introduce yourself, talk about your family, or give your contact information. So, by the end, you can do them yourself in Korean. This video is a small portion of our can-do course. To get the full course, including translations, grammar tools, and assessment tests, click the link in the description. Welcome to Can Do Korean by KoreanClass101.com. 안녕하세요, 여러분. Kim Gizin입니다. Hi, everyone. I'm Kajin Kim. In this lesson, you learn how to use parting greetings. This is Karen Morris, and she's leaving the local coffee shop after receiving her coffee. The barista says, Goodbye. 안녕히 가세요. Listen to the conversation. Ready? 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 계세요. Once more with the English translation. 안녕히 가세요. Goodbye. Literally, go in peace. 안녕히 계세요. Goodbye. Literally, Stay in peace. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our CanDo course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's take a closer look at each of these expressions. First, do you remember how Selgi Song says, Goodbye? This starts with 안녕히 In peace. 안녕히 안녕히 Next is 가세요 Which means go. 가세요 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 Is the honorific form of the verb 가다 Meaning to go. Kata. Altogether, 안녕히 가세요. Literally means go in peace, but it translates as goodbye. 안녕히 가세요. The person staying says this to the person or people leaving. 안녕히 가세요. Here, the barista who is staying in the shop says this to Karen who is leaving the shop. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Karen says, Goodbye? 
안녕히 계세요. This starts with 안녕히 In peace. 안녕히 Next is 계세요 Which means stay in this case. 계세요 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 is the honorific form of the verb 있다 meaning to have 있다 altogether 안녕히 계세요 literally means stay in peace but it translates as goodbye 안녕히 계세요 the person leaving says this to the person or people staying 안녕히 계세요 here Karen, who is leaving the shop, says this to the barista, who is staying in the shop. To recap, if you're staying, you say, 안녕히 가세요. Go in peace, to the person or people leaving. If you're leaving, you say, 안녕히 계세요. Stay in peace, to the person or people staying. If both of you are leaving a place, you'll both say, 안녕히 가세요. Go in peace. 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 가세요. Go in peace and 안녕히 계세요. Stay in peace are formal greetings appropriate for almost all situations. You can use them when you're speaking with people older than you, co-workers, and so forth. At this point in your Korean studies, formal greetings should be your default greetings. However, you may find that their more informal versions are more frequent or useful. Let's learn them. In informal Korean, 잘 가. Bye, literally, go well, is said by the person staying to the person leaving. 잘 가. 잘 가. 잘 가. Corresponds with 안녕히 가세요. Go in peace. Note 잘 가. Is informal, while 안녕히 가세요. Is formal. In between these two politeness levels is 잘 가요. A polite but somewhat casual way to say goodbye to someone leaving. 잘 가요. 잘 가요. In informal Korean, 잘 있어. Bye, literally, stay well, is said by the person leaving to the person staying. 잘 있어. 잘 있어. 잘 있어. Corresponds with 안녕히 계세요. Stay in peace. Note 잘 있어. Is informal while 안녕히 계세요. Is formal. In between these two politeness levels is 잘 있어요. A polite but somewhat casual way to say goodbye to someone staying. 잘 있어요. 잘 있어요. To recap, in informal Korean, if you are staying, you say 잘 가. Bye, literally go well, to the person or people going. If you are leaving, you say, 잘 있어. Bye, literally stay well, to the person or people staying. If both of you are leaving, you will both say, 잘 가. Bye, literally go well. 잘 가. Let's look at the parting greetings once more. Listen and repeat or speak along with me. 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요. 잘 가. 잘 가. 잘 가요. 
잘 있어. 잘 있어. 잘 있어요. 잘 있어요. 안녕. 안녕. Did you notice the last parting greeting I used? 안녕. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our CanDo course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Annyeong. Which literally means being well can be used to mean bye. Annyeong. 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 Can be used as a parting greeting in informal situations by people of equal social status, like classmates or people of relative higher social status towards people of lower social status. However, it should not be used the other way around. 안녕 is a versatile greeting that can also be used as an informal greeting meaning hi. 안녕 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember the formal way to say goodbye to someone leaving? Literally, go in peace. 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 가세요. Do you remember the formal way to say goodbye to someone staying? Literally, stay in peace. 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요. Do you remember the informal way to say bye to someone leaving? Literally, go well. 잘 가. 잘 가. Do you remember the informal way to say bye to someone staying? Literally, stay well. 잘 있어. 잘 있어. Do you remember the informal general way to say bye? 안녕. 안녕. Let's practice. Imagine you're Mark Morris and you're leaving the coffee shop. Respond by saying goodbye. Literally, stay in peace. Ready? 안녕히 가세요. 안녕히 계세요. Listen again and repeat. 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요. Let's try another. Imagine you're Sasha Morris, and you and your friend are both leaving class. Respond by saying, bye. Literally, go well. Ready? 잘 가. 잘 가. Listen again and repeat. 잘 가. 잘 가. Let's try one more. 
Imagine you are Ben Morris, and you are finishing coffee with your college friend, Kaun. Respond by saying, bye, using the informal expression meaning bye, when parting, and hi, when meeting. Ready? 안녕. Listen again and repeat. With these can do videos, you'll see real life situations where you have to introduce yourself, talk about your family, or give your contact information. So, by the end, you can do them yourself in Korean. This video is a small portion of our CanDo course. To get the full course, including translations, grammar tools, and assessment tests, click the link in the description. Welcome to CanDo Korean by KoreanClass101.com. 안녕하세요, 여러분. 김계진입니다. Hi, everyone. I'm Kajin Kim. In this lesson, you learn essential social expressions, such as thank you. This is Ben Morris, and he's on the train. A fellow passenger drops his wallet as he exits the train. Ben picks up the wallet and chases after the man. He calls to the man by saying, Excuse me. 저기요. Listen to the following three short dialogues between Ben and the man. 저기요. 네? Ben hands the man the wallet. 감사합니다. 아니에요. Ben turns to board the train, but the door's shut. 죄송합니다. 괜찮아요. Once more with the English translation. 저기요. Excuse me. 네? Yes. Ben hands the man the wallet. 감사합니다. Thank you. 아니에요. Not at all. Ben turns to board the train, but the door's shut. 죄송합니다. I'm sorry. 괜찮아요. It's all right. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our Can Do course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's take a closer look at these three conversations. First, do you remember how Ben Morris says, Excuse me? First is, Literally over there, it refers to a place that is a bit away from the speaker. It can be used to call a person, as in the dialogue. 저기, 저기. Next is, 요. a polite, informal sentence ending. 요, 요. Note, adding 요. at the end of a sentence makes it more polite. Altogether, 저기요. literally means over there, but it translates as excuse me. 저기요. 저기요. 
Do you remember how the passenger acknowledges Ben by saying, Yes? 네? Yes? 네? 네? The second part of the conversation takes place after Ben returns the passenger's wallet. Do you remember how the passenger politely says, Thank you? 감사합니다. Thank you. 감사합니다. 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 Is the honorific form of the verb. 감사하다. Meaning to appreciate. 감사하다. By using the honorific form. 합니다. It becomes the most polite way of thanking someone. 감사합니다. Do you remember how Ben says, not at all? 아니에요. Not at all. 아니에요. 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 Is the polite informal form of 아니다. An adjective that literally means to be not and translates to not at all. 아니다. After the train doors shut and Ben misses his train, do you remember how the passenger apologizes to Ben by saying, I'm sorry? 죄송합니다. I'm sorry. 죄송합니다. 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 Is the honorific form of the adjective 죄송하다. Literally, to feel guilty from being indebted. But translates as, sorry. 죄송하다. By using the honorific form, 합니다. It becomes the most polite way of apologizing to someone. 죄송합니다. Do you remember how Ben replies, it's all right? 괜찮아요. It's all right. 괜찮아요. 괜찮아요. Is the polite informal form of the adjective 괜찮다, which literally means all right, but translates as it's all right. 괜찮아요. This is a common phrase used to express that things are all right. 네. Let's look at the expressions once more. Pay attention to the body language. Listen and repeat or speak along. 저기요. 저기요. 네? 네? 감사합니다. 감사합니다. 아니에요. 아니에요. 죄송합니다. 죄송합니다. 괜찮아요. 괜찮아요. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our Can Do course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? 
Do you remember how Ben Morris says, Excuse me? 저기요. 저기요. And how the passenger says, Yes? 네? 네? Do you remember how to say thank you? 감사합니다. 감사합니다. And how to say not at all? 아니에요. 아니에요. Do you remember how the passenger says, I'm sorry? 죄송합니다. 죄송합니다. And how Ben says, it's all right. 괜찮아요. 괜찮아요. Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Morris, and you receive a popular Korean candy from your Korean teacher. Say thank you. Ready? 감사합니다. 아니에요. Listen again and repeat. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. Let's try another. Imagine you're Mark Morris, and a passenger bumps into you. Respond by saying, It's no problem. Ready? 죄송합니다. 괜찮아요. Listen again and repeat. 괜찮아요. 괜찮아요. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark Morris, and you see a man drop his wallet. Call to get his attention. Ready? 저기요. 네? Listen again and repeat. 저기요. 저기요. With these can-do videos, you'll see real-life situations where you have to introduce yourself, talk about your family, or give your contact information. So, by the end, you can do them yourself in Korean. This video is a small portion of our CanDo course. To get the full course, including translations, grammar tools, and assessment tests, click the link in the description. Welcome to CanDo Korean by KoreanClass101.com. 안녕하세요, 여러분. 김계진입니다. Hi everyone, I'm Kajin Kim. In this lesson, you learn how to ask about someone's well-being. This is Mark Morris, and he's in the office break room. He meets Sang Hoon Song, a close colleague for the first time in a while, and asks, How have you been? 잘 지냈어요? Listen to the conversation and focus on the question. Ready? 잘 지냈어요? 네, 잘 지냈어요. Once more with the English translation. 잘 지냈어요? How have you been? 네, 잘 지냈어요. Yes, I've been well. 
Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool, so that you see each word as you hear it, and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our CanDo course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. First, do you remember how Mark asks, How have you been? First is, meaning well in this context. Next is, literally, you spent time. But translates as, have you been? Is the past polite informal of the verb, meaning to spend, as in to spend time. Note the word for you is inferred as this is a two person conversation, and therefore it's omitted. In Korean, it is common to exclude personal pronouns, such as you, when it is clear from context. Altogether, 잘 지냈어요? Literally, well, you spend time, but translates as, how have you been? Pay attention to the rising intonation. 잘 지냈어요? The rising intonation indicates that this is a question. Cultural note. This phrase is used when you haven't seen someone in a while. In everyday conversation, other topics are often discussed to ask about one's well-being or start small talk. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Song Hoon says, Yes, I've been well. First is 네. Yes. 네. 네. Next is 잘 지냈어요. First is 잘. Well. 잘. Next is 지냈어요. In this context, literally, I spent time but translates as, I have been. 지냈어요. 지냈어요. Note the word for I is inferred, as the speaker is answering a question. In Korean, it is common to exclude personal pronouns such as I when it is clear from context. Altogether, 네, 잘 지냈어요. Literally, Yes, well, I spent time. But translates as, Yes, I've been well. 네, 잘 지냈어요. Relationships are important to speech level in Korean. The speech level in the conversation between Mark and Song Hoon indicates they have a good relationship, as the speech level is polite, informal. In informal situations, such as conversations between close friends and classmates, 잘 지냈어? How have you been? Informal. 잘 지냈어? 잘. Well. 잘. Next is, 지냈어. Translating as, have you been? In a more informal speech level. 지냈어. 지냈어. Is the past informal form of the verb 지내다. to spend. 지내다. Altogether, 잘 지냈어? How have you been? Informal. 
잘 지냈어? When talking to someone of higher social status, such as a superior at the office, seniors, etc., you can say, 잘 지내셨어요? How have you been? 잘 지내셨어요? 잘 Well 잘 Next is 지내셨어요 Translating as Have you been in a more formal speech level. 지내셨어요 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 Is the past honorific form of the verb 지내다 To spend 지내다 Altogether 잘 지내셨어요? How have you been? 잘 지내셨어요? 안녕하세요. Hello. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Note, 안녕하세요 is from the verb 안녕하다, meaning to be peaceful. Well, 안녕하다. Literally, 안녕하세요 means something like be well or please be well. Note, 안녕하세요 is the most common greeting in Korean and can be used at all times of the day. It can translate as hello, good morning, good afternoon, etc. Depending on the content, you can use this phrase with someone who you are familiar with or unfamiliar with and at all speech levels. In addition, questions as a form of small talk are a common way to greet someone in Korea. For example, a common question to greet someone in Korean is Did you eat? 밥 먹었어요? In this case, the question acts as a greeting, like how are you in English, rather than a sincere question about whether or not you actually ate. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 잘 지냈어요? 네, 잘 지냈어요. 잘 지냈어요? 네, 잘 지냈어요. 잘 지냈어요? 아주 잘 지냈어요. 잘 지냈어요? 아주 잘 지냈어요. 안녕하세요. 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 잘 지냈어? 잘 지냈어. 잘 지냈어? 잘 지냈어. 잘 지내요? 네, 잘 지내요. 잘 지내요? 네, 잘 지내요. Did you notice how I used a different question? 잘 지내요? Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. 
Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our Can Do course. Just click the link in the description to get them. How are you? First is meaning well in this context. Next is you spend time in this context. Is the polite informal form of the verb 지내다, meaning to spend, as in to spend one's time. 지내다. Note the word for you is inferred because this is a two person conversation, and it's omitted. In Korean, it is common to exclude personal pronouns such as you when it is clear from context. Altogether, 잘 지내요? literally, well, you spend time, but translates as, How are you? 잘 지내요? Pay attention to the rising intonation. 잘 지내요? This is a phrase you say when you haven't met someone for a long time. It's not a daily expression. Mark responds with, 네. Yes, followed by the same words in the question. 잘 지내요. Notice the intonation. 잘 지내요. Altogether, 네, 잘 지내요. Yes, I'm well. 네. Let's review the key words and phrases. 아주 is an adverb meaning very. 아주 안녕하세요. Hello. 안녕하세요. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember the word for well? 잘, 잘. Do you remember how Mark asks, How have you been? 잘 지냈어요? 잘 지냈어요? Do you remember how to say yes? 네. 네. Do you remember how Sang Eun Song says, Yes, I've been well. 네, 잘 지냈어요. 네, 잘 지냈어요. Do you remember the informal way to ask, How have you been? 잘 지냈어. 잘 지냈어. And how to say hello? 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Let's practice. Imagine you're Sang Hun Sung, Mark's close colleague. Ask Mark how he's been using polite informal Korean. Ready? 잘 지냈어요? 네. 잘 지냈어요. Listen again and repeat. 잘 지냈어요? 
잘 지냈어요? Let's try another. Imagine you're Seon Yong Sim, Karen's teacher. Start your afternoon class by saying hello. Ready? <목소리> 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Listen again and repeat. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Let's try one more. Imagine you're Sasha, and you meet your classmate for the first time in a while. Ask her how she's been using informal Korean. Ready? 잘 지냈어? 응, 잘 지냈어. Listen again and repeat. 잘 지냈어? 잘 지냈어? And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Making a Phone Call PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. 여보세요. 담당자와 통화하고 싶은데요. 네. 잠시만 기다려 주세요. Once more with the English translation. 여보세요. 담당자와 통화하고 싶은데요. Hello. I'd like to speak with the person in charge. 네. 잠시만 기다려 주세요. Okay. Just a moment. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say hello on the phone. That's 여보세요. 여보세요. Then you'll need to learn how to say I'd like to speak with person. The pattern is person. 와, 과, 통화하고 싶은데요. This Korean sentence literally translates as person with talk on the phone want, but it means I'd like to speak with person. For example, hello, I'd like to speak with the person in charge. 여보세요. 담당자와 통화하고 싶은데요. 여보세요. 담당자와 통화하고 싶은데요. Now, how do you answer this question? 네. 잠시만 기다려 주세요. Okay, just a moment. Listen to it again. 네, 잠, 시, 만, 기, 다, 려, 주, 세, 요. 네, 잠시만 기다려 주세요. This Korean sentence literally translates as, yes, moment wait, but it means, okay, just a moment. 담당자 담당자 A sales representative 영업사원 영업사원 The manager 매니저 매니저 Customer service. 고객 서비스. 고객 서비스.
Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 영업사원과 통화하고 싶은데요. 네, 잠시만 기다려 주세요. 매니저와 통화하고 싶은데요. 네, 잠시만 기다려 주세요. 고객 서비스와 통화하고 싶은데요. 네, 잠시만 기다려 주세요. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, I'd like to speak with, person? Person. Wa, kwa, tonga hago shipundeo. And, how do you answer it? Imagine you want to talk to a sales representative. Do you remember how to say a sales representative? Say, I'd like to speak with a sales representative. Now say you want to talk to a sales representative and answer it. Now, imagine you want to talk to the manager. Do you remember how to say, the manager? Manager. Manager. Say, I'd like to speak with the manager. Now say you want to talk to the manager and answer it. Now imagine you want to talk to customer service. Do you remember how to say customer service? Say, I'd like to speak with customer service. Now say you want to talk to customer service and answer it. Tom help Tom Tom help Tom을 받고 싶은데요. I'd like some help. Tom을 받고 싶은데요. 배우다. Learn. 배우다. 배우다. Learn. 제가 배울 수 있는 사람들을 존경해요. I respect those from whom I can learn something. 제가 배울 수 있는 사람들을 존경해요. 움직이다. Move. 움직이다. 움직이다. Move. 손가락을 움직일 수 있어요? Can you move your fingers? 손가락을 움직일 수 있어요? 열일곱. 
seventeen. Seventeen의 멤버는 열일곱 명이 아니에요. The number of members in seventeen is not seventeen. Seventeen의 멤버는 열일곱 명이 아니에요. 열여덟. Eighteen. 열여덟. 열여덟. Eighteen. 그 남자는 열여덟 살입니다. He's eighteen years old. 그 남자는 열여덟 살입니다. 열아홉. Nineteen. 열아홉. 열아홉. Nineteen. 나는 열아홉 개의 단추가 필요해요. I need nineteen buttons. 나는 열아홉 개의 단추가 필요해요. 스물. Twenty. 스물. 스물. Twenty. 저는 스물 일곱 살입니다. I'm twenty-seven years old. 저는 스물 일곱 살입니다. 목, neck, 목, 목, neck. 길이는 아주 긴 목을 가지고 있습니다. A giraffe has a very long neck. 길이는 아주 긴 목을 가지고 있습니다. 얼굴, face. 얼굴, 얼굴, face. 여자친구가 무서운 장면에서 얼굴을 돌렸다. My girlfriend hid her face from the scary scene. 여자친구가 무서운 장면에서 얼굴을 돌렸다. 귀, ear, 귀, 귀, ear. 귀가 아파요. My ear is hurting. 귀가 아파요. 머리, hair. 머리, 머리, hair. 그녀의 금발 머리가 부럽다. I envy her golden hair. 그녀의 금발 머리가 부럽다. 산, mountain. 산, 산, mountain. 남산에 언제 한번 가볼래요? Would you like to go to Namsan Mountain sometime? 남산에 언제 한번 가볼래요? 바닷가. Beach. 바닷가. 바닷가. Beach. 바닷가에 갈 때는 선크림을 바르세요. When you go to the beach, please put on sunblock. 바닷가에 갈 때는 선크림을 바르세요. 열대우림. Rainforest. 열대우림, 열대우림, rainforest. 아마존 열대우림은 매우 커요. The Amazon rainforest is very large. 아마존 열대우림은 매우 커요. 섬, island. 섬. 섬, island. 
남이섬은 한국 드라마 겨울 연가의 촬영지입니다. Nam Yi Island is where they filmed the Korean drama Winter Sonata. Nam Yi Seom은 한국 드라마 겨울 연가의 촬영지입니다. 사전, dictionary. 사전, 사전. Dictionary. 사전에도 안 나와 있어요. It's not even in the dictionary. 사전에도 안 나와 있어요. 파란, blue. 파란, 파란, blue. 파란색 버튼 보여요? Do you see a blue button? 파란색 버튼 보여요? 노란, yellow. 노란, 노란, yellow. 노란색으로 칠했어요. I painted it in yellow. 노란색으로 칠했어요. 오렌지, orange. 오렌지, 오렌지, orange. 오렌지색 가방에 들어 있어요. It's in the orange bag. 오렌지색 가방에 들어 있어요. 색, color, 색, 색, color. 강렬한 색깔입니다. It's a strong, 지루한, boring, 지루한, 지루한, boring. 이 토크쇼는 너무 지루해요. This talk show is too boring. 이 토크쇼는 너무 지루해요. 흥미진진한 Exciting. 흥미진진한 흥미진진한 Exciting. 흥미진진한 영화를 봤어요. I saw an exciting movie. 흥미진진한 영화를 봤어요. 중요한 important. 중요한 중요한 important. 오늘 중요한 회의가 있어요. I have an important meeting today. 오늘 중요한 회의가 있어요. 신용카드 credit card 신용카드 신용카드 credit card 신용카드가 4장 있습니다. I have 4 credit cards 신용카드가 내장 있습니다. 열쇠 키 열쇠 열쇠 키 열쇠를 문 앞에 두고 갈게요. I will leave the keys in front of the door. 열쇠를 문 앞에 두고 갈게요. 운전면허 driver's license 운전면허 운전면허 driver's license 운전면허증은 항상 가지고 다니세요. Please carry your driver's license card with you all the time. 운전면허증은 
항상 가지고 다니세요. 숲 forest 숲 숲, forest. 너구리가 숲 속에서 땅콩을 먹고 있다. The raccoon is eating peanuts in the forest. 너구리가 숲 속에서 땅콩을 먹고 있다. 강, river. 강, 강. River. 여기는 강물이 정말 빨리 흐르네요. The river is running really fast here. 여기는 강물이 정말 빨리 흐르네요. 바다. Ocean. 바다. 바다. Ocean. 돌고래가 바다에서 수영하고 있다. The dolphin is swimming in the ocean. 돌고래가 바다에서 수영하고 있다. 호수 Lake 호수 호수 Lake 저는 호수 근처에 살아요. I live near the lake. 저는 호수 근처에 살아요. 문서 document 문서 문서 document 가장 최근의 문서를 보내 주실 수 있나요? Could you send me the newest document? 가장 최근의 문서를 보내 주실 수 있나요? 컴퓨터 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 내 컴퓨터 쓰지 마. Don't use my computer. 내 컴퓨터 쓰지 마. 팩스기 팩스 머신 팩스기 팩스기 팩스 머신 팩스기가 있나요? Do you have a fax machine? 팩스기가 있나요? 프린터 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 프린터에 잉크가 없어요. There is no ink in the printer. 프린터에 잉크가 없어요. 샤프 mechanical pencil 샤프 Sharp. Mechanical pencil. 이 샤프 어디에서 샀어요? Where did you buy this mechanical pencil? 이 샤프 어디에서 샀어요? 자. Ruler. 자. 자. Ruler. 자를 대고 줄을 그어라. Draw a line with a ruler. 자를 대고 줄을 그어라. Marker. 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 Marker 잉크가 부족하다. The marker is running low on ink. 마커 잉크가 부족하다. 은행 bank 은행 
Un hang. Bank. 그녀는 은행원입니다. She's a bank worker. 그녀는 은행원입니다. 편의점. Convenience store. 편의점. 편의점. Convenience store. 편의점에서 아르바이트를 해요. I work part-time at a convenience store. 편의점에서 아르바이트를 해요. 병원 Hospital 병원 병원 Hospital 내 대신 병원에 갈래? Do you want to go to the hospital in my place? 내 대신 병원에 갈래? 지갑 Wallet 지갑 지갑 Wallet 내 지갑 어디 있어? Where is my wallet? 내 지갑 어디 있어? 지갑 purse 지갑 지갑 purse 어제 지갑을 잃어버렸어 Yesterday I lost my purse 어제 지갑을 잃어버렸어 주문 order 주문 주문 order 다시 주문할지도 몰라요 I may order again 다시 주문할지도 몰라요. 들판 field 들판 들판 field 들판에 양 150마리가 있다. There are 150 sheep in the field. 들판에 양 150마리가 있다. 사막 Desert 사막 사막 Desert 태양은 뜨거운 사막의 열을 올리고 있다. The sun is heating the hot desert. 태양은 뜨거운 사막의 열을 올리고 있다. 사장 Boss 사장 사장 boss 사장님이 친절해서 좋아요. I'm happy that my boss is kind. 사장님이 친절해서 좋아요. 사무실 office 사무실 사무실 office 그의 사무실은 빌딩 3층에 있다. His office is on the third floor of the building. 그의 사무실은 
빌딩 3층에 있다. 동료 co-worker 동료 동료 co-worker 나만 빼고 내 동료들은 전부 테니스를 친다. All my co-workers play tennis except me. 나만 빼고 내 동료들은 전부 테니스를 친다. 회의 meeting 회의 회의 meeting 오늘 회의는 취소되었어요. Today's meeting has been cancelled. 오늘 회의는 취소되었어요. 경찰서 Police station 경찰서 경찰서 Police station 경찰서에 가야 해요. I have to go to the police station. 경찰서에 가야 해요. 약국 Pharmacy 약국 약국 Pharmacy 저는 약국에서 일해요. I work at a pharmacy. 저는 약국에서 일해요. 빵집 bakery 빵집 빵집 bakery 맛있는 빵집을 알아요. I know a good bakery. 맛있는 빵집을 알아요. 영화관 movie theater 영화관 영화관 movie theater 이따가 영화관 앞에서 봐 I will see you in front of the movie theater later 이따가 영화관 앞에서 봐 협상 negotiation 협상 협상 negotiation 2년간의 협상 후두 나라는 드디어 합의할 수 있었다. After two years of negotiation, the two countries will finally able to come to an agreement. 2년 간의 협상 후두 나라는 드디어 합의할 수 있었다. 계약 contract 계약 계약 contract 계약직 장그레씨는 결국 퇴사를 했다. Contract worker Grajang eventually left the company. 계약직 장그레씨는 결국 퇴사를 했다. 사업 business 사업 사업 business 그녀도 친구의 사업에 동참했다. 
She also took part in her friend's business. 그녀도 친구의 사업에 동참했다. 거래 deal 거래 거래 deal 우리는 거래를 한 거예요. We have a deal. 우리는 거래를 한 거예요. 바쁜 busy 바쁜 바쁜 busy 바쁜 것은 압니다. 하지만 내 변호사를 불러주시겠어요? I know you are busy, but can you call my lawyer? 바쁜 것은 압니다. 하지만 내 변호사를 불러주시겠어요? 심각한 serious 심각한 심각한 serious 저 사람은 진짜 심각한 사람이야. He is a really serious guy. 저 사람은 진짜 심각한 사람이야. 피곤하다. tired 피곤하다 피곤하다 tired 진짜 피곤하다 I'm really tired 진짜 피곤하다 상사 spiritual 상사 상사 spiritual 우리 상사는 정말 침착하십니다. My spiritual is very calm. 우리 상사는 정말 침착하십니다. 회사 company 회사 회사 company 그분이 우리 회사 이사님이세요. He is the director of my company. 그분이 우리 회사 이사님이세요. 급여 salary 급여 급여 salary 급여 조건이 어떻게 됩니까? What are your salary requirements? 급여 조건이 어떻게 됩니까? 라디오 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 라디오에서 들은 음악이에요. It's the music I heard on the radio. 라디오에서 들은 음악이에요. 텔레비전 Television 텔레비전 텔레비전 Television 
텔레비전이 조만간 배달될 겁니다. The television will be delivered soon. 텔레비전이 조만간 배달될 겁니다. 인터넷 Internet 인터넷 인터넷 Internet 인터넷 돼요? Does the internet work? 인터넷 돼요? 신문 Newspaper 신문 신문 Newspaper 그 신문 이리 줘 Pass the newspaper over here 그 신문 이리 줘 뉴스 채널 뉴스 채널 뉴스 채널 뉴스 채널 뉴스 채널 저녁에 뉴스 채널을 켜요 I turn on the news channel in the evening. 저녁에 뉴스 채널을 켜요. 악기 Musical instrument 악기 악기 Musical instrument 악기 연주 할수 있어요? Can you play a musical instrument? 악기 연주 할수 있어요? 그림 Painting 그림 그림 Painting. 미술 시간에 이 그림을 그렸어요. I drew this painting in my art class. 미술 시간에 이 그림을 그렸어요. 극장. Theater. 극장 극장 theater 극장은 어디에 있어요? Where is the theater? 극장은 어디에 있어요? musical musical 뮤지컬 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 티켓을 받았어요 I got tickets to a musical 뮤지컬 티켓을 받았어요 오페라 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 예술의 전당에서 공연하는 오페라에 갔어요 I went to the opera performed at Seoul Arts Center 예술의 전당에서 공연하는 오페라에 갔어요. 휴식을 취하다. 
relax. 휴식을 취하다. 휴식을 취하다. relax. 휴식을 취하면 안 돼? Can we just relax? 휴식을 취하면 안 돼? 화이트보드 Whiteboard 화이트보드 화이트보드 Whiteboard 선생님이 화이트보드에 적고 있어요. The teacher writes on the whiteboard. 선생님이 화이트 보드에 적고 있어요. 칠판 blackboard 칠판 칠판 blackboard 칠판이 안 보여요. I can't see the blackboard. 칠판이 안 보여요. 시험 test 시험 시험 test 그 시험 어려워. That test is hard. 그 시험 어려워. 교과서 Textbook 교과서 교과서 Textbook 저는 한국어 교과서가 세권 있습니다. I have three Korean textbooks. 저는 한국어 교과서가 세권 있습니다. 앞 front 앞 앞, front, 열쇠를 문 앞에 두고 갈게요. I will leave the keys in front of the door. 열쇠를 문 앞에 두고 갈게요. 직업, job. 직업, 직업, job. 재미있는 직업인 것 같아요. I think it's an interesting job. 재미있는 직업인 것 같아요. 대통령, president. 대통령 대통령 President 곧 대통령 선거가 있어요. There is going to be an election for the president soon. 곧 대통령 선거가 있어요. 산업 industry 산업 산업 industry 한국의 문화 콘텐츠 산업은 한류의 열풍으로 급성장하고 있다. The Korean cultural content industry is booming with Korean wave fever. 한국의 문화 콘텐츠 산업은 
한류의 열풍으로 급 성장하고 있다. Belt, 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 belt. Belt가 너무 짧아요. The belt is too short. Belt가 너무 짧아요. 동전 coin 동전 동전 coin 동전을 차곡차곡 모으고 있어요. I'm saving coins little by little. 동전을 차곡차곡 모으고 있어요. 돈 money 돈돈 돈. money 돈을 빌려주세요. Lend me some money, please. 돈을 빌려주세요. 현금 카드 debit card 현금 카드 현금 카드 debit card 현금 카드를 잃어버려서 경찰서에 가야 했어요. I lost my debit card and had to go to the police. 현금 카드를 잃어버려서 경찰서에 가야 했어요. 계산서 bill 계산서 계산서 bill 계산서 갖다 주실래요? Could you bring me the bill, please? 계산서 갖다 주실래요? 사진 촬영 Photography 사진 촬영 사진 촬영 Photography. 제 취미는 사진 촬영입니다. Photography is my hobby. 제 취미는 사진 촬영입니다. 벗다. Take off. 벗다. 벗. Take off. 신발을 벗지 마세요. Please don't take off your shoes. 신발을 벗지 마세요. 침실. Bedroom. 침실. 침실 bedroom 우리 부모님은 침실을 같이 사용합니다. My parents share a bedroom. 우리 부모님은 침실을 같이 사용합니다. 부엌 kitchen 부엌 부엌 kitchen 부엌에서 요리를 하고 있어요. I'm cooking in the kitchen. 부엌에서 
요리를 하고 있어요. 화장실 bathroom 화장실 화장실 bathroom 화장실이 참 깨끗해요. The bathroom is very clean. 화장실이 참 깨끗해요. 졸업식 graduation 졸업식 졸업식 graduation 오늘은 저희 학교 졸업식이에요. Today is our school's graduation day. 오늘은 저희 학교 졸업식이에요. 승진 promotion 승진 승진 promotion 승진 축하드립니다. Congratulations on your promotion. 승진 축하드립니다. 기념일 anniversary 기념일 기념일 anniversary 달력에 우리 기념일을 적어 놨어. I marked our anniversary on the calendar. 달력에 우리 기념일을 적어 놨어. 장례식 funeral 장례식 장례식 funeral 장례식에 다녀왔어요. I went to a funeral. 장례식에 다녀왔어요. 결혼 wedding 결혼 결혼 wedding 결혼식은 잘 진행되었어요. The wedding went smoothly. 결혼식은 잘 진행되었어요. 설명하다 explain 설명하다 설명하다 explain 한번더 설명해 주시겠어요? Can you explain that to me once more? 한번더 설명해 주시겠어요? 뒤 back 뒤뒤 뒤. back 집 뒤에 정원이 있어요. At the back of our house, we have a garden. 집 뒤에 정원이 있어요. 동쪽 East 동쪽 동쪽 East 일본은 한국의 동쪽에 있습니다. Japan is located to the east of South Korea. 
일본은 한국의 동쪽에 있습니다. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the power of textbooks and digital detox. In this digital age where we're all using apps and smartphones to learn languages, you might not think of a textbook as the first resource to turn to, right? But if you're avoiding textbooks, then you're missing out on some powerful language learning benefits. So today you'll learn why textbooks are still a powerful resource in the digital age, why some, but not all, digital resources might hurt your ability to learn, and how to do a digital detox and learn off screen with our program. And we're giving away a brand new conversation cheat sheet, so keep watching. But first, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Getting Sick Conversation Cheat Sheet. Are you able to describe your symptoms in your target language? If not, download our new conversation sheet and learn must-know words and phrases for the doctor. Second, the Language Learning Starter Pack PDF eBook. If you're new to the language, do you know what words to learn first? With this ebook, you'll get over 70 basic words and phrases that beginners need to know. Start with these words first. Download it right now. Third, can you talk about economics in your target language? Learn how to say profit, demand, taxes, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, 30 must know opposite nouns. Learn how to say day and night, question and answer, and much more. You'll pick up more than 30 words with this vocab bonus. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The power of textbooks and digital detox. You probably have some language learning apps on your phone, right? But do you have any textbooks? Let us know in the comment section. Digital resources like apps and physical resources like books have their pros and cons. But if you're learning with digital resources only, you might be missing out on some benefits that come with physical resources. What are they? First, a digital detox. This is a basic one. A textbook gives you a break from the screen. You're not sitting in front of so much blue light all day, which can have an impact on your sleep. That's just for your overall health. Second, the ability to focus and improve your focus. Here's a question for you. How long is your attention span? Five minutes, 10 minutes? The thing is, attention and the ability to focus are crucial for learning and succeeding with any goal in life. But if you're learning on a device, you'll get pop-ups and notifications. If you're on YouTube, well, the algorithm will have you watching cat videos soon enough. These things are designed to keep you jumping from one thing to the next, and all of this hurts your attention span and your ability to learn. With a book, it's much easier to focus, and consistently learning with one can help improve your focus. Third, if the book has a really good story to follow, it makes it more fun to learn. This may not be something you can find in every textbook, but you can find it in textbook resources like bilingual storybooks. Fourth, you get a clear path to follow. Textbooks give you a linear path from page one to 100. You know where to go next, how far you are from the end, and what you have left to learn. With an app, you'll be forever swiping and not really knowing if you're getting anywhere. Fifth, Textbooks have gone through academic rigor, meaning they've been made by teachers or checked by teachers. So you're learning the correct forms, the correct language, and you can rely on it to be accurate. If you Google for blogs about phrases to learn, there's a chance the information is not completely accurate. Sixth, textbook lessons are curated and organized so that what you learn on page one helps you understand page two and so on. It builds you up and teaches you crucial language skills that beginners need to know, like how to introduce yourself first, then how to grow that conversation. As an added bonus, you can write in them. What about the downsides of textbooks? There are a few. The content gets old fast. Language always changes. There's new slang. So that's where digital lessons do well. Also, books can get boring and overwhelming. An approach you can consider for a textbook 
is to put in a certain amount of time, say 20 or 30 minutes a day, and then walk away so you're not overwhelmed. But by providing a digital detox, allowing us a framework for focus, offering reduced distractions, being easy to follow and accurate, textbooks are powerful in a digital world. So, should you go for digital detox and get a textbook? If you can handle a bit of change to your routine, then why not? If you're worried about learning the same thing from two sources, don't worry. Learning something like a grammar rule from multiple angles will only help you understand it better and reinforce your memory. A book will give you a clear direction of where to go, what to learn, and challenge your mind in ways that digital lessons might not. So, how do you do a digital detox and learn with our program? First, you can print out our extensive reading books. Extensive reading is a learning tactic where you read books that are appropriate for your level, and the goal is quantity over quality. You should read a lot and skip over the words you don't know. To access these, just visit the lesson library to find our extensive reading books. Second, download our PDF lesson notes and print them out. The lesson notes give you the lesson in writing, the dialogue, the vocab, grammar explanations, sample sentences, and cultural insights. Find the lesson notes in every one of your lessons. Third, use our printable visual flashcards. With these, you'll learn over 1,500 of the most common words. If you want the link to the visual flashcards, just leave a comment and we'll reply with it. Fourth, you can also use our printable conversation cheat sheets. With these, you'll learn words and phrases for the most common conversation topics. If you want the link to our collection of cheat sheets, again, leave a comment and we'll reply with it. Remember, the ultimate goal here is to go for a digital detox, challenge your brain in a new way, and try new resources. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to start conversations, talking points for language learners. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Have you ever started learning a language but just couldn't continue? Why does this happen? And what do successful language learners do differently? In this video, we're going to talk about why you should put your language learning on autopilot. We asked you, and the number one reason people don't continue is time. Either you don't make the time for learning or you're just too busy. But a lot of the time, this is caused by the resources you're using. If you've downloaded five language apps and bought two books, you'll get overwhelmed about where to start and what to do next. So what do successful language learners do? Successful learners don't overwhelm themselves thinking, what should I do today? They put their learning on autopilot. Imagine this. Let's say you have a favorite TV show. A new episode comes out every Tuesday. So you know what you're doing on Tuesday night. You don't have to think about it. You don't need a reminder, it's automatic. Every Tuesday, you watch an episode. You make it into a habit. Now, how do we apply that to language learning? First, habits. If you have a habit of learning, then you're already on autopilot. So, set a small, measurable, monthly goal with a deadline, like learn 100 words or do 30 lessons by the end of the month. Once you know your goal, you can backtrack. So, for example, divide 100 words by 30 days in a month, and you get 3.33. So you should learn about three words a day. Now you know what to do. Three words a day, there's no confusion. Do those three words and you're done. You don't need to think about what you should be doing because you already know what you're doing. It becomes a habit. The second way to stay on autopilot is with language textbooks. This is basically just because books are sequential. You just follow the pages from one until the end. You don't have to think about where to go next, so it's easy to stay on track with what you need to do. Third, the word of the day. Every day, you get a new word in your email inbox automatically. You don't have to think about it. Simply check your email, learn a word, and you're done. The fourth way is with our progress tracking tools. They spoon feed you lessons one by one. So let's say you finished lesson one where you learned greetings, then you automatically load up lesson two where you learn a basic conversation that uses the greetings you learned in lesson one. Then you have lesson three and four and so on. You don't have to worry about what to do next because our dashboard will keep you on track. 
It'll even build upon what you learned in your previous lesson, so you won't forget it. The point is to put your learning on autopilot. You need something that guides you from A to B to C. Whether it's your own habits, or a book that takes you from 1 to 100, or a learning program that feeds you lessons. So take one of these tips and apply it today. So, to put your learning on autopilot, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share this video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Are you focused on active language learning or passive language learning? And which is the best way to learn? In this video, you'll learn the difference between active and passive learning, and some methods for each. Do you know the difference between active and passive learning? You'll find out the differences between these two. First, the difference between active and passive learning. Here's the difference. Active learning means you're actively engaging with learning material and focusing on it. For example, you're reading in your target language, you're looking up words, you're translating, you're memorizing phrases, or you're speaking out loud. So you're focused on what you're learning and you're really into it. Now, passive learning is different. It requires less concentration. It's usually done when you're doing something else. For example, doing chores, driving to work, or taking the train. You could be listening to an audio lesson or watching a video lesson. But the difference is, you're not focused on picking apart every word. You're just passively taking the language in. What about you? How do you usually learn? Do you have a lot of active practice? A lot of passive practice? Do you have a combination? Let us know in the comments. Second, how you can learn both ways with our lessons. If you do a lot of passive learning, say because you're always on the go, then here are four simple tactics you can apply right now. One, press play on a lesson and just listen or watch, just like you would with YouTube. So if you're at home with your computer on, press play on a lesson and take it in. Two, now if you're outside, if you're going to the store or commuting, you can learn with our free Innovative Language 101 app for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. Again, open a lesson, press play, and that's it. If you want to passively review words and phrases, then check out the vocabulary slideshow tool. This premium study tool is available on every lesson and vocab list. Just press play, and with every slide, you'll get the word, the audio pronunciation, the translation, and sample sentences. You can even put the slideshow on loop and immerse yourself that way. And third, if you have an Amazon Echo device, then you can immerse yourself with daily audio lessons or you can learn with the quick word of the day. You can just play a lesson and keep it in the background while you're at home. Just look for Daily Dose by Innovative Language on the Amazon Skill Store and download it for free. Now, if you're looking for some active learning practice and you have some time to concentrate, here are five tactics you can use right now. Number one, listen or watch a lesson and read along with the translations. You'll get complete translations in the lesson notes and the line-by-line -line dialogue. This will make your reading and listening skills skyrocket. The best part is you'll understand every single word. The translations are right in front of you. Number two, repeat the lesson dialogue as you hear it. This is called shadowing and it will boost your speaking skills. Just repeat the lines that you hear until you can speak with confidence. To make it even easier, you can also get the lines in the dialogue study tool and in the lesson notes, so you can read them out loud as you hear them in the lesson. Number three, record yourself with our voice recorder in the dialogue study tool to perfect your pronunciation and see how close you are to a native speaker. Number four, if you want to boost your vocabulary, study words with our smart flashcards. They sort the words for you, so you get the harder words more often until you master them. And the easy ones show up now and then to refresh your memory. And number five, ask questions and practice. Leave a comment in the comment section. If you're a Premium Plus user, you get your very own teacher, and you can ask them to review and correct your writing and speaking. You can also ask for learning advice and get all of your questions answered. Both are great ways to learn, but which one is best? Well, that depends on you. If you have some quiet time to focus, active learning is best. But if you're on the train and you're multitasking, then passive learning is the better option. Whichever you choose, you can apply both with our language learning program. 
So to test out active and passive learning, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Every language learner wants to speak with confidence, without struggling, and without stopping to think of words. So how do you do this? In this video, you'll learn five tactics to perfect your speaking. Above all, every learner wants to speak in their target language with confidence. We've run survey after survey, year after year, and the results are the same. Listening, reading, and writing are all important, but people want to improve their speaking the most. So how do you perfect your speaking skills? First, shadow the dialogues you hear in the lessons. What is shadowing? It's a learning technique where you mimic native speakers. In other words, you listen and then you repeat what they say. This is a fast and easy way to start practicing speaking. You can do this with any one of our audio or video lessons. And even easier, if you have access to the dialogue section, you can read along out loud as you listen. So shadow as much as possible to perfect your speaking and try harder lessons to take yourself to the next level. Second, read the dialogue out loud. We just mentioned this in tip one, but this tactic deserves its own special mention. Reading out loud is another easy way to practice your speaking. Simply read the lesson dialogue that's available in the dialogue section, the lesson notes, or the lesson transcript. By reading out loud, you're practicing your speaking skills. And here's a trick. If you can get yourself to read faster, you'll be able to speak faster too. Natives tend to speak quickly, and if you can too, that's a sign that you're improving. Third, record yourself speaking to perfect your pronunciation. If you're a Premium or Premium Plus member, look for the voice recorder in the dialogue section. With this tool, you can record yourself and compare your speaking to a native speaker. This is powerful because you instantly hear the difference between your speech and the authentic native pronunciation. And then you can easily perfect your speaking and pronunciation. If you don't have a premium account, record yourself with your smartphone. And while you can't really compare, you can spot where you struggle or stutter. This tactic is used by professional speakers, public speakers, just about anyone that has to give a presentation. Fourth, if you're a Premium Plus member, record yourself and send it to your Premium Plus teacher for feedback. Here, you're getting instant feedback from a native speaker. They'll point out your mistakes, they'll tell you what to improve and how, and record themselves and work with you until you reach perfection. That's the power of having a native speaker give you feedback. So what do people usually record? Here's an easy one. Record a one paragraph self-intro. In fact, we ask all of our new members to do this. Give your name, your age, where you're from, why you're learning, and that's it. It's a great way to get started. Our more advanced students talk about their day. They send three recordings, in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. For example, I woke up at 7 a.m. and brushed my teeth. I got ready for work. My train was a little late, and so on. This can dramatically improve your speaking because you're practicing conversations that people have all the time. The fifth way to perfect your speaking, Premium Plus Assignments. With this feature, you get weekly assignments based on your needs and goals, whether they're reading, writing, listening, or speaking. If you want to improve your speaking, your Premium Plus teacher will send you speaking assignments nonstop, every week, and provide you with constant feedback. This is all part of your personalized learning experience. So take advantage of our tools and put these tactics to use. And remember, if you want to master your language with our complete language learning program, now's your chance. So to test out these tips and start speaking now, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Renting an Apartment Conversation Cheat Sheet. 
learn how to say, how much is the rent? How many bedrooms are there? And much more with this new PDF cheat sheet. Second, printable visual flashcards that'll improve your vocabulary. Want to speak more of the language? You'll need to learn more words. And with our new printable visual flashcards, you'll easily master over 1,500 words. Just download and print these flashcards out. Third, the top 50 marine animals and fish. How well do you know animal names in your target language? With this lesson, you'll learn how to say shark, whale, dolphin, and much more. Fourth, how to talk about your day in 20 phrases. If you can't talk about your day yet, this one minute lesson will get you speaking. You'll learn 20 must know phrases, from talking about waking up and brushing your teeth to dinner and going to sleep. Fifth, looking for a new language learning app? With the Innovative 101 app, you learn language fast and start speaking in minutes because the audio and video lessons are just three to 15 minutes long. Learning is that easy. Download Innovative 101 for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 35% off basic, premium, or premium plus with the summer sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. Welcome to Can Do Korean by KoreanClass101.com. 안녕하세요, 여러분. 김계진입니다. Hi, everyone. I'm Kaysin Kim. In this lesson, you will learn how to make small talk about the weather. This is Karen Morris. She sees her neighbor, Taehyun Park, and starts a conversation by saying, It's hot today, right? 오늘 덥죠? Listen to the conversation and focus on Karen's comment. Ready? 오늘 덥죠? 네, 그렇네요. Once more with the English translation. 오늘 덥죠? It's hot today, right? 네, 그렇네요. Yes, that's right. Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. Practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And 3. Take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our Can Do course. Just click the link in the description to get them. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Karen says, It's hot today, right? First is, 오늘. Today. 오늘. 오늘. Next is, 덥죠? Hot, right? 덥죠? This starts with 덥. the stem of the adjective 덥다. hot 덥다. attached to 덥. is 조. which translates as right, as in hot, right, in this context. 조. Together 덥죠? hot, right? 덥죠? Note 조. Is the contracted form of 지. the confirmation particle and 요. the polite sentence ending particle. 조. Think of 조. and 지요. like the sentence ending right in English, as in it's hot, right? Both 조. and 지요. are used in Korean to reconfirm information suggest an answer, and build consensus among the speakers about a known topic, among other uses. Altogether, it's 덥죠? 
literally, today hot, right? But translates as, it's hot today, right? 오늘 덥죠? Note the rising intonation indicates the speaker is requesting or soliciting information of something known to the speaker and listener. Karen is expecting her neighbor to respond after she says, 오늘 덥죠? By using this pattern, it's expected that the other person will express agreement. It's an exercise in consensus building that will begin many of your daily encounters in Korea. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how the neighbor says, Yes, that's right. <laughs> 네, 그렇네요. First is, 네. Yes. 네. 네. Next is the phrase, 그렇네요. That's right. 그렇네요. It's used in confirmation or agreement, and it translates to, that's right, in this context. For now, please remember this as a set phrase. Altogether, 네, 그렇네요. Yes, that's right. 네, 그렇네요. 오늘 weather description 조 It's weather description today, right? 오늘 weather description 조 In this lesson, you'll learn words and phrases related to the weather. Imagine you want to say cold, right? 춥죠? 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 춥죠 is a form of the adjective 춥다 cold as in cold weather 춥다 say it's cold today right ready 오늘 춥죠 it's cold today right 오늘 춥죠 Pronunciation note regarding 조 In Korean, when 히읗 is followed by 기억, 디귿, 비읍 or 지읒 the sound changes to the harder counterpart. 키읗, 티읒, 비읍 and 치읒 respectively. As 조 begins with 치읒 it represents one of these cases. Therefore, when 조 is preceded by 히읗 the sound shifts to 초 히읗 plus 지읒 equals 치읒 For example, 좋초 Nice, right? 좋초 좋 has 히읗 So when follows, the sound changes to as in 좋죠. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 오늘 덥죠? 오늘 덥죠? 오늘 춥죠? 오늘 춥죠? 오늘 선선하죠? 오늘 선선하죠? 오늘 따뜻하죠? 오늘 따뜻하죠? 오늘 날씨가 좋죠? 오늘 날씨가 좋죠? Did you notice the pattern was slightly different? Wondering how you can master these conversations even faster? Here's how. 1. Read along. You get the lesson conversation and translations inside our dialogue tool so that you see each word as you hear it and understand it all. 2. 
practice speaking. By shadowing what you hear, you can also record and compare yourself with native speakers with our voice recording tools. And three, take our assessment tests and see how much you remember. These tools are part of our Can Do course. Just click the link in the description to get them. It's nice weather today, right? First is 오늘. today. 오늘. Next is 날씨. weather. 날씨. 날씨. Next is 가. the subject marking particle. 가. 가. It marks weather as the subject of the sentence. Note, there are two forms of the subject marking particle. 가 follows words that end in vowels, like 날씨. Next is 좋죠? Nice, right? 좋죠? This starts with 좋. The stem of the adjective 좋다. Nice. 좋다. Attached to 좋 is 좋 which translates as nice, as in nice, right, in this context. 좋 Together 좋죠? Nice, right? 좋죠? Notice the pronunciation of 좋죠? Altogether 오늘 날씨가 좋죠? Literally Today weather nice, right? But translates as the weather is nice today, right? 오늘 날씨가 좋죠? 오늘 Let's review the key vocabulary. 선선하다 To be cool, as in the temperature. 선선하다 선선하다 선선하죠? Cool, right? 선선하죠? 선선하죠? 따뜻하다. Warm. 따뜻하다. 따뜻하다. 따뜻하죠? Warm, right? 따뜻. 따뜻하죠? 따뜻하죠? 날씨 Weather 날씨 날씨 좋다 Nice 좋다 좋다 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say today? 오늘 오늘 Do you remember how Karen says, it's hot today, right? 오늘 덥죠? 오늘 덥죠? Do you remember how to say yes? 네. 네. Do you remember how Dayeon Park says, yes, that's right? 네, 그렇네요. 네, 그렇네요. Do you remember how to say cold, right? 춥죠? 춥죠? And how to say weather? 날씨 
날씨. Do you remember how to say nice, right? <목소리> 좋죠? 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 Let's practice. Imagine you're Taeyeon. Comment to Karen on how cold it is today. Ready? 오늘 춥죠? 네, 그렇네요. Listen again and repeat. 오늘 춥죠? 오늘 춥죠? Let's try another. Imagine you're Ben Morris. Comment to your classmate on how hot the weather is today. Ready? 오늘 덥죠? 네, 그렇네요. Listen again and repeat. 오늘 덥죠? 오늘 덥죠? Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark Morris. Comment to your neighbor on how nice the weather is today. Ready? 오늘 날씨가 좋죠? 네, 그렇네요. Listen again and repeat. 오늘 날씨가 좋죠? 오늘 날씨가 좋죠? 밖에 outside 밖에 밖에 outside 밖에 바람이 많이 붑니다. It's windy outside. 밖에 바람이 많이 붑니다. 안에 inside 안에 안에 inside 콩은 꼬투리 안에서 자랍니다. Soybeans grow inside the pot. 콩은 꼬투리 안에서 자랍니다. 왼쪽 left 왼쪽 왼쪽 left 첫 번째 신호등에서 왼쪽으로 도세요. Turn left at the first traffic light. 첫 번째 신호등에서 왼쪽으로 도세요. 오른쪽 right 오른쪽 오른쪽 right 오른쪽에 뭐가 있나요? What's on the right? 오른쪽에 뭐가 있나요? 첫 번째 First 첫 번째 첫 번째 First 첫 번째가 제일 어려워요. The first time is always the most difficult. 첫 번째가 제일 어려워요. 
두 번째 second 두 번째 두 번째 second 왼쪽에서 두 번째 문이에요. It's the second door on the left. 왼쪽에서 두 번째 문이에요. 세 번째. Third. 세 번째. 세 번째. Third. 세 번째로 도착하는 사람이 동메달을 차지해요. The third one to arrive wins the bronze medal. 세 번째로 도착하는 사람이 동메달을 차지해요. 비누 soft 비누 비누 soft 매일 비누와 물로 목욕하세요. Bathing with soft and water every day. 매일 비누와 물로 목욕하세요. 칫솔 Toothbrush 칫솔 칫솔 Toothbrush 여자아이는 전동 칫솔로 이를 닫고 있습니다. The girl is brushing her teeth with an electric toothbrush. 여자아이는 전동 칫솔로 이를 닫고 있습니다. 치약 Toothpaste 치약 치약 Toothpaste 우리는 치약을 다 썼습니다. We are out of toothpaste. 우리는 치약을 다 썼습니다. 샴푸 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 만약 샴푸가 조금이라도 눈에 들어가면 물로 즉시 씻어내십시오. If some of the shampoo gets in your eyes, rinse down with water immediately. 만약 샴푸가 조금이라도 눈에 들어가면 물로 즉시 씻어내십시오. 정보 information 정보 정보 information 저는 인터넷에서 정보를 얻고 있습니다. I gather information from the internet. 저는 인터넷에서 정보를 얻고 있습니다. 농부 farmer 농부 농부 farmer 농부가 걸음을 주고 있습니다. A farmer is covering a field with a fertilizer. 농부가 걸음을 주고 있습니다. 비서 secretary 비서 비서 secretary 
저는 비서로 일하고 있어요. I'm working as a secretary. 저는 비서로 일하고 있어요. 은행원 banker 은행원 은행원 banker 집을 사기 위한 대출금을 마련하기 위해 10명의 은행원을 만났습니다. I met with 10 bankers before I received a loan to buy a house. 집을 사기 위한 대출금을 마련하기 위해 10명의 은행원을 만났습니다. 작가 writer 작가 작가 writer 그는 좋은 작가로서 칭송을 받았습니다. He was praised as a good writer. 그는 좋은 작가로서 칭송을 받았습니다. 노력하다 try 노력하다 노력 
Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now, before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Using Transportation Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to get around in your target language? You can learn how. This new cheat sheet teaches you must-know vocabulary and phrases, like where can I buy a ticket, how much is the train pass, and much more. Second, the Ultimate Guide to Beginner Language eBook. Want a free way to boost your vocabulary? With this new PDF eBook, you'll master over 500 beginner words and phrases, more than enough to start speaking the language with confidence. Third, can you talk about holiday accommodations in your target language? Learn how to say hotel, guest house, in, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, most common ways to say sorry. Do you know all the ways to apologize in your target language? This one minute lesson will get them in your head, guaranteed. Fifth, free language learning audiobooks for anyone who sees this video. If you watch this far, then here's a free bonus. We're giving all of our users free access to our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 40% off premium or premium plus with the Epic sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. This is Karen Morris, and she's in rainy Seoul. She's on a long-distance call with In Suk In, her former homestay mother. In Suk In asks, How's the weather? Listen to the conversation and focus on the response. Note, the speakers are using informal, polite Korean, indicating a close relationship. Ready? Once more with the English translation. How's the weather? It's raining. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Insuk asks, How's the weather? First is 날씨. Weather. 날씨. 날씨. Next is 어때요? How is? As in, how is the weather? 어때요? 어때요? This starts with 어때? How is? 어때? is from the verb 어떻다 meaning be how or be like what 어떻다 note 어떻다 is a shortened form of 어떠하다 both mean be how or be like what next is 요 the polite sentence ending 요 together 어때요 how is? 어때요? 어때요? Altogether. 날씨 어때요? Literally, weather how is. But it translates as, how is the weather? 날씨 어때요? Note, this is the shortened version of 날씨가 어때요? In suk in omits the subject marking particle. 가. In spoken Korean, speakers tend to omit particles when it's clear which particle would be used. Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Karen says, It's raining. First is, P. Rain. P. P. Next is 
Ka. The subject marking particle. Ka. Ka. It marks rain as the subject of the sentence. Note. Ka. Follows words that end with a vowel such as P. Next is Wayu is coming, as in the rain is coming down. Wayu Wayu Wa is from the verb Uta, meaning to come. Uta After this is Yu, the polite sentence ending. Yu you together wayu translates as is coming as in the rain is coming down wayu altogether it's biga wayo this literally means rain is coming but it translates as it's raining biga wayo the pattern is Noun, subject marking particle, wayu. Noun, subject marking particle, is coming down. Noun, subject marking particle, wayu. To use this pattern, replace the noun placeholder with a suitable weather noun, which falls from the sky, such as rain. Then mark the subject with the corresponding subject marking particle. Ka. Follows words that end with a vowel, such as P. E. Follows words that end with a consonant, such as Dun. Snow. In this lesson, you'll learn adjectives related to the weather that you can use with this pattern. Imagine it's snowing. Dun. Snow. Dun. Dun. Remember, when the subject ends with a consonant, Use the subject marking particle E. Say, it's snowing. Ready? Duni wayong. It's snowing. Duni wayong. Not all weather conditions can be described with this pattern, so you'll need other patterns, such as Corresponding stem of adjective or verb describing the weather, informal polite sentence ending. For example, 맑아요. It's sunny. 맑아요. Is from the adjective 막다, meaning to be clear. 막다. Conjugation note for the informal polite form. The final vowel in the stem determines the conjugation pattern. If the final vowel in an adjective or verb stem is o or a, then a follows the stem, as in 맑아요. Note, 하다, to do, one of the most common verbs in Korean, is the exception to this rule. Its final vowel, a, but it conjugates as 해요. If the final vowel in a stem is anything else, then o follows the stem. For example, 먹다, meaning to eat. 먹다. The final vowel in the stem isn't a or u, so o follows the stem 먹, as in 먹어요. I eat. Note, if the stem ends in a vowel, such as the following case, a contraction will occur. For example, 흐려요. It's cloudy. 흐려요. 흐려요. Is from the adjective 흐리다, meaning to be cloudy. 흐리다. The final vowel in the stem 흐리 isn't 아 or 오 so O follows the stem. 흐리 plus O plus U. Now as the stem 흐리 ends in a vowel, D contracts with O to form 려. 
So, Huri plus O plus Yu becomes Huryoyu. It's cloudy. Huryoyu. In Korean, there are many of these contractions. Let's look at some more examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 비가 와요. 비가 와요. 눈이 와요. 눈이 와요. 맑아요. 맑아요. 흐려요. 흐려요. 서울에 비가 와요. 서울에 비가 와요. Did you notice how I added 서울에? It's raining in Seoul. 서울에 비가 와요. The phrase 서울에 sets Seoul as a place for talking about the weather. When it's not yet clear which area you are talking about, you can add the following information. Location 에 plus one of the patterns introduced. Let's review the key vocabulary. 눈 Snow 눈 눈. 막다. To be clear. 막다. 막다. 맑아요. Is sunny. 맑아요. 맑아요. 흐리다. To be cloudy. 흐리다, 흐리다. 흐려요. It's cloudy. 흐려요, 흐려요. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say rain? P P And the subject marking particle that follows words ending in vowels? Ka Ka do you remember how Karen Murray says it's raining? Piga wayo. Piga wayo. Do you remember how to say weather? Nalsi. Nalsi. Do you remember how Insukin asks, How's the weather? Nalsi Oteo? Nalsi Oteo? Do you remember the word meaning to be clear? Makta. Makta. And the informal, polite, spoken way to say it's sunny? Do you remember how to say snow? Dun. Dun.
Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Morris. And it's raining. Respond to the question. Ready? Listen again and repeat. Let's try another. Imagine your in suk and it's sunny. Ready? Nalsi oteo. Malgayo. Listen again and repeat. Malgayo. Malgayo. Let's try one more. Imagine your mean gyu moon, and it's snowing. Ready? Nice. Oteo. Duni wayo. Listen again and repeat. Duni wayo. Duni wayo. Chuzonja. Kettle. Chuzonja. Chuzonja. Kettle. 주전자에 물을 끓이고 있어요. 있어요. I'm boiling water in the kettle. 주전자에 물을 끓이고 있어요. 냄비. Pot. 냄비. 냄비. Pot. 냄비가 너무 작아서 요리를 못하겠어요. I can't cook because the pot is too small. 냄비가 너무 작아서 요리를 못하겠어요. 개구리. Frog. 개구리. 개구리. Frog. 생물학 시간에 개구리를 해보았습니다. I detected a frog in biology class. 생물학 시간에 개구리를 해보았습니다. 비둘기 pigeon 비둘기 비둘기 pigeon 비둘기에게 먹이를 주지 마세요. Don't feed the pigeons. 비둘기에게 먹이를 주지 마세요. 여행 안내서 guidebook 여행 안내서 여행 안내서 guidebook 여행 안내서는 당신의 여행을 위해 유용한 정보를 줄 것입니다. A guidebook will give you helpful information for your trip. 여행 안내서는 당신의 여행을 위해 유용한 정보를 줄 것입니다. 입구 Entrance 입구 입구 entrance 
입구는 저기에요. The entrance is over there. 입구는 저기에요. 가이드 Tour guide 가이드 가이드 Tour guide 관광 가이드를 만났어요. I met the tour guide. 관광 가이드를 만났어요. 예약 Reservation 예약 예약 Reservation 예약하셨어요? Do you have a reservation? 예약하셨어요? 여권 Passport 여권 여권 Passport 작년에 여권을 갱신했어. I renewed my passport last year. 작년에 여권을 갱신했어. 컴퓨터 과학 Computer Science 컴퓨터 과학 컴퓨터 과학 Computer Science 컴퓨터 과학은 더 중요해지고 있습니다. Computer Science is becoming more important. 컴퓨터 과학은 더 중요해지고 있습니다. 수학 math 수학 수학 math 학교에서 내가 가장 좋아하는 과목은 수학이에요. My favorite subject in school is math. 학교에서 내가 가장 좋아하는 과목은 수학이에요. 느끼다 feel 느끼다 느끼다 feel 제가 느끼는 기분을 당신도 느끼고 있나요? Do you feel what I'm feeling? 제가 느끼는 기분을 당신도 느끼고 있나요? 그리다 Draw 그리다 그리다 Draw 부모님의 얼굴을 그리고 있습니다. I'm drawing my parents' face. 부모님의 얼굴을 그리고 있습니다. 계획 plan 계획 계획 plan 이번 금요일에 계획이 있어요? What's your plan for this Friday night? 이번 금요일에 계획이 있어요? 판매 sale 판매 
판매 세일 판매 부서가 회사를 성장으로 이끌고 있습니다. The sales department is driving company growth. 판매 부서가 회사를 성장으로 이끌고 있습니다. 쇼핑 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 어제 저는 여자친구와 함께 쇼핑을 했습니다. Yesterday, I went shopping with my girlfriends. 어제 저는 여자친구와 함께 쇼핑을 했습니다. 네 번째의 Fourth 네 번째의 네 번째의 Fourth 네 번째의 신호등에서 오른쪽으로 돈 다음 다섯 번째 모퉁이까지 직진하세요. Turn right at the fourth traffic signal. Go straight until the fifth corner. 네 번째의 신호등에서 오른쪽으로 돈 다음 다섯 번째 모퉁이까지 직진하세요. 다섯 번째의 fifth 다섯 번째의 다섯 번째의 fifth 다섯 번째의 생일 파티에는 무서운 광대가 있었습니다. At my fifth birthday party, there was a scary clown. 다섯 번째의 생일 파티에는 무서운 광대가 있었습니다. 여섯 번째 six 여섯 번째 여섯 번째 six 여섯 번째 생일에 교복을 선물 받았어요. I received school clothes for my sixth birthday. 여섯 번째 생일에 교복을 선물 받았어요. 일곱 번째 seventh 일곱 번째 일곱 번째 seventh 음력 일곱 번째 달의 일곱 번째 날은 중국의 발렌타인데이입니다. The seventh day of the seventh lunar month is Chinese Valentine's Day. 음력 일곱 번째의 달의 일곱 번째 날은 중국의 발렌타인데이입니다. 린스 conditional 린스 린스 conditional 좋은 린스는 머리카락을 볼륨 있게 해줍니다. A good conditional will take the tangles out of your hair. 좋은 린스는 머리카락을 볼륨 있게 해줍니다. 데오도란트 deodorant 데오도란트 데오도란트 deodorant 악취를 멀리하려면 씻은 후 데오도란트를 사용하세요. Put on deodorant after washing to avoid a door. 
악취를 멀리하려면 씻은 후 데오도란트를 사용하세요. 액상 비누 Liquid soap 액상 비누 액상 비누 Liquid soap 액상 비누 있어요? Do you have liquid soap? 액상 비누 있어요? 오리 Dog 오리 오리 Dog 요즘에 한국에서는 오리고기가 인기입니다. In Korea these days, duck meat is popular. 요즘에 한국에서는 오리고기가 인기입니다. 까마귀 crow 까마귀 까마귀 crow 한국 사람들은 까마귀를 불운의 상징이라고 생각합니다. Korean people think of crows as a symbol of bad luck. 한국 사람들은 까마귀를 불운의 상징이라고 생각합니다. 바퀴벌레 cockroach 바퀴벌레 바퀴벌레 cockroach 바퀴벌레는 여섯 개의 다리, 날개, 그리고 더듬이를 가지고 있습니다. A cockroach has six legs, wings, and antenna. 바퀴벌레는 여섯 개의 다리, 날개, 그리고 더듬이를 가지고 있습니다. 모기 mosquito 모기 모기 mosquito 모기약 뿌려야겠다 We have to spray some mosquito repellent 모기약 뿌려야겠다 건설 노동자 Construction worker. 건설 노동자. 건설 노동자. Construction worker. 건설 노동자가 나무를 재고 있습니다. The construction worker is measuring wood. 건설 노동자가 나무를 재고 있습니다. 주부 homemaker 주부 주부 homemaker 주부는 매우 가치 있는 일을 하지만 보통 월급을 받지 않습니다. Homemakers do very valuable work, but usually don't get a paycheck. 주부는 매우 가치 있는 일을 하지만 보통 월급을 받지 않습니다. 얼음 Ice 얼음 얼음 Ice 혹시 얼음 있어요? Do you have ice by any chance? 혹시 얼음 있어요? 역사 
history. 역사, 역사, history. 나은 미래를 만들기 위해 역사를 공부합니다. We study history to create a better future. 나은 미래를 만들기 위해 역사를 공부합니다. 지리학 Geography 지리학 지리학 Geography 그는 지리학을 전공하고 심리학을 부전공했습니다. He is a geography major with a minor in psychology. 그는 지리학을 전공하고 심리학을 부전공했습니다. 가게 store 가게 가게 store 백화점에 가면 신발 가게가 있을 거예요. If you go to a department store, there are shoe stores. 백화점에 가면 신발 가게가 있을 거예요. 시장 Market 시장 시장 Market 시장에는 많은 종류의 과일이 있습니다. They have many kinds of fruits in the market. 시장에는 많은 종류의 과일이 있습니다. 가격 price 가격 가격 price 가격을 몰라? You don't know the price? 가격을 몰라? 쿠폰 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 여기 50% 할인 쿠폰이 있으니 여기서 먹자. I have a coupon for 50% off. So let's eat there. 여기 50% 할인 쿠폰이 있으니 여기서 먹자. 통로 aisle 통로 통로 aisle 향신료와 양념은 통로 6번에 있습니다. Spice and seasonings are on aisle 6. 향신료와 양념은 통로 6번에 있습니다. 가방 bag 가방 가방 bag 가방이 돌처럼 무거워요. Your bag is heavy like a stone. 가방이 돌처럼 무거워요. 사진 photograph 사진 사진 photograph 그는 자신의 사진 중 하나의 라지 사이즈 프린트를 주문했다. 
he ordered a large size print of one of his photographs. 그는 자신의 사진 중 하나의 라지 사이즈 프린트를 주문했다. 소다 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 집에서 소다수를 만들어 먹기 시작했습니다. I started making soda at home. 집에서 소다수를 만들어 먹기 시작했습니다. 아홉 번째. Ninth. 아홉 번째. 아홉 번째. Ninth. 라마다는 이슬람 달력으로 아홉 번째 달입니다. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Muslim year. Ramadan은 이슬람 달력으로 아홉 번째 달입니다. 열 번째. Tenth. 열 번째. 열 번째. Tenth. 마침내 저는 열 번째의 시도 끝에 목표를 이루었습니다. I finally made a goal on my tenth attempt. 마침내 저는 열 번째의 시도 끝에 목표를 이루었습니다. 여덟 번째. Eighth. 여덟 번째. 여덟 번째. Eighth. 저는 여덟 번째 생일에 자전거를 선물 받았습니다. I wasn't given a new bicycle for my eighth birthday. 저는 여덟 번째 생일에 자전거를 선물 받았습니다. 면도기 Shaving razor 면도기 면도기 Shaving razor 일회용 면도기 Disposable shaving razor 일회용 면도기 수건 Washcloth 수건 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 Washcloth 소녀는 수건으로 얼굴을 닦고 있습니다. The boy is washing his face with a washcloth. 소녀는 수건으로 얼굴을 닦고 있습니다. Towel. 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 비치 타월 있어? Do you have a beach towel? 비치 타월 있어? 숟가락 spoon 숟가락 숟가락 spoon 숟가락을 땅에 떨어뜨렸어요. I dropped my spoon on the floor. 숟가락을 땅에 떨어뜨렸어요. 포크 fork 포크 포크 fork 포크는 없고 젓가락만 있어요. We don't have forks, but only chopsticks. 포크는 없고 젓가락만 있어요. Knife, 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 knife. 나이프를 건네 주시겠어요? Could you pass me the knife? 
나이프를 건네 주시겠어요? 접시 plate 접시 접시 plate 접시를 닦을 때 조심하세요. Please be careful when you wash the plates. 접시를 닦을 때 조심하세요. 벌 B 벌 벌 B 벌이 노란 꽃을 수분하고 있습니다. The bee is pollinating the yellow flower. 벌이 노란 꽃을 수분하고 있습니다. 개미 Ant 개미 개미 Ant 개미는 단 것을 좋아합니다. Ants like sweet food. 개미는 단 것을 좋아합니다. Bam. Snake. Bam. Bam. Snake. 바다 뱀이 산호초 근처에서 수영하고 있다. The sea snake is swimming near the coral reef. 바다 뱀이 산호초 근처에서 수영하고 있다. 우유 milk 우유 우유 milk 그는 매일 우유 세 병을 마신다. He drinks three bottles of milk every day. 그는 매일 우유 세 병을 마신다. 디자이너 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 많은 종류의 디자이너가 있지만 저는 패션 디자이너입니다. There are many kinds of designers, but I'm a fashion designer. 많은 종류의 디자이너가 있지만 저는 패션 디자이너입니다. 예술가 Artist 예술가 예술가 artist 예술가는 생각하는 방식이 달라요. An artist has a different way of thinking. 예술가는 생각하는 방식이 달라요. 군인 soldier soldier 군인 군인 소저 한국 군인들은 초코파이를 좋아해요. Korean soldiers love chocolate pie. 한국 군인들은 초코파이를 좋아해요. 사업가 entrepreneur 사업가 사업가 entrepreneur 사업가들은 그들의 아이디어로 세상을 바꿉니다. entrepreneurs change the world with their ideas. 사업가들은 그들의 아이디어로 세상을 바꿉니다. 단편 소설 short story 단편 소설 단편 소설 short story 
저는 단편 소설만 읽어요. I only read short stories. 저는 단편 소설만 읽어요. 폴더 folder 폴더 폴더 folder 서류를 폴더 안에 넣었어요. I put the documents in a folder. 서류를 폴더 안에 넣었어요. 프라이팬 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 프라이팬에 기름을 넣으세요. Put some oil on the frying pan. 프라이팬에 기름을 넣으세요. 도마 Cutting board 도마 도마 Cutting board 요리사는 도마 위에서 삶은 계란을 자르고 있습니다. The cook is cutting a hard boiled egg on the cutting board. 요리사는 도마 위에서 삶은 계란을 자르고 있습니다. 싱크대 sink 싱크대 싱크대 싱크 그릇은 전부 싱크대에 놓으세요. Please put all the dishes in the sink. 그릇은 전부 싱크대에 놓으세요. 그릇 Bowl. 그릇 그릇 bowl 밥그릇이 아주 큰데요? I think your rice bowl is very big. 밥그릇이 아주 큰데요? 출구 exit 출구 출구 exit 강남역 6번 출구에서 만나자 Let's meet at exit number 6 of Gangnam Station 강남역 6 6번 출구에서 만나자. 지도 map 지도 지도 map 지도 좀 주실래요? Could I get a map? 지도 좀 주실래요? 여행 가방 suitcase 여행 가방 여행 가방 suitcase 여행 가방 안에 귀중품을 두지 마세요. Do not leave valuables in your suitcase. 여행 가방 안에 귀중품을 두지 마세요. 관광객 Tourist 관광객 관광객 
tourist. 관광객입니까? Are you a tourist? 관광객입니까? 정치 Politics 정치 정치 Politics 저는 정치와 같이 격해질 수 있는 주제는 토론하지 않습니다. 저는 정치와 같이 격해질 수 있는 주제는 토론하지 않습니다. 생물학 biology 생물학 생물학 biology 저는 생물학 수업이 제일 좋아요. I like the biology class the best. 저는 생물학 수업이 제일 좋아요. 화학 chemistry 화학 화학 chemistry 화학 시간에는 공식을 많이 외워야 해요. We have to memorize a lot of formulas in the chemistry class. 화학 시간에는 공식을 많이 외워야 해요. 물리학 physics 물리학 물리학 physics 뉴턴의 법칙은 현대 물리학이 초석을 다졌다. Newton's law laid the groundwork for modern physics. Newton의 법칙은 현대 물리학의 초석을 다졌다. 경제학 Economics 경제학 경제학 Economics 이 대학의 경제학 강의가 훌륭합니다. In this university, the economics courses are excellent. 이 대학은 경제학 강의가 훌륭합니다. 노타 put 노타 노타 put 이 상자를 선반 맨 위에 놓아 주세요. Please put this box on the top shelf. 이 상자를 선반 맨 위에 놓아 주세요. 기억하다 Remember 기억하다 기억하다 Remember 그걸 아직 기억하다니 신기해요. It's amazing that you still remember it. 그걸 아직 기억하다니 신기해요. 잡다 hold 잡다 잡다 hold 화병을 한 손으로 잡는 것은 위험해요. 
It's dangerous to hold a vase with one hand. 화병을 한 손으로 잡는 것은 위험해요. 쇼핑 카트 쇼핑 카트 쇼핑 카트 쇼핑 카트 쇼핑 카트 쇼핑 카트가 비어 있어요. The shopping cart is empty. 쇼핑 카트가 비어 있어요. 비닐 봉지 plastic bag 비닐 봉지 비닐 봉지 plastic bag 식료품을 살 때에는 비닐 봉지 대신에 천 가방을 사용하세요. When grocery shopping, use cloth bags instead of plastic bags. 식료품을 살 때에는 비닐 봉지 대신에 천 가방을 사용하세요. Comedy. 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 웃는 것을 좋아해서 코미디를 보는 것을 좋아합니다. I love to watch comedy because I love to laugh. 웃는 것을 좋아해서 코미디를 보는 것을 좋아합니다. 소설 novel 소설 소설 novel 어떤 소설 좋아하세요? What type of novel do you like? 어떤 소설 좋아하세요? Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay. Today's topic is, are you focusing on only one skill? The seven skills you'll need for language mastery. Are you the type of language learner that focuses on only one skill? Like only speaking or only doing translation exercises? Then you may eventually realize that your language isn't progressing as fast as you'd like. So in today's episode, you'll learn, one, why most language learners plateau, two, the seven skills you'll need for language mastery, and three, how to practice the seven skills with art program. But first, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Using Transportation Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to get around in your target language? You'll be able to. This new cheat sheet teaches you the must-know vocabulary and phrases, like where can I buy a ticket, how much is the train pass, and much more. Second, the ultimate guide to beginner language ebook. Want a free way to boost your vocabulary? With this new PDF ebook, you'll master over 500 beginner words and phrases, more than enough to start speaking the language with confidence. Third, can you talk about holiday accommodations in your target language? Learn how to say hotel, guest house, inn, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, most common ways to say sorry. Do you know all the ways to apologize in your target language? This one minute lesson will get them in your head, guaranteed. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. Are you focusing on only one skill? The seven skills you'll need for language mastery. 
part one, why most language learners plateau. If you observe other language learners, you'll notice that many learners just want to speak and understand the language. And as a result, they focus only on speaking and nothing else. Then you have learners who like to start with reading, so they spend most of their time there. And then there are learners who do translation games and spend most of their time there. All of these are good ways to approach a language. But what happens is, learners that focus on speaking seem to speak well, but if you go outside of a topic they've practiced, they'll start struggling. Learners that spend most of their time reading are only good at reading and then wonder why they can't speak. And learners that have been playing translation games are good at translating, but don't understand real life speech. The point is, you'll be unbalanced. If you focus on one skill and skip out on the rest, you'll never become truly fluent, or you'll be able to speak on a few topics you know about, but that's it. But that's not enough for conversational fluency. So if you want to avoid this trap and become truly fluent, you should focus on seven language skills. Speaking, listening, reading, writing, grammar, vocabulary, and culture. Part two, the seven skills you'll need for language mastery. Now, someone might ask, what's the point of reading if I just want to speak the language? The fact is, all skills complement and improve one another. For example, if you're practicing reading, you naturally pick up new words and grammar rules along the way, which will help you with speaking, because if you want to speak more, you'll need to know more words and grammar rules. Also, reading out loud can help with speaking. If you're learning grammar, this will help you with speaking, listening, reading, and writing because you'll need to be able to speak and use those grammar rules, understand them in written information and in speech, and use it in writing. With writing, again, you're reinforcing words and grammar rules that you'll also need for listening, speaking, and reading. With listening, there can be speaking involved if you shadow what you hear. You can also pick up words and reinforce grammar points as you listen. Then you can use those same words and grammar rules later on during speaking practice all skills feed into each other. And with culture? With culture, you need things to talk about with native speakers, and culture is a great topic. Plus, in certain languages and cultures, you'll need to speak more politely to people who are older or more senior to you. So this involves learning vocabulary and grammar. There's also one more bonus to practicing all seven language skills. Learning all seven skills will actually help you learn the language much faster. Mixing up skills like this is called interleaving. Interleaving is a proven learning tactic where you use different forms of practice to master something. For example, if you're learning vocabulary, you can read it, then say it, write it out, study with flashcards, listen to a native speaker say it, and doing so will help you remember better instead of just reading the word five times and hoping it sticks. It probably won't. So let's recap. You should focus on the seven skills of language learning because one, you avoid being imbalanced, two, all of these skills feed into each other and improve your overall language, and three, it'll help you learn faster. Part three, how you practice the seven skills with our program. Now, if you wanna take your language to the next level, you'll need to incorporate all seven skills in your study routine, speaking, reading, writing, listening, vocab, grammar, and culture. So here's how you can practice each skill with our learning program. One of the most unique things about our program is that you can actually practice all seven skills with it. First, for speaking, shadow the conversations in our lesson dialogues. And if that's too hard, read the dialogues out loud and go slowly at your own pace. Use our voice recording tool to practice saying each line of the conversation. And you can send recordings of yourself to your Premium Plus teacher. For listening, simply take our lessons and listen to the conversations. You can also download the dialogue tracks and review the conversations without the translations. Also, be sure to take our listening comprehension lessons. For reading, listen to the audio and follow along with the lesson notes or transcript so that you don't miss a single word. You can also practice reading with our extensive reading books. For writing, Write out the lesson dialogues and write out the words, phrases, and grammar rules that you come across. You can also try and create your own sample sentences, and you can send them to your Premium Plus teacher for corrections. For grammar, you'll come across grammar rules in our lessons. 
Write the rules down, try and create your own sentences, and keep taking the lessons and keep on reading. For vocabulary, use our spaced repetition flashcards to master the words. And of course, write them down in a notebook, say them out loud, and save them in the word bank so you can come back to them to review later. And for culture, take our lessons. You'll pick up culture tips along the way. Check out our culture class lessons as well. You can do one skill a day, or you can also try all of them in one study session. Listen to the lesson. Repeat what you hear for speaking practice. Write out the dialogue. Review the vocabulary with the slideshow. Practice the grammar rules and note down the cultural tips. Or focus on two skills a day. Pair up listening and speaking. The next day, do reading and writing. And then vocabulary and grammar. And then culture. And again, you can study all seven of these skills with our program. So if you haven't done so yet, be sure to click the link below and sign up for a free lifetime account. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to write 1,000 words of your target language in five minutes a day with the Daily Dose Diary. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. One of the best ways to learn a language is with a native speaker. But what if you can't afford to take a class? Or what if you're too busy to learn on someone else's schedule? That's why with our program, you get access to your own teacher with a study tool called My Teacher. So you can learn with your own teacher at your own pace, anywhere, anytime. How does my teacher work? You'll discover more in just a second. But first, to get access to our learning program and your very own teacher, click the link in the description and sign up for a Premium Plus account right now. What is my teacher? My teacher is a messenger tool that gives you access to your very own on-site teacher. You'll find it in the bottom right corner of your screen. And if you're on the app, just tap on the my teacher icon at the bottom. So. How do you take advantage of this powerful language tool? 1. Get your language assessed. With language schools, you take a level check test on the first day. And the same thing happens here. The moment you become a Premium Plus member, you'll take an assessment test so that your teacher can determine your level, understand your weak points, and design a personalized learning plan. You'll find the link to the test inside My Teacher. Once you're done with the test, 2. Interact with your teacher, ask questions, and get feedback. Getting feedback and corrections is one of the fastest ways to improve. So open My Teacher and start interacting with your teacher. The first thing we ask you to do is to send a self-introduction in your target language as a way to get started. And if you're not sure how, just ask your teacher. You can also ask them language questions, send your writing, practice conversations, and they'll also send you feedback and corrections. You can do this all at your own pace, on any device. You can also... 3. Send recordings of yourself speaking the language. Just record yourself and send an audio file or video over, and get feedback from your teacher on your accent, pronunciation, and how to express yourself naturally, like a native speaker. You can also take a picture of your writing for feedback. 4. Improve your language skills nonstop with weekly assignments. Your teacher will also send you weekly assignments to test you on what you've learned and improve your language skills. Assignments cover speaking, listening, reading, and writing. So if you want to learn with your very own teacher at your own pace, then click the link in the description to sign up now and become a Premium Plus plan member today. You unlock our complete learning program, plus your very own teacher. Click the link in the description to sign up now. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the going to the airport conversation cheat sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn words and phrases like here's my passport, boarding pass, and much more. Download it for free on the inside. 
Second, the slang words and phrases PDF ebook. Do you know any slang in your target language? If not, download this free ebook and master all the must know slang across 10 chapters. Third, 30 romance and love related words and phrases. You'll learn words and phrases like date, flirt, and breakup with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, can you talk about Halloween in your target language? With this quick one minute lesson, you'll learn must know Halloween words like vampire, trick or treat, and more. Fifth, want the language learning app that actually gets you speaking? Download Innovative Language 101 for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. You'll unlock hundreds of bite-sized audio and video lessons made by real teachers and start speaking in minutes. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get a big 35% off premium or premium plus with the monster sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. This is Sasha Morris. And she meets her neighbor, Do Chun Cho, for the first time in the lobby of their building. Do Chun introduces himself by saying, Hello, I'm Do Chun Cho. 안녕하세요. 저는 조도준이에요. Sasha doesn't catch his name and asks for clarification. Listen to the conversation and focus on Sasha's request. Note, Sasha uses informal, polite Korean. Ready? 안녕하세요. 저는 조도준이에요. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해 주세요. 천천히 말해 주세요. 저는 조도준이에요. Once more with the English translation. 안녕하세요. 저는 조도준이에요. Hello, I'm Dojun Jo. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해 주세요. 천천히 말해 주세요. Sorry, but please say it one more time. Please say it slowly. 저는 조도준이에요. I'm Dojun Jo. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Do Chun introduces himself? Hello, I'm Do Chun Jo. First is 안녕하세요. Hello. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Next is 저는 조도준이에요. First is 저 meaning I. 저 저. This is the humble word for I. Next is 는 the topic marking particle. 는 Dun. It marks I as the topic of the sentence. Think of it like as for, in the expression as for me. Note, there are two forms of the topic marking particle. Dun. Follows words that end in a vowel, as in Ta. Together it's Ta-nun. As for me. Ta-nun. Next is Do Jun Cho's full name. Notice the name order. First is his family name. Cho. 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 Followed by his first name. Do Jun. Do Jun. Do Jun. Do Jun. Together. Cho Do Jun. In Korean, the order is family name first, followed by given names. At last is Ieyu. Here it's like the am in I am. Ieyu. 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 Is from Ida. Meaning to be. Ida. 
이다 acts like a verb but is technically a particle. Note 이에요 follows words that end in a consonant like 도준 Altogether, it's 안녕하세요. 저는 조도준이에요. Literally, hello, as for me, 조도준, I am. But it translates as, hello, I'm 도준 조. 안녕하세요. 저는 조도준이에요. Sasha can't catch his name. Do you remember how she says, sorry, but please say it one more time? Please say it slowly. First is 죄송하지만 Literally, sorry but and can translate as I'm sorry. 죄송하지만 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 is from the adjective 죄송하다 meaning sorry in a polite and honorific way in this case 죄송하다 here sasha intends to ask do chun to say his name again so she starts with 죄송하지만 sorry but or, I'm sorry, before asking him to do so. Next is, 한번더 말해주세요. Meaning, please say it one more time. 한번더 말해주세요. 한번더 말해주세요. This expression has several parts. First is, 한번 meaning one time in this context. 한 번, 한, 1, 한, 한, and 번, time, 번, 번. After this is 더, more, 더, 더. Together, 한번더 Literally, one time more. But it translates as, one more time. 한번더 Last is the phrase, 말해주세요. Please say it. 말해주세요. 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 Is from the verb, 말하다. Meaning to say. 말하다. Altogether, it's. 한번더 말해주세요. Literally meaning, one time more, say please. But it translates as, please say it one more time. 한번더 말해주세요. The next sentence is. 천천히 말해주세요. Please say it slowly. First, 천천히, slowly. 천천히, 천천히. Next is, 말해주세요. Please say it. 말해주세요. Together, it's 천천히 말해주세요. Literally meaning, slowly say it, please. But it translates as, please say it slowly. 천천히 말해주세요. Finally, do you remember how Do Chun repeats, I'm Do Chun Jo? Hint, you've heard it before. 저는 조도준이에요. Let's look at the expressions once more. Listen and repeat. 죄송하지만 죄송하지만 한번더 말해주세요. 한번더 말해주세요. 죄송하지만 
한번더 말해주세요. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해주세요. 죄송하지만 천천히 말해주세요. 죄송하지만 천천히 말해주세요. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해주세요. 천천히 말해주세요. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해주세요. 천천히 말해주세요. 적어주세요. 적어주세요. 음, 잘 모르겠어요. 잘 모르겠어요. Did you notice the new expressions I used? Please write it down. Is from the verb. 적다. Meaning to write down. 적다. Write down. Next is. 잘 모르겠어요. Literally, well, I don't know, but translates as, I don't understand. 잘 모르겠어요. 잘 모르겠어요. First is, 잘. Meaning, well. 잘. Next is, 모르겠어요. From the verb, 모르다, meaning to not know. 모르다. For now, please remember. 적어주세요. And 잘 모르겠어요. As set phrases. 적어주세요. Please write it down. 적어주세요. 적어주세요. 잘 모르겠어요. I don't understand. 잘 모르겠어요. 잘 모르겠어요. 잘 모르겠어요. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say, please say it? Marejuseo. Marejuseo. And how to say, one more time? 한번 더, 한번 더. Do you remember how to say sorry, but? 죄송하지만, 죄송하지만. Do you remember how Sasha says sorry, but please say one more time? 죄송하지만 한번더 말해 주세요. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해 주세요. Do you remember how to say slowly? 천천히 천천히 Do you remember how Sasha says Please say it slowly. 천천히 말해 주세요. 천천히 말해 주세요.
Do you remember how to say hello? 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. And how Dong Jun Jo introduces himself? 안녕하세요. 저는 조도준이에요. 안녕하세요. 저는 조도준이에요. Do you remember how to say please write it down? 적어 주세요. 적어 주세요. 안녕하세요. 저는 조도준이에요. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해 주세요. Listen again and repeat. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해 주세요. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해 주세요. Let's try another. Imagine your Do Chun Cho. Politely ask Karen Morris to say it one more time, and say it slowly. Ready? 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 카렌이에요. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해 주세요. 천천히 말해 주세요. Listen again and repeat. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해 주세요. 천천히 말해 주세요. 죄송하지만 한번더 말해 주세요. 천천히 말해 주세요. Let's try one more. Imagine your Dojun Cho. Start with sorry and ask Sasha Morris to please write it down. Ready? 안녕하세요. 저는 모리스 사샤예요. 죄송하지만 적어 주세요. Listen again and repeat. 죄송하지만 적어 주세요. 죄송하지만 적어 주세요. 코코아. 코코아. 코코아, 코코아, 코코아. 초콜릿은 카카오 나무의 코코아 씨로 만듭니다. Chocolate is made from the cocoa seed of the cacao tree. 초콜릿은 카카오 나무의 코코아 씨로 만듭니다. 청량 음료, soft drink. 청량 음료, 청량 음료, soft drink. 청량 음료는 일반적으로 알코올이 함유되어 있지 않고 보통 탄산이 함유되어 시원하게 마십니다. Soft drinks don't contain alcohol. And are usually carbonated and served cold. 
청량 음료는 일반적으로 알코올이 함유되어 있지 않고 보통 탄산이 함유되어 시원하게 마십니다. 주스 juice 주스 주스 juice 저는 아침 식사와 함께 오렌지 주스를 그리고 점심 식사와 함께 사과 주스를 마십니다. I drink orange juice with breakfast and apple juice with lunch. 저는 아침 식사와 함께 오렌지 주스를 그리고 점심 식사와 함께 사과 주스를 마십니다. 책장 bookshelf 책장 책장 bookshelf 책장은 책으로 가득 찼습니다. The bookshelf is full of books. 책장은 책으로 가득 찼습니다. 침대 bed 침대 침대 bed 숙제는 침대 밑에 숨겼어. I hid my homework under my bed. 숙제는 침대 밑에 숨겼어. 거울 mirror 거울 거울 mirror 저는 매일 아침 거울을 보는 것이 싫습니다. I hate to look into the mirror every morning. 저는 매일 아침 거울을 보는 것이 싫습니다. 서랍장 dresser 서랍장 서랍장 dresser 나무 서랍장은 골동품입니다. The wooden dresser is an antique. 나무 서랍장은 골동품입니다. 쓸다 sweep 쓸다 쓸다 sweep 여자가 밖을 쓸고 있다. The woman sweeps outside. 여자가 밖을 쓸고 있다. 치우다. Put away. 치우다. 치우다. Put away. 장난감을 치워. Put away your toys. 장난감을 치워. 대걸레로 닦다. Mop. 대걸레로 닦다. 대걸레로 닦다. Mop. 주스를 흘렸으니 대걸레로 닦을게요. I spill the juice so I'll mop the floor. 주스를 흘렸으니 대걸레로 닦을게요. Waitress. 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 Waitress가 컵이 올려진 쟁반을 들고 있다. The waitress is holding a tray with glasses. Waitress가 컵이 올려진 쟁반을 들고 있다. 화씨 Fahrenheit 화씨 화씨 Fahrenheit 
물은 화씨 32도에서 옵니다. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. 물은 화씨 32도에서 옵니다. 온도 Temperature 온도 온도 Temperature 겨울은 가장 짧은 낮과 가장 낮은 온도를 가진 계절입니다. Winter is the season of shortest days and the coldest temperatures. 겨울은 가장 짧은 낮과 가장 낮은 온도를 가진 계절입니다. 습한 Humid 습한 습한 Humid 8월은 습해요. It's humid in August. 8월은 습해요. 바람이 부는 Windy 바람이 부는 바람이 부는 Windy 저는 비가 오는 날도 바람이 부는 날도 신문을 배달해야 합니다. I have to deliver newspapers on rainy days and windy days. 저는 비가 오는 날도 바람이 부는 날도 신문을 배달해야 합니다. 놀이터 Playground 놀이터 놀이터 Playground 놀이터에 있는 그네와 미끄럼틀은 항상 줄을 서야 합니다. At the playground, there is always a line for the swings and slides. 놀이터에 있는 그네와 미끄럼틀은 항상 줄을 서야 합니다. 수영장 Pool 수영장 수영장 pool 우리는 여름에 매일 공용 수영장에서 수영합니다. We swim at the public pool every day in the summer. 우리는 여름에 매일 공용 수영장에서 수영합니다. 테니스 tennis 테니스 테니스 tennis 여자가 테니스를 치고 있습니다. The woman is playing tennis. 여자가 테니스를 치고 있습니다. 농구 basketball 농구 농구 basketball 농구 선수들은 대부분 키가 큽니다. Most basketball players are tall. 농구 선수들은 대부분 키가 큽니다. meter liter 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 이 병은 콜라 2리터를 담고 있습니다. The bottle contains 2 liters of cola. 이 병은 콜라 2리터를 담고 있습니다. 밥 rice 밥 밥 rice 밥그릇이 아주 큰데요? 
I think your rice bowl is very big. 밥 그릇이 아주 큰데요. 빵. Bread. 빵. 빵. Bread. 매주 일요일 아침 우리는 빵집에서 빵, 케이크, 그리고 쿠키를 삽니다. Every Sunday morning, we buy bread, cake, and cookies at the bakery. 매주 일요일 아침 우리는 빵집에서 빵, 케이크, 그리고 쿠키를 삽니다. 계란 egg 계란 계란 egg 요리사가 프라이팬에 계란 프라이를 한다. The cook fries is an egg with a frying pan. The cook fries an egg with a frying pan. 요리사가 프라이팬에 계란 프라이를 한다. 면 누로 면 면, 누로 라면은 밀로 만들었습니다. Ramen noodles are made out of wheat. 라면은 밀로 만들었습니다. 알람 시계 Alarm clock 알람 시계 알람 시계 Alarm clock 알람 시계는 새벽 5시로 맞춰져 있습니다. The alarm clock is set for 5 a.m. 알람 시계는 새벽 5시로 맞춰져 있습니다. 문 door 문 문, door 남자는 열쇠로 차 문을 열고 있습니다. The man is unlocking the car door with the key. 남자는 열쇠로 차 문을 열고 있습니다. 리모컨 Remote control 리모컨 리모컨 Remote control 남자는 리모컨으로 텔레비전을 끄고 있습니다. The man is turning off the TV with the remote control. 남자는 리모컨으로 텔레비전을 끄고 있습니다. 닦다 Wipe 닦다 닦다 Wipe 바닥을 닦는 것을 잊지 마세요. Don't forget to wipe the floor. 바닥을 닦는 것을 잊지 마세요. Menu. 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 손님은 메뉴를 보고 있습니다. The customer is looking at the menu. 손님은 메뉴를 보고 있습니다. 잡지 magazine 잡지 잡지 magazine 이 서점에는 잡지가 정말 많아서 좋아요. 
I really like this bookstore because it has so many magazines. 이 서점에는 잡지가 정말 많아서 좋아요. 오디오북 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 통근하는 동안 저는 오디오북을 듣습니다. I listen to audiobooks during my commute to work. 통근하는 동안 저는 오디오북을 듣습니다. 비디오 게임 비디오 게임 비디오 게임 비디오 게임 비디오 게임 이번 주말에 새 비디오 게임을 살 것입니다. I'm going to buy a new video game this weekend. 이번 주말에 새 비디오 게임을 살 것입니다. 저렴한 cheap 저렴한 저렴한 cheap 저는 저렴한 신발을 찾고 있습니다. I'm looking for a cheap pair of shoes. 저는 저렴한 신발을 찾고 있습니다. 비싼 expensive 비싼 비싼 expensive 새 기계는 비싼 것 같아요. I think the new equipment is very expensive. I think the new equipment is expensive. 새 기계는 비싼 것 같아요. 친절한 kind 친절한 친절한 kind 어르신에게 꽃을 주는 것은 친절한 행동입니다. Giving the elderly woman flowers is a kind act. 어르신에게 꽃을 주는 것은 친절한 행동입니다. 무서운 scary 무서운 무서운 scary 제 다섯 번째 생일 파티에는 무서운 광대가 있었습니다. At my fifth birthday party, there was a scary clown. 제 다섯 번째 생일 파티에는 무서운 광대가 있었습니다. 편하게 해주는 relaxing 편하게 해주는 편하게 해주는 relaxing 음악은 마음을 편안하게 해줘요. Music is relaxing 음악은 마음을 편안하게 해줘요. 파운드 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 1kg은 대략 2.2파운드입니다. 1kg is approximately 2.2pounds. 1kg은 대략 2.2파운드입니다. 마일 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 여기에서 저기까지는 대략 1마일 정도입니다. The distance between here and there is approximately a mile. 
여기에서저기까지는대략1마일정도입니다피트 foot, 피트피트 foot. 밀피트에는12인치가있습니다 There are 12 inches in a foot. 일피트에는12인치가있습니다병 illness. 병병 illness. 병으로인해저는몸무게가줄었습니다 I lost a lot of weight because of the illness. 병으로인해저는몸무게가줄었습니다감기 cold. 감기감기 cold. 감기에걸렸어요 I caught a cold. 감기에걸렸어요부상 injury. 부상부상 injury. 차사고는부상의주요요인입니다 Car accidents are a leading cause of injury. 차사고는부상의주요요인입니다약 medicine. 약약 medicine. 의사는위통을위한약을주었습니다 The doctor gave me medicine for stomach pain. 의사는위통을위한약을주었습니다통증 pain. 통증통증 pain. 여자는통증을느끼고있습니다 The woman is in pain. 여자는통증을느끼고있습니다열 Fever. 열열 Fever. 여자가열이있습니다 The woman has a fever. 여자가열이있습니다창문 Window. 창문창문 Window. 남자는창문을닫고있습니다 The man is closing the window. 남자는창문을닫고있습니다 Alcohol. 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 혈액검사는그의혈중알코올수치가아주높은것을찾았습니다 The blood test found his blood alcohol level was very high. 혈액검사는
그의 혈중 알코올 수치가 아주 높은 것을 찾았습니다. 식사 meal 식사 식사 meal 여자가 식사를 준비했다. The woman prepared a meal. 여자가 식사를 준비했다. 안개 fog 안개 안개 fog 오늘 안개가 심해요. We have heavy fog today. 오늘 안개가 심해요. 우박 hail 우박 우박 hail 우박이 떨어지고 있습니다. hail is falling 우박이 떨어지고 있습니다. 뇌우 thunderstorm 뇌우 뇌우 thunderstorm 뇌우를 조심하세요. watch out for the thunderstorm 뇌우를 조심하세요. 수족관 aquarium 수족관 수족관 aquarium 저는 수족관의 물고기가 헤엄치는 모습을 보는 것을 좋아합니다. I love to watch all the fish swim at the aquarium. 저는 수족관의 물고기가 헤엄치는 모습을 보는 것을 좋아합니다. 축구 soccer 축구 축구 soccer 축구는 세계에서 가장 인기 있는 스포츠입니다. Soccer is the world's most popular sport. 축구는 세계에서 가장 인기 있는 스포츠입니다. 동물원 Zoo 동물원 동물원 Zoo 집 근처 동물원에는 중국에서 온 자이언트 판다가 있습니다. The zoo near our house has a giant panda from China. 집 근처 동물원에는 중국에서 온 자이언트 판다가 있습니다. 요금 fair 요금 요금 Fair. 버스 요금은 얼마입니까? How much is the bus fare? 버스 요금은 얼마입니까? 버스 정류장 Bus stop 버스 정류장 버스 정류장 bus stop 여자가 버스 정류장에서 기다리고 있습니다. The women are waiting at the bus stop. 여자가 버스 정류장에서 기다리고 있습니다. 그램 gram 그램 그램 
사과는 157g입니다. The apple weighs 157g. 사과는 157g입니다. 미터 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 그것의 촉수의 길이는 2미터입니다. Its tentacles are 2 meters long. 그것의 촉수의 길이는 2미터입니다. 킬로미터 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 모스크바와 상트페테르부르크 사이의 거리는 700킬로미터입니다. The distance between Moscow and St. Petersburg is 700 kilometers. 모스크바와 상트페테르부르크 사이의 거리는 700km입니다. 두통 headache 두통 두통 headache 두통이 있어서 그러는데 볼륨 좀 줄여 주세요. Please turn down the volume. I have a headache. 두통이 있어서 그러는데 볼륨 좀 줄여 주세요. 설사 diarrhea 설사 설사 diarrhea 이 약은 설사를 멈추게 할 것입니다. This medicine will stop the diarrhea. 이 약은 설사를 멈추게 할 것입니다. 증상 symptom 증상 증상 symptom 증상이 어떠세요? What are your symptoms? 증상이 어떠세요? 복통 stomach ache 복통 복통 stomach ache 어제 저는 심한 복통이 있었습니다. Yesterday I had a bad stomach ache. 어제 저는 심한 복통이 있었습니다. 청소하다. Clean. 청소하다. 청소하다. clean 방 청소했어요? Did you clean your room? 방 청소했어요? 말리다 dry 말리다 말리다 dry 머리카락 먼저 말려요. dry your hair first. 머리카락 먼저 말려요. 먼지 dust 먼지 먼지 dust 
여자가 천으로 먼지를 닦고 있습니다. The woman is dusting with a dust cloth. 여자가 천으로 먼지를 닦고 있습니다. 진공청소기로 청소하다. Vacuum. 진공청소기로 청소하다. 진공청소기로 청소하다. Vacuum. 손님들이 오기 전에 진공청소기로 청소해야 해요. I have to vacuum the hallway before the guests come. 손님들이 오기 전에 진공청소기로 청소해야 해요. 교차로 intersection 교차로 교차로 intersection 중심가의 교차로에서 돈 다음 첫 번째 길입니다. Turn at the intersection of Main Street and First Avenue. 중심가의 교차로에서 돈 다음 첫 번째 길입니다. 고속도로 Highway 고속도로 고속도로 Highway 우리가 고속도로로 가면 약 40분 정도 걸릴 것입니다. If we take the highway, it will take about 40 minutes. 우리가 고속도로로 가면 약 40분 정도 걸릴 것입니다. 길 road 길, 길, road. 그것은 매우 긴 길이었어요. It was a long road. 그것은 매우 긴 길이었어요. 거리, street. 거리 거리 street 그 거리의 양쪽에 가로수가 서 있다. There are trees on either side of the street. 그 거리의 양쪽에 가로수가 서 있다. 흥미로운 interesting 흥미로운 흥미로운 interesting 여자가 흥미로운 이야기를 듣고 있습니다. The woman is listening to an interesting story. 여자가 흥미로운 이야기를 듣고 있습니다. 심술 굳은 mean 심술 굳은 심술 굳은 mean 심술 굳은 여자는 아이들에게 소리를 질렀습니다. The mean woman yelled at the children. 심술 굳은 여자는 아이들에게 소리를 질렀습니다. 지루해하는 bored. 지루해하는 지루해하는 bored. 지루해하는 아버지는 집에 갈 준비가 되었습니다. 
Poor father is ready to go home. 지루해하는 아버지는 집에 갈 준비가 되었습니다. 700 700 700 700 700 북극곰은 최고 700kg까지 나가요. Polar bears can weight up to 700 kilograms. 북극곰은 최고 700kg까지 나가요. 800 800 800 800 800 그 밭은 800 헥타르입니다. The field is 800 hectares. 그 밭은 800 헥타르입니다. 200 200 200 200 200 우리는 여기에 200권 이상의 책을 가지고 있습니다. We have over 200 books here. 우리는 여기에 200권 이상의 책을 가지고 있습니다. 300 300 300 300 300. 이 학교에는 300명의 학생이 있습니다. This school has 300 students. 이 학교에는 300명의 학생이 있습니다. 600 600 600 600 600 6 곱하기 100은 600입니다. 6 times 100 equals 600 6 곱하기 100은 600입니다. 내놓다 take out 내놓다 내놓다 take out 쓰레기를 내놓아 줄래? Can you take out the trash please? 쓰레기를 내놓아 줄래? Waiter, 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 waiter. 웨이터는 room service를 하고 있습니다. The waiter is delivering room service. 웨이터는 룸 서비스를 하고 있습니다. 일기 예보 weather report 일기 예보 일기 예보 weather report 내일 일기 예보는 아침에는 흐리지만 오후에는 맑아질 것입니다. The weather forecast for tomorrow is cloudy in the morning, but sunny in the afternoon. 내일 일기 예보는 아침에는 흐리지만 오후에는 맑아질 것입니다. 섭씨 Celsius 섭씨 섭씨 
Celsius. 오늘의 온도는 섭씨 30도입니다. Today's temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. 오늘의 온도는 섭씨 30도입니다. Show 프로그램. TV show. Show 프로그램. Show 프로그램. TV show. 그녀가 가장 좋아하는 쇼 프로그램은 오늘 밤에 합니다. Her favorite TV show is on tonight. 그녀가 가장 좋아하는 쇼 프로그램은 오늘 밤에 합니다. Jogging. 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 Jogging을 시작하고부터 3kg를 뺐습니다. I've lost 3 kilograms since I started jogging. Jogging을 시작하고부터 3kg를 뺐습니다. Fast food. Fast food. Fast food. Fast food. Fast food. 급할 때는 fast food가 좋은 선택이 될수 있습니다. Fast food can be a good option when you are in a hurry. 급할 때는 fast food가 좋은 선택이 될수 있습니다. 공원 park 공원 공원 park 부부가 공원에서 걸어가고 있습니다. The couple is walking in the park. 부부가 공원에서 걸어가고 있습니다. 신호등 Traffic light 신호등 신호등 Traffic light 심한 폭풍이 신호등을 고장 냈습니다. The severe storm damaged the traffic light. 심한 폭풍이 신호등을 고장 냈습니다. 표지판 sign 표지판 표지판 sign 정지 표지판을 보면 멈춰야 합니다. Stop when you see the stop sign. 정지 표지판을 보면 멈춰야 합니다. 지하철 Subway 지하철 지하철 Subway 저는 사무실에 지하철로 갑니다. I take the subway to the office. 저는 사무실에 지하철로 갑니다. 기차역 Train station 기차역 기차역 Train station 기차는 기차역에 있습니다. The train is at the train station. 기차는 기차역에 있습니다. 500 
five hundred. 五百五百 five hundred. 五百万만주세요 Please just give me five hundred won. 오백원만주세요구백구십구 nine hundred ninety nine. 구백구십구구백구십구 nine hundred ninety nine. 우리는이벤트를위해의자구백구십구개를샀습니다 We bought nine hundred ninety nine chairs for the event. 우리는이벤트를위해의자구백구십구개를샀습니다백일 one hundred one. 백일백일 one hundred one. 수학상급반은백일호교실입니다 Advanced Mathematics is in class one hundred one. 수학상급반은백일호교실입니다사백 Four hundred. 사백사백 Four hundred. 책은사백페이지정도의두께였습니다 The book was four hundred pages thick. 책은사백페이지정도의두께였습니다구백 nine hundred. 구백구백 nine hundred. 그앤티크수전은구백년된것입니다 The antique spoon was nine hundred years old. 그앤티크수전은구백년된것입니다인치 entry. 인치인치 entry. 저는방금사십인치평면스크린텔레비전을샀습니다 I just bought a forty inches flat screen television. 저는방금사십인치평면스크린텔레비전을샀습니다킬로그램킬로그램킬로그램킬로그램킬로그램일킬로그램은천그램입니다 One kilogram is one thousand grams. 일킬로그램은천그램입니다센티미터 centimeter. 센티미터센티미터 centimeter. 쌓여있는동전은거의팔센티미터높이입니다 The stacked coins measure almost eight centimeters. 쌓여있는동전은거의팔센티미터높이입니다 Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. 
So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to get a return on your language learning investment. Language learning is an investment, but what if you're learning but not seeing any returns or results? And do you even know if you're getting any results at all? In this episode, you'll discover one, why language learners fail to see results and why they fail, two, why you need to track your language learning sessions, and three, how to track your results. But first, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Going to the Airport Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn words and phrases like, here's my passport, boarding pass, and much more. Download it for free on the inside. Second, the Slang Words and Phrases PDF eBook. Do you know any slang in your target language? If not, download this free eBook and master all the must-know slang across 10 chapters. Third, 30 romance and love-related words and phrases. You'll learn words and phrases like date, flirt, and breakup with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, can you talk about Halloween in your target language? With this quick one-minute lesson, you'll learn must-know Halloween words like vampire, trick-or-treat, and more. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to get a return on your language learning investment. Part one, one of the biggest reasons why people fail. The first big reason people fail with language learning is because they set big, vague goals, like I wanna be fluent. The problem with these goals is you don't know how you'll ever go from where you are now to achieving fluency. It's too vague of a goal. But the second big reason is lack of time. People fail with language learning because they don't put in the time. And language learning is a function of time. The more you put in, the better you get. You can also think of learning a language like a gym. You get out what you put in. If you buy a dumbbell and do nothing, nothing happens. It can do great things for you, but it won't work for you until you pick it up and curl it a few times. If you put in one hour a day, you get results. If you put in 10 minutes a day, you get results. But if you put in zero, you get zero results. And you can't learn a language that way. So here's a question for you. How much time do you put into your language learning on a daily basis? Leave a comment. If you start putting in consistent time, you can also start expecting a return on your time. And this brings us to the second part. Part two, why you need to track your language learning sessions. In the first part, we talked about just putting in enough time. That's the first important step to take. But where should you put in your time? For example, you can put in 10 minutes and use an app to do translation exercises. You can put in 10 minutes and read a textbook or review a word list for 10 minutes. In all these examples, you can put in an equal amount of time, but the results you get will be different. And that's because different methods give you different results and benefits. Using an app may help you remember a few words. Reading a textbook can boost your vocabulary, grammar, and reading skills. And reviewing a word list will just help you with the words. So the second lesson is, you need to know what kind of results you get. You need to measure the return on your time so that you can be confident that you're making progress. In the case of our audio and video lessons, three or four lessons will help you understand and speak roughly one minute of conversation, as well as learn all words and grammar rules inside. This is the return on our lessons. How is this possible? The dialogue tracks are about 20 seconds, and so three lessons, that's three conversations at 20 seconds apiece, which is 60 seconds or one minute of conversation. So if you know the three lessons get you to one minute of conversation, you can know what results to expect. If you do 20 lessons, you're at about five minutes of conversation. 40 lessons, that's around 10 minutes or so of conversation. That's the power of measuring the results. If you track your results, you know what to expect in the future, and you can hit your language learning goals. So how can you start measuring your return? Let's jump into the third part. Part three, how to track your results and hit goals. If you're able to consistently put in time towards learning and maintaining your routine, then it's time to start tracking your time and effort. Why? At the basic level, language learning is simply putting in the time. You don't need a high IQ. You don't need to be talented at languages. You don't need the best possible app. You just need time. The more time you put in, the more results you get out. 
And aside from setting unrealistic goals, the other reason why people fail at languages is they just don't put in the time. So how can you track your results? Let's look at two ways, an easy way and an advanced way of tracking your time and results. Let's start with the easy way first. Simply track the time you put in. So if you do a 10 minute audio lesson today and then spend five minutes with flashcards, note this as 15 minutes for the day and write down what you did. Then do the same thing tomorrow, that's it. The goal here is to track the time and your effort. You'll want to track it and actually have measurable proof of your work and also so you can review what you've been doing and see your progress. So if one day you realize you don't know enough words or maybe you don't speak as much as you'd like, you can look at your notes and review your work. If you see that you've been just watching video lessons, you can spot the problem, which is you've done no actual vocab study or speaking practice. And now you can start doing it. Problem solved, you're on your way to fluency. Another way you can track your time and effort is with the dashboard on our site. So if you visit the dashboard, you can see the lessons you've completed, the number of flashcards reviewed and hours studied. This is the second tactic, and it's an advanced one because not only do you need to track your time, you also need to track your results, which is a bit trickier. So how can you do that? With our conversational audio lessons, check the length of the dialogue track. If the dialogue track is about 20 seconds, then that's the amount of conversation you can expect to master. By the way, these tracks are anywhere from 10 to 40 seconds long. Now, if you're studying words with flashcards, take note of how many words you already know. So if you studied for five minutes and can easily remember seven out of 10 words, then that's your return. If you know this, you know what to expect when you learn new words. You can expect to remember about seven out of 10 with a five minute drill. Another thing you can do is boost that number to 10 out of 10. Next, if you're practicing your listening skills, try to gauge how much you understand. If you understood about 20% of a three minute conversational lesson, then that's your return for now. Again, by knowing this, you can now start asking questions like, what can I do to understand 50% of this conversation? Will doubling my time double my results as well? Will I understand 40%? Will reviewing this lesson for a few minutes a day, every day, work better than trying to memorize it all now? So then, you put these questions to the test and try them out. And because you know your return, you can see if it really works. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to boost your motivation and learn more by adding others to the mix. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Want to perfect your pronunciation and speak like a native? The best way to do this is one, listen to a native speaker, two, repeat what they say, and three, the most important part, compare yourself against their pronunciation. In fact, mimicking a native speaker like this, which is called shadowing, is a powerful way to master your speaking. And you can do this all with the voice recorder inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. So what makes the voice recorder so powerful? First, you can instantly spot the differences between yourself and the native speaker. How? The voice recorder records you and then compares your speaking to the native speaker. Just record and listen. Once you know what you need to change to sound perfect, you can adjust your speaking and your pitch until you match the native speaker. Second, you get to practice speaking the most common words and phrases. In other words, you won't be learning to say random words and phrases. Our lessons teach you practical everyday conversations like introducing yourself, ordering food at a restaurant, talking about where you're from, and more. The kind of conversations you'll have with native speakers. And our vocabulary lists teach you the must know words and phrases for all kinds of topics, holidays, slang, the many ways to say hello, and more. So how do you use the voice recorder? You'll find the voice recorder in our lessons and vocabulary lists. Just look for the microphone icon. 
With our lessons, scroll down to the dialogue section. The dialogue section is a line-by-line -line breakdown of the lesson conversation. Next to each line, click on the microphone icon to open the voice recorder for that line. First, listen to the native speaker's pronunciation. Then, click on the round record icon to record yourself. And finally, play the two tracks to compare. Successful learners practice one line three to four times to fully master the pronunciation. Now, if you're using our free vocabulary phrase lists, you'll find the microphone icon next to each word or phrase. Again, click on the icon to record and compare yourself to the native pronunciation. So, if you want to speak like a native with perfect pronunciation, take advantage of this voice recorder, which is available in every lesson and vocabulary list. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Making Movies Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn words like actor, screenwriter, director, and much more. Download it for free on the inside. Second, the 400 Everyday Phrases for Beginners ebook. This bonus ebook will teach you over 400 words and phrases related to daily activities like waking up, making breakfast, going to work or school, and more. Third, can you talk about fishing in your target language? Learn how to say words like fishing rod, bait, and fishing net with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, must know online shopping vocabulary. If you like shopping, then you'll want to be able to talk about it in your target language. With this one minute lesson, you'll learn must know words like sale, add to cart, and much more. Fifth, free language learning audiobooks for anyone who sees this video. If you watch this far, then here's a free bonus. We're giving all of our users free access to our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 51% off all basic, premium, and premium plus plans with our special Black Friday deal. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. This is Ben Morris and he's at a cafe doing a language exchange with his classmate, Kaun Kim. It's the Korean portion of the exchange, and he points at the textbook and asks, how do you say textbook in Korean? 한국어로 textbook 어떻게 말해요? Listen to the conversation and focus on the question. The conversation is between two young adults of the same age, so the politeness level is informal polite. Ready? 한국어로 텍스트북 어떻게 말해요? 교과서예요. Once more with the English translation. 한국어로 텍스트북 어떻게 말해요? How do you say textbook in Korean? 교과서예요. It's textbook. Let's take a closer look at the conversation. Do you remember how Ben asks, how do you say textbook in Korean? First is, 한국어로. meaning in Korean. 한국어로. This starts with 한국어 Korean, as in the Korean language. 한국어 한국어 Next is the particle 로 which marks the thing you use to do something. 로로 로. In this sentence 로 marks 한국어 Korean as the language used to speak. Note. 로 follows words that do not end in consonants. 
as in 한국어. Together, it's 한국어로. In Korean. 한국어로. Next is the English word textbook. Note. This is the shortened version of textbook un. Ben Morris omits the topic marking particle. Un. In spoken Korean, speakers tend to omit particles when it's clear which particle would be used. Last is the phrase 어떻게 말해요? Translating as how do you say? 어떻게 말해요? 어떻게 말해요? First is 어떻게 meaning how. 어떻게 어떻게 Next is 말해요 say 말해요 말해요 말해 is from the verb 말하다 meaning to say 말하다 Last is 요 the polite sentence ending particle you. Together it's 어떻게 말해요? Literally, how you say. 어떻게 말해요? At this level, remember it as a set phrase. 어떻게 말해요? 어떻게 말해요? Altogether, 한국어로 textbook 어떻게 말해요? Literally means, in Korean, textbook, how you say. But translates as, how do you say textbook in Korean? 한국어로, textbook, 어떻게 말해요? Let's take a closer look at the response. Do you remember how Kaun Kim says, it's textbook? First is 교과서. Textbook. 교과서. 교과서. Next is 예요. In this case, it's like the is in its. 예요. 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 Is from Ida meaning to be. Ida While Ida is technically a particle, it acts like a verb. Note Yeyu follows words that do not end in a consonant, such as Kugwaso Together Kugwaso Eo literally means textbook it is, but translates as it's textbook. 교과서예요. Note, it is understood from context, as the speaker is answering a question. 교과서예요. Is the shortened version of the sentence. 텍스트북은 교과서예요. The first part. 텍스트북은. Meaning, as for textbook is omitted since the context is clear, as Kaun is responding to a question about the textbook. The pattern is 한국어로 English word 어떻게 말해요? How do you say English word in Korean? 한국어로 English word 어떻게 말해요? To use this pattern, simply replace the English word placeholder with the word you want to know. Imagine you want to know the Korean word for pen. Ask, how do you say pen in Korean? Ready? 한국어로 pen 어떻게 말해요? 
How do you say pen in Korean? 한국어로 pen 어떻게 말해요? If you want to keep the conversation in Korean, you can say, How do you say this in Korean? Simply replace the English word with 이거 meaning this. 이거 이거 When using this pattern, you may want to gesture or point at the thing you want to know the Korean word for. 한국어로 이거 어떻게 말해요? How do you say this in Korean? If the thing is far away from you, you can also use the Korean word 저거 That over there. 저거 한국어로 저거 어떻게 말해요? How do you say that in Korean? Again, these patterns are very useful for using Korean to learn Korean. Keeping the conversation in Korean as long as possible is a great tactic to learn a language. These questions will help with that. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 한국어로 텍스트북 어떻게 말해요? 교과서예요. 한국어로 텍스트북 어떻게 말해요? 한국어로 펜 어떻게 말해요? 펜이에요. 한국어로 펜 어떻게 말해요? 한국어로 이거 어떻게 말해요? 젓가락이에요. 한국어로 이거 어떻게 말해요? 한국어로 저거 어떻게 말해요? 연필이에요. 한국어로 저거 어떻게 말해요? 한국어로 이거 뭐예요? 교과서예요. 한국어로 이거 뭐예요? Did you notice how I use a different pattern? What's this in Korean? Instead of 어떻게 말해요? How do you say? 어떻게 말해요? This pattern uses the phrase 뭐예요? What is? 뭐예요? Let's take a closer look at 한국어로 이거 뭐예요? First is 한국어로 meaning in Korean. 한국어로 Next is 이거 this. 이거 이거 After this is the phrase 뭐예요? meaning what is. 뭐예요? 뭐예요? First is 뭐 the shortened form of 무어 meaning what? 무어 Next is 예요 Here, it's like the is in what is. 예요 예요 Altogether 한국어로 이거 뭐예요? Literally, Korean in this what is, but translates as what is this in Korean? 한국어로 이거 뭐예요? This pattern shortens the question with the same effect. You should be aware of this shortcut, but for this lesson, we'll use the full sentence pattern. 한국어로 English word 어떻게 말해요? How do you say English word in Korean? 
pen 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 젓가락 chopsticks 젓가락 젓가락 연필 pencil 연필 연필 이거 this 이거 이거 저거 that over there 저거 저거 Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say Korean as in the language? 한국어 한국어 And how to say in Korean? 한국어로 한국어로 Do you remember how to say how do you say? 어떻게 말해요? 어떻게 말해요? Do you remember how Ben says how do you say textbook in Korean? 한국어로 텍스트북 어떻게 말해요? 한국어로 텍스트북 어떻게 말해요? Do you remember how to say textbook? 교과서 교과서 Do you remember how 가은 김 says is textbook? 교과서예요. 교과서예요. Do you remember how to say this? 이거. 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 Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Morris and you're having a language exchange lunch with So Young So. Ask how do you say chopsticks in Korean? Ready? Hangugoro chopsticks otoke mareo? Chotkaragieo. Listen again and repeat. Hangugoro. 찹스틱스 어떻게 말해요? 한국어로 찹스틱스 어떻게 말해요? Now you want to know the word for pen. Ready? 한국어로 펜 어떻게 말해요? 펜이에요. Listen again and repeat. 한국어로 펜 어떻게 말해요? 한국어로 펜 어떻게 말해요? Let's try one more. Imagine you're Sasha Morris, and you're studying with a classmate. Point at a nearby pencil and ask how to say this in Korean. Ready? 
한국어로 이거 어떻게 말해요? 연필이에요. Listen again and repeat. 한국어로 이거 어떻게 말해요? 한국어로 이거 어떻게 말해요? 식당 restaurant 식당 식당 restaurant 우리가 제일 좋아하는 식당이 오늘 밤에는 꽉 찼습니다. Our favorite restaurant is full tonight. 우리가 제일 좋아하는 식당이 오늘 밤에는 꽉 찼습니다. 카페 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 여자들이 야외의 카페에서 이야기하고 있습니다. The women are talking at the outdoor cafe. 여자들이 야외의 카페에서 이야기하고 있습니다. 커피숍 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 커피 커피숍 커피숍 커피숍에서 시간을 보내고 있는 친구들 The friends are hanging out at a coffee shop 커피숍에서 시간을 보내고 있는 친구들 바 바. 바, 바, 바. 금요일 밤 우리는 시내의 바에 갈 것입니다. Friday night we will go to a bar in the city. 금요일 밤 우리는 시내의 바에 갈 것입니다. 가구 furniture 가구 가구 furniture 화재가 난후 우리는 가구를 모두 바꾸어야 했습니다. We had to replace all of our furniture after the fire. 화재가 난후 우리는 가구를 모두 바꾸어야 했습니다. 풀 grass 풀풀 풀. grass 멧돼지들이 풀을 씹고 있습니다. The wild boars are chewing the grass. 멧돼지들이 풀을 씹고 있습니다. 토양 Soil 토양 토양 Soil 토양이 가뭄 때문에 갈라졌습니다. The soil cracked due to the drought. 토양이 가뭄 때문에 갈라졌습니다. 흙 Dirt 흙 흙. Dirt 
벌레들이 흙 속에서 꿈틀거리고 있습니다. 벌레들이 흙 속에서 꿈틀거리고 있습니다. 바위 rock 바위 바위 rock 호랑이가 바위 위에 누워 있습니다. The tiger is lying on the rocks. 호랑이가 바위 위에 누워 있습니다. 나무 tree 나무 나무 tree 우리는 매년 뒷마당에 있는 사과 나무의 사과를 먹습니다. We eat fruits every year from the apple tree in my backyard. 우리는 매년 뒷마당에 있는 사과나무의 사과를 먹습니다. 도교 Taoism 도교 도교 Taoism 도교는 도가로서 알려져 있습니다. 도교는 is also known as Taoism. 도교는 도가로서 알려져 있습니다. 성경 Bible 성경 성경 Bible 성경책은 문명의 역사에서 제일 많이 팔린 책입니다. The Bible is the best-selling book in the history of civilization. 성경책은 문명의 역사에서 제일 많이 팔린 책입니다. 코란 Quran 코란 코란 그란 코란은 무슬림교의 성경책입니다. The Quran is the holy book of the Muslim religion. 코란은 무슬림교의 성경책입니다. 신부 priest 신부 신부 priest 그는 신부에게 조언을 받았습니다. He got advice from a priest. 그는 신부에게 조언을 받았습니다. 유대교 Judaism 유대교 유대교 Judaism 유대교는 3000년 이상 동안 전해져 왔습니다. Judaism has been practiced for over 3000 years. 유대교는 3,000년 이상 동안 전해져 왔습니다. 천 1,000 천 천, 천 1,000 내 지갑에 천원 밖에 없습니다. 
There is only 1,000 won in my wallet. 내 지갑에 천원 밖에 없습니다. 이천 2,000 2,000 2,000 그것은 2,000 달러입니다. It cost 2,000 dollars. 그것은 2,000 달러입니다. 8,000 8,000 8,000 8,000 8,000 그 마을에는 8,000명이 살고 있습니다. 8,000 people live in that village. 그 마을에는 8,000명이 살고 있습니다. 만 10,000 만 만 10,000 만 명의 군인들이 전쟁터에 배치되었습니다. 10,000 soldiers were dispatched to the site of the battle. 만 명의 군인들이 전쟁터에 배치되었습니다. 4,000 4,000 4,000 4,000 4,000 그 경기장은 4,000 평방미터입니다. The stadium is 4,000 square meters. 그 경기장은 4,000 평방미터입니다. 집주인 Landlord 집주인 집주인 Land road. 형의 집주인은 수표를 받지 않습니다. My brother's land road will not accept a check. 형의 집주인은 수표를 받지 않습니다. 기숙사. Dormitory. 기숙사. 기숙사. Dormitory. 대학생은 기숙사에서 살았습니다. The college student lived in a dormitory. 대학생은 기숙사에서 살았습니다. Apartment. Apartment building. Apartment. Apartment. Apartment building. 이 아파트 건물에는 24개의 아파트가 있습니다. There are 24 apartments in this apartment building. 이 아파트 건물에는 24개의 아파트가 있습니다. 도시 City 도시 도시 City 도시는 안개로 덮였습니다. The city is covered in fog. 도시는 안개로 덮였습니다. 농장 Farm 농장 농장 Farm. 염소들이 농장에서 놀고 있다. The goats are playing on the farm. 염소들이 
농장에서 놀고 있다. 쓰나미 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 쓰나미가 도시를 쳤습니다. The tsunami hit the city. 쓰나미가 도시를 쳤습니다. 눈사태. Avalanche. 눈사태. 눈사태. Avalanche. 눈사태가 스키 리조트를 파괴하였지만 다행히 아무도 안 다쳤습니다. The avalanche destroyed the sky resort, but luckily nobody was hurt. 눈사태가 스키 리조트를 파괴하였지만 다행히 아무도 안 다쳤습니다. 불 Fire 불, 불, fire. 불이 타고 있습니다. The fire is burning. 불이 타고 있습니다. 지진, earthquake. 지진. 지진 Earthquake 지진이 땅을 흔들고 있습니다. The earthquake is shaking the ground. 지진이 땅을 흔들고 있습니다. 모래폭풍 Sandstorm 모래폭풍 모래 폭풍 Sandstorm 모래 폭풍이 착륙하였습니다. The sandstorm has touched down. 모래 폭풍이 착륙하였습니다. 장갑 Glove 장갑 장갑 Glove 장갑은 그의 손에 맞지 않았습니다. The gloves did not fit his hands. 장갑은 그의 손에 맞지 않았습니다. 우산 Umbrella 우산 우산 Umbrella. 비가 오는데 우산이 없습니다. I don't have an umbrella and it's raining. 비가 오는데 우산이 없습니다. 모자. Hat. 모자. 모자. Hat. 빨간 스카프가 저 모자와 잘 어울릴 것 같아요. A red scarf would look nice with that hat. 빨간 스카프가 저 모자와 잘 어울릴 것 같아요. 긴 소매 Long sleeved 긴 소매 긴 소매 long sleeved 긴 소매 셔츠는 추운 날씨에 좋아요. long sleeved shirts are good for cold weather. 긴 소매 셔츠는 추운 날씨에 좋아요. 반소매 short sleeved 반소매 반소매 short sleeved 반소매 셔츠는 따뜻한 날씨에 더 좋아요. 
Short sleeve shirts are better when it is warm. 반소매 셔츠는 따뜻한 날씨에 더 좋아요. 고통스러운 painful 고통스러운 고통스러운 painful 남자가 고통스러운 복통으로 괴로워하고 있습니다. The man has a painful stomach ache. 남자가 고통스러운 복통으로 괴로워하고 있습니다. 부끄러워하는 shy. 부끄러워하는 부끄러워하는 shy. 부끄러워하지 마. Don't be shy. 부끄러워하지 마. 불안해하는 nervous. 불안해하는 불안해하는 nervous. 비즈니스맨은 불안해하며 면접을 기다리고 있습니다. The nervous businessman is waiting for the interview. 비즈니스맨은 불안해하며 면접을 기다리고 있습니다. 신이 난 excited 신이 난 신. 이난 excited 그 젊은 과학자는 신이 났습니다. The young scientist was excited. 그 젊은 과학자는 신이 났습니다. 당황스러운 embarrassed 당황스러운 당황스러운 embarrassed 제 얼굴은 당황스러우면 빨개져요. My face turns red when I'm embarrassed. 제 얼굴은 당황스러우면 빨개져요. 시골 country 시골 시골 country 그들은 시골에 큰 집이 있습니다. They have a big house in the country. 그들은 시골에 큰 집이 있습니다. 마을 village 마을 마을 village 저는 작은 마을에서 자랐어요. I grew up in a small village. 저는 작은 마을에서 자랐어요. 도시 town 도시 도시 town 저는 도시를 걸어 다니고 싶어요. I want to go for a walk in town. 저는 도시를 걸어 다니고 싶어요. 교회 suburb 교회 교회 suburb 그는 도시에서 일하지만 교회 마을에서 삽니다. He works in the city, but he lives in the suburbs. 그는 도시에서 일하지만 교회 마을에서 삽니다. 방 room 방방 방. room 
포터는 방으로 짐을 옮겨 주었습니다. A porter carried our bags to our room. 포터는 방으로 짐을 옮겨 주었습니다. 화상 burn 화상 화상 burn 그녀는 끓는 물을 왼손에 쏟아서 2도 화상을 입었습니다. She spilled boiling water on her left hand and has a second degree burn. 그녀는 끓는 물을 왼손에 쏟아서 2도 화상을 입었습니다. Chess 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 체스 chess 나는 성급한 사람이어서 스피드 체스를 좋아합니다. I'm not a patient person so I prefer speed chess. 나는 성급한 사람이어서 스피드 체스를 좋아합니다. 언어 language 언어 언어 language 언어를 배우는 것이 재미있어요. Learning language is fun. 언어를 배우는 것이 재미있어요. 드라이하다 blow dry 드라이하다 드라이하다 blow dry 저는 매일 아침 머리카락을 드라이해요. I blow dry my hair every morning. 저는 매일 아침 머리카락을 드라이해요. 무술 martial arts 무술 무술 martial arts 우리 무술 사범님은 25년 동안 무술을 연습하셨습니다. Our martial arts instructor has practiced for 25 years. 우리 무술 사범님은 25년 동안 무술을 연습하셨습니다. 만족스러워하는 satisfied 만족스러워하는 만족스러워하는 satisfied 저는 결과에 만족스러워하고 있어요. I'm satisfied with the result. 저는 결과에 만족스러워하고 있어요. 평온한 calm 평온한 평온한 calm 바다가 평온해요. The ocean is calm. 바다가 평온해요. 빛다. calm. 빛다. 빛다. calm. 저는 매일 강아지 털을 빗어요. I comb my dog every day. 저는 매일 강아지 털을 빗어요. 가글하다. gargle. 가글하다. 가글하다. gargle. 저는 매일 수차례 입안을 가글해요. I gargle several times a day. 
저는 매일 수차례 입안을 각을 해요. 불만스러워 하는 dissatisfied 불만스러워 하는 불만스러워 하는 dissatisfied 남자는 그 제품에 대해 불만스러워 하고 있다. The man is dissatisfied with the products. 남자는 그 제품에 대해 불만스러워 하고 있다. 5,000 5,000 5,000 5,000 5,000명이 광장에 모여 시위하고 있었습니다. 5,000 people were protesting on the square. 5,000명이 광장에 모여 시위하고 있었습니다. 3,000 3,000 3,000 3,000 3,000 페루에는 감자 종류가 3,000개가 넘습니다. In Peru, more than 3,000 types of potatoes exist. 페루에는 감자 종류가 3,000개가 넘습니다. 6,000 6,000 6,000 6,000 6,000 삼계탕의 가격은 6,000원입니다. The price of the 삼계탕 is 6,000 won. 삼계탕의 가격은 6,000원입니다. 7,000 7,000 7,000 7,000 7,000 그녀는 음반을 7,000장 판매했습니다. She sold 7,000 albums. 그녀는 음반을 7,000장 판매했습니다. 9,000 9,000 9,000 9,000 9,000 9,000명의 병력이 나라에서 철수했습니다. 9,000 troops withdrew from the country. 9,000명의 병력이 나라에서 철수했습니다. 장미 rose 장미 장미 rose 제가 제일 좋아하는 꽃은 장미입니다. Roses are my favorite flower. 제가 제일 좋아하는 꽃은 장미입니다. 꽃 flower 꽃꽃 꽃. flower 저는 매주 일요일 아침 아내에게 생생한 꽃을 가져다 줍니다. Every Sunday morning, I bring my wife fresh flowers. 저는 매주 일요일 아침 아내에게 생생한 꽃을 가져다 줍니다. 백합 Lily 백합 백합 Lily 백합은 순결을 상징해요. A lily symbolizes purity. 
백합은 순결을 상징해요. 해바라기 Sunflower 해바라기 해바라기 Sunflower 해바라기 꽃은 8에서 12피트 정도의 높이까지 자랍니다. Sunflowers grow to heights between 8 to 12 feet. 해바라기 꽃은 8에서 12피트 정도의 높이까지 자랍니다. 민들레 Dandelion 민들레 민들레 Dandelion 민들레는 잡초로 간주됩니다. Dandelions are considered weeds. 민들레는 잡초로 간주됩니다. 여행 Traveling 여행 여행 Traveling 남자의 취미는 여행입니다. The man's hobby is traveling. 남자의 취미는 여행입니다. 운동 Exercising 운동 운동 Exercising 아침부터 운동하고 있어요. I've been exercising since morning. 아침부터 운동하고 있어요. 운동하다. Work out. 운동하다. 운동하다. Work out. 매일 30분 운동하는 것은 건강에 좋습니다. A 30 minutes workout every day is good for your health. 매일 30분 운동하는 것은 건강에 좋습니다. 독서 Reading 독서 독서 Reading 저는 독서를 좋아하지 않아요. I don't like reading. 저는 독서를 좋아하지 않아요. 카드 놀이 Playing cards 카드 놀이 카드 놀이 Playing cards 우리는 여름에 종종 카드 놀이를 해요. We often play cards on a warm summer evening. 우리는 여름에 종종 카드 놀이를 해요. 귀걸이 Earring 귀걸이 귀걸이 Earring 저희 어머니는 다이아몬드 귀걸이를 하고 계십니다. My mother is wearing her diamond earrings. 저의 어머니는 다이아몬드 귀걸이를 하고 계십니다. 목걸이 Necklace 목걸이 목걸이 Necklace 당신이 착용한 목걸이에 아름다운 보석이 있습니다. The necklace you are wearing has beautiful gems. 당신이 착용한 목걸이에 아름다운 보석이 있습니다. 반지 Ring 반지 
반지, ring. 그녀는 약손가락에 다이아몬드 반지를 끼고 있습니다. The woman is putting a diamond ring on her ring finger. 그녀는 약손가락에 다이아몬드 반지를 끼고 있습니다. 사각 팬티 Boxer shorts 사각 팬티 사각 팬티 Boxer shorts 사각 팬티는 남성용 속옷입니다. Boxer shorts are an undergarment for men. 사각 팬티는 남성용 속옷입니다. 치마 skirt 치마 치마 skirt 그녀는 노란 치마를 입고 있습니다. She's wearing a yellow skirt. 그녀는 노란 치마를 입고 있습니다. 햄버거 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 주세요. Please give me a hamburger. 햄버거 주세요. 치즈버거 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 치즈버거는 치즈를 넣은 햄버거입니다. A cheeseburger is a hamburger with a slice of cheese. 치즈버거는 치즈를 넣은 햄버거입니다. 피자 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 피자는 이탈리안 요리이지만 전 세계적으로 인기가 있습니다. Pizza is an Italian dish, but it is popular dish around the world. 피자는 이탈리안 요리이지만 전 세계적으로 인기가 있습니다. 핫도그 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 핫 도그 핫도그 남자아이는 핫도그를 먹고 있습니다. The boy is eating a hotdog. 남자아이는 핫도그를 먹고 있습니다. 팁 팁. 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 베개 위에 메이드를 위해 팁을 남겨 놓았습니다. I left a tip for the maid on the pillow. 베개 위에 메이드를 위해 팁을 남겨 놓았습니다. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to boost your motivation and learn more by adding others to the mix. If you're learning a language all by yourself, then you should know that there's a way to boost your chance of success, boost your motivation, your progress. It's simply by including other people in your language learning journey. And in today's episode, you'll discover, one, how adding a human dynamic boosts your motivation, and two, how you can apply this tactic to your language learning. But first, here are this month's new lessons and resources. Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. 
first, the Making Movies Conversation Cheat Sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn words like actor, screenwriter, director, and much more. Download it for free on the inside. Second, the 400 Everyday Phrases for Beginners ebook. This bonus ebook will teach you over 400 words and phrases related to daily activities like waking up, making breakfast, going to work or school, and more. Third, can you talk about fishing in your target language? Learn how to say words like fishing rod, bait, and fishing net with this quick vocab bonus. Fourth, must know online shopping vocabulary. If you like shopping, then you'll want to be able to talk about it in your target language. With this one minute lesson, you'll learn must know words like sale, add to cart, and much more. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to boost your motivation and learn more by adding others to the mix. Part one, how adding a human dynamic boosts your motivation. So first, here's a question for you. How do you think most people start learning a language? Leave a comment. Most people start learning by themselves. They'll either watch YouTube videos like this, download an app, or if they're a little more serious, buy a textbook. But after the first week or month, most self-learners also end up falling off because of a lack of motivation. It's pretty hard to motivate yourself and keep yourself going. It's hard because you have to, one, rely on yourself to motivate yourself, two, do the learning, and three, do the practice. All of this is a lot of work for one person. Sure, there's a small group of super self-motivated people out there that can do it and stick with it, but that's not the case for most of us. So then, if you want to boost your motivation and not have to rely on yourself, that's where you should start getting other people involved in your language learning journey. Just picture a graph where on the y-axis you have motivation, and on the x-axis you have the chance of success. So first you have self-study, and that's probably closest to lower motivation and probably a low chance of succeeding. As you move further to the right where you start involving tutors or joining group classes, the higher your motivation and chance of success becomes. Does this mean motivation is lowest when you're on your own? Yes and no. There are people who are very motivated on their own, but motivation tends to come and go for many of us. And the last thing you want to do is rely on a feeling that may not always be there. But when you start including more personal connections, live interactions, maybe someone you speak with at a cafe, you have more reasons and more pressure to keep on going. For example, if you have a tutor that expects you to do homework and come prepared next time, if you have a language partner whom you want to impress, or if you're in a language class, you want to be better than other students. The point is, the more people you involve, the more anchor points and commitments you have to the language, and these boost your motivation. In psychology, this is called social facilitation, or the audience effect. When you're with other people, or when you think someone is watching you, you put a little pressure on yourself. And for many people, this can have a positive result. But if you're on your own, you wouldn't try so hard. So just to recap, a lot of us start learning on our own. And in the case of language learning, there will always be self-study involved. But if you want to take it to the next level, then you should follow that graph. The only issue is, the more you go up that graph, the more expensive it gets. It's very affordable to learn on your own. Once you start involving others, such as a teacher, it starts getting expensive. So it's up to you as the learner here. So, if you're interested in adding a human dynamic, what can you do? Part two, how you can apply this to your language learning. One, give our Premium Plus plan a try and get access to your own teacher. You also get weekly assignments from your teacher, which adds a nice layer of accountability to your learning. Two, enroll in an online class. And this is something we started offering for a few of our major languages, Japanese, English, Chinese, Italian, Korean, French, and Spanish. Three, get an online or in-person tutor. Now, teachers and classes can be pricey, but there are other ways to learn with others. Four, Get a study buddy or join a learning community. Learning and competing with others will definitely have a positive impact on your motivation and language progress. Five, simply talk with others about your language goals and your current progress. When you're surrounded by people talking about how much they've learned or what goals they hit or missed, you'll be more inspired to hit your own goals. Six, track your progress and share it on your social media for others to see. 
For example, if you keep a daily planner, write in, I did three lessons today, or spent 30 minutes on learning a language, and share that. Once you start involving more people in your language journey, whether for learning or for practice, adding that extra human element will boost your productivity and motivation and help you reach your language goals. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to learn a new language in the new year. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Since you're learning the language and coming across new words all the time, do you have trouble remembering new words? If you do, then there's a proven and powerful learning method that'll help you learn new words and phrases fast, easily remember the tough words you struggle with, and get you fluent sooner than later. In fact, all serious language learners use this learning method in one form or another. And the good news is, you can do this all with our flashcards inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our language learning program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Now, how do flashcards help you learn words and phrases faster? These flashcards use something called spaced repetition learning, which is a science-backed learning method that spaces out your learning over time and quizzes you on words at the right times so that you never forget them. Here's how the flashcards work. Once you start learning, they start tracking your progress and sort your cards for you. So the tough words that you struggle with, you'll see them more often in a study session. And the easy words that you get right, they'll start getting spaced out. You'll see them again in two days, then five days, then 13 days, and so on. At which point, these words will start going into your long-term memory and you'll never forget them. Once you're done with a study session, that's it for the day. Your flashcards will remind you when to study again, so you never forget what you learned last time. So here's how you take advantage of this powerful study tool. Simply access flashcards in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. Inside, you already have the 100 must-know words deck prepared for you. Just click on Study and Start Session to start learning. You'll see a flashcard with the word in the target language. Do you know the meaning? Click on Show Answer to confirm the meaning. Then, mark it as correct or incorrect. Based on your answer, the flashcards will start sorting and spacing out the words for you. Then, move on to the next card in the deck until you're done with the session. You can study with three modes. Recognition. Get the word in the target language and see if you know the meaning. Production. Get the meaning and see if you know it in the target language. Or listening. Hear the word or phrase and see if you know the meaning. Choose one two, or all three modes of learning. You can create flashcard decks from key phrases presented in lessons, the 2000 core word list, words saved in your word bank, and our free vocab lists. Want to see how many words and phrases you've mastered? Visit My Stats for your daily, weekly, and monthly progress breakdown to see your personal study stats. So take advantage of the smart flashcards right now. The top 100 must-know words deck is already ready and waiting for you. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. If you want to learn your target language with our learning program, and if you're wondering which plan to choose, then today you'll discover how our premium plan helps you master the language with one clear learning pathway to follow, which makes sticking with learning easier than ever. Special lessons that get you speaking and understanding conversations in minutes from beginner to advanced and over 15 study tools that will lock the language into your brain. But first, if you don't have access to our language learning program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account. Now, how does the premium plan help you learn a language faster? One, you get one simple learning pathway of lessons to follow. 
If you've always felt that language learning is overwhelming because there's so much to do, reading, writing, speaking, listening, and vocabulary, and there's no clear path to take, well, you're not wrong. So that's exactly why you get one learning pathway with our program. The learning pathway is simply a pathway of lessons for you to take. Meaning you now have a clear path to follow instead of wondering about how you should learn the language or what to do next. Just follow the pathway, take the lessons and complete the assessments from lesson one to two to three and from the absolute beginner level up to advanced. Now let's talk about the lessons themselves. Second, you learn the language fast with audio and video lessons, which means you won't be reading walls of text here. Our audio and video lessons are easy to finish and allow you to absorb the language as you listen or watch. Plus, you get exposed to native speech, something you won't get in textbooks. So press play on a lesson. You'll learn a practical conversation, get every word and grammar rule explained by our teachers, and start speaking in minutes. All of this takes minutes because lessons are just a few minutes long, so you can learn fast and in small blocks of time, whether on your computer or with our app if you're on the go. The lessons alone are enough to get you speaking, but to make sure you practice and retain the language, you can use our study tools. Third, you get 15 plus premium study tools that lock the language into your memory and help you learn faster. Here's a small taste of what you can do. You can practice speaking and perfect your pronunciation with the voice recorder, reach conversational fluency with our 2000 most common words list, Master words and phrases fast with our spaced repetition flashcards. Read along with the lesson notes to help the grammar rules sink in faster. Understand everything instantly with the translations. Sharpen your listening skills with the line-by-line -line audio for each lesson. Immerse yourself in native conversations with the dialogue tracks. Test yourself on what you've learned with assessments and much more. So if you want to learn your target language, and if you don't have access to our learning program, then sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to get your free lifetime account, and you'll get a free seven-day trial to our premium plan. Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the Word Bank, your personal vocabulary collection where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words. So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools.